I'm saying it. Saying it. Saying it. Fantastic evening, a fantastic afternoon, a fantastic pre-noon. No matter where you are in the world, I'm a song piker, and this is the Austin Ever Broadcast coming to you live from cold and gray California, Los Angeles, folks. We're live and alive, and I hope all the boys, girls, and MBs are having a fantastic one because today's a beautiful day. Today's a wonderful day. Today is yet another phenomenal day, ladies and gentlemen, and I hope all of you are having a great one. Oh shit. I just got I just went live and just got a text message from Tadak. Oh no. Oh no, I just got a fucking text. Yeah, me lord. I'm wearing I'm rocking the peasant core right now. Me lord! My lord, what are you wearing right now? You guys haven't seen me wear this before? I know, we're going to talk about the earthquake in New York. Okay, this is my ninja fit. Or, shouts out to Dolce & Gabbana Razor collab for sending me free fucking merch. Okay, it's either the ninja fit, or when I open it, it's the, My lord, of course you can have sex with my... Virgin wife on the day of our wedding fit. All of a sudden it turns into, it turns into the peasant fit. I like to call it. Anyway, um, what's up folks? It's a big day. It's a beautiful day. It's a fantastic day. Obviously all things considered. Cause like on the East coast, there are earthquakes on the West coast. Well, it's 40 degrees, which is basically like an earthquake. Let's be real. Earthquakes are way more normal than having it be. 40 fucking degrees out here. Okay, but there's another reason why it's a beautiful day. And I think many of you know exactly why. Mufasa, hmm? you know we finally here, right? Well, we... It's Friday then. It's Saturday, That's right, Sunday. ladies what? and gentlemen. It's, it's Friday, Friday. Then. It's, Friday. It's, Friday. it's Friday. It's fucked up Friday. It's flat fuck Friday. It's fuck a fan's mom Friday. It's Mufasa Friday. Very important day of the week. Every week, it's like a little treat at the end of it where you get to remind yourself that you are a real human being, that you don't have to be fucked by your bosses every goddamn day of the fucking week, unless you're in retail, in which case you're fucked regardless. Sorry for the service sector. Big L for the wage cucks on that one. At least you get some tips if you're working in a nice restaurant, so there's that. But beyond that, this is for all my wage cucks working a normal nine to fiver, normal fucking white collar, bullshit ass jobs, Excel spreadsheet jobs. 
Friday's a day of celebration. And that's what we're going to do. The Immaculate Friday vibes are upon us. Let me tell you something. Absolutely zero people are allowed to fuck up the Immaculate Friday vibes, okay? You're not allowed to do that, okay? Don't come in here with like, oh, my God, my dog has cancer. Oh, my God, my cousin is dead. I don't want to hear that shit. You can't fuck up the Immaculate Friday vibes. I'm in a great mood. Instant permaban Friday. Fuck it. Yeah, that's right. Uh, anyway, this is part of the broadcast where I tell you a little bit about my personal news about what's going on in the world of Hassan Hasanabi Piker. And that's precisely what I'm going to do. My cousin is here with his wife. My cousin that I grew up with in Turkey who lived in our house for, uh, for a little bit too. Nezo is here. Ugliest fit you've ever worn. My, my man, it's not a fit. It's a meme. Okay. Let me give me a fucking break, dude. Um, yeah. Cuzzo is here. We're going bowling. I heard Ole coming next week. Is that for real? Is she coming next week? I mean, that'd be sick. Um, anyway, it's the Kanye fit. Yeah, it's Chicago. Um, I got a haircut for those of you who were uh, confused, shocked, wondering what's going on. I did. <laughs> Rodman, my lord, ah, fit. Anyway, um, how much is 40 degrees in real weather measurements? Dude, I don't fucking know. Anyway, 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 anyway. Did you listen to J. Cole's diss track against Kendrick yet? No, I haven't, but we can listen to it later. Oh, oh my God. My words are, my worlds are colliding. Two of my faves linking up and building. We have Norm Finkelstein on up front, led by Mark Lamont Hill. All right. Anyway, we'll do that in a second. What is 40 degrees? I don't know. 10 Celsius, something like that. Anyway, that's not what this is about. What What is about right now, what is happening right now is personal news. This is part of the broadcast where I tell you a little bit about my personal news, about what's going on in the world of Hassan Hassan Abi Piker in between the time period where I press the stop streaming button and press the start streaming button. You missed the Mufasa. You missed Mufasa. I'm sorry. Many of you did. If you're coming in just now, right at this very moment, you missed the Mufasa because we did that already. Anyway, um, Norm Finkelstein is going to discuss the K.J. Cole B finally. Hell yeah, baby. Um, personal news wise, my cousin is here. And let me tell you, this motherfucker, I told him, I told him not to do it. I was like, don't bring anything from Turkey. Do not bring baklava. Don't do it. Okay. And of course he did it. He did it for Marat. He brought baklava for Marat. And Marat's girlfriend. And I, unfortunately, because this was like where the baklava was being stored. I had baklava in my house. And when I have baklava in my house, I'm going to eat that baklava. Okay. So I did. I ate some of it. I ate like a bunch um, I tried to regulate it by just cutting out dinner and slamming a pro shake instead. But God damn it, dude. He was like, listen, bro, I was going to bring two boxes, one for you, regardless of your expectations. It's just, bro, bro, let me tell you, okay? It's like that shawarma story during Ramadan, okay? You know, you know what, the one I'm talking about? Here, this one. مرحبا وعليكم السلام ورحمة الله وبركاته يا شيخ اليوم بالغلط وقعت ووقعت تمي شورما مع زيادة طحينية نعم وكمان قطع التفاح وتقريبا 3 لتر ماء فمش عارف هل أكمل صيامي ولا أطعمني الله وسقاني الله فد مي الله فد مي okay what a wonderful what a wonderful situation brother sometimes sometimes Allah feeds you you know you just slip and you fall and the baklava falls in your mouth and that's exactly what happened to me and it's so crazy would you know it it happened four times in a row okay 
it was crazy to me because there was two different types of fucking, there were two different types of baklava too. Four times in a row, two separate baklavas fell into my mouth. Four totally. Four baklavas. I don't know how it happened. I think it was Allah who willed it. Inshallah. I mean, mashallah, brother. Of course, that is, it is what it is. You know what I mean? Mashallah, you have to, when you are in God's good graces, when Allah says, listen, you will have this baklava, um, it's, it's, you know, it is what it is, okay? I just, I don't know how it happened. Four times in a row, it wasn't Allah testing me. I think at first I thought, the first one I was like, oh, Allah is testing me. He's testing my will. Uh, do I have the resilience here to resist, brother? Brother, do I, can I resist? The temptation, brother. And then when it happened over and over again, I just, you know, when I slammed, I mean, not slammed. I did not slam the four baklavas in a row. When the baklavas fell into my mouth, I said, you know what? Mashallah, I think Allah wants this baklava to be inside of me. Okay. <sighs> okay. Action Bronson eating good ass Turkish food in London. Remember you clicked my link before crazy shit happened over the course of the stream. You never got around to watching it. The never ending top dishes in London. Okay. We'll watch that later. Uh, brother Tuesday, brother only prayers. Oh, what you fatty? I am fat. I'm actually not fat, but, um, you know, that was a very, that was a very fat thing of me to do. So anyway, um, but yeah, my cousins are here. They, they had some lobster last night. And then, uh, I of course didn't eat dinner cause I ate baklava instead. And then, um, uh, after that, I, uh, slammed some protein shakes to make up for it, you know, like <laughs> low calorie, high protein, tried to get it as much as I could, uh, try to get that in as much as I could, but, um, you're so white at her shaking my head. Yeah, I am. Uh, oh, also I got a haircut. I got a haircut for those of you who are wondering, Hassan, what happened? I, I, that's it. I, uh, I did, I got a haircut, uh, hope I think it's good. I mean, it's like kind of a little bit short, but, um, I was, I asked him to like snip the front more than he usually does. So I think it's like mid, mid, mid. Why is the fuck do you mean mid? Oh my God. Exploring Stalin's luxury resort, bro. I swear to God. Yes. Theory is just making content for me and me only i'm not even kidding i feel like i feel like a receding hairline dude there's no there's nothing funnier than like talking about anything on on twitch someone will immediately be like haha your hairline is receding no it's not okay it's okay you can say it and now you can say copium when i say that it's fine bro i'll still look hotter than you even if i was bald okay i'll fuck your mom and your dad Hassan, you need to fix the middle. What do you mean fix the middle? There's nothing I can fix. Um, it was actually receding. There was a point in time when it was literally receding. And um, Twitch, Twitch did low key. Uh, Twitch literally, uh, it, you know, got me on board with that. I, I, I realized it was receding and I immediately started medicating, so. This just in, little guy. What is this? Logan Paul got scammed? Oh, nice. Um, Maybe then people will like you as much as Northern Lion. Honestly, if I was bald, I think people would like me more. Would you fuck a trans girl asking for a friend? Why is this a question? I am very shallow. Okay? Very shallow. And I've said this already many, many times over. No matter who the woman is, if they fit my narrow standards, then yeah, I'm in there like swimwear. I'm a little bit, a little bit not about the penis lifestyle. I mean, I've talked about this as well. 
that's where things get a little tricky. I, I, I would like to have the tools down there. You know what I mean? Hassan chaser arc. Bro, this is the exact opposite of being a chaser. I'm not saying you have to be trans. I'm saying I don't give a shit. Also, that's like one of those questions where there's not a good answer. Like, no matter... Uh, the answer I just gave you is quite literally the most politically correct answer a human being could physically come up with mathematically. And half, like, half of you in the chat are just loaded to, to get mad at that in one direction. Half of you are uh, loaded to get mad at in the other direction. Is bait. <laughs> is literally the best possible answer you can give that. It's like, I'm, I don't give a shit. I don't care. I don't care if, if someone is a, a trans or, or cis. I don't give a fuck at all. It is a, it's a very old meme, but it's like, listen, if it makes my dick hard, I'm in there. I don't give a shit. <laughs> anyway. Um, Hasanabi, his is the transphobia version of do you condemn Hamas? <laughs> Jabuki once said that most people's sexuality is just hot people. Yes, that is true. Pansexual king? I don't think that makes me pansexual. But not at all. I think it would be pan if I was like, yeah, I'll fuck dudes. And then low fucking dudes as well on top of that attitude that I have. Democrats. Oh my God. Why are you guys sending me this? Okay. Um, what the fuck was I going to say? Oh, okay. 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 Um, personal news wise, uh, woke up. I still haven't like fully. I still have not. Hey everyone. Before we start the video, to, I need to make a fuck? humble request. What the hell is this? Okay. I still haven't been able to fully uh, fix my sleep schedule, unfortunately, because uh, no matter what I do, I keep like I keep going to bed early. I haven't blasted off yet. I'm going to blast off right now. I keep going to bed early, but I can't sleep until like 1. Okay. I just, I can't, I can't go to bed. J. Cole's transphobic line that everyone's going to send. Cole casually dropping the worst bar of the decade. Oh, he's being transphobic. Kendrick on top once again. Not a big deal. Kendrick Lamar did an entire, an entire fucking song about how he like overcame transphobia. J. Cole, on the other hand, is like, bro, lol, you like trans people? Exactly. We already know who's on top. Anyway. Um, he's saying a transphobic line just to call someone a pussy. Would you consider smoking some indica before bed? No. Huh. Just hold your breath until you pass out. That's not going to work either. It's not transphobic. His haters are just corny. Okay. Okay. Let's blast off. Earthquake in New York. 40 degrees in Los Angeles, LA. This is Brandon's America. Israel fires two bad apples in genocidal campaign. Did the Macy's send me a playlist? Because we got some freaking bangers up in here already. God damn. The Houthis hosted Jackson Hinkledink. Um, a big L for the Houthis. But, you know, what are you going to do? Sometimes, listen. Sometimes your faves, your problematic faves, end up taking L's. Okay? It's not a big deal. <coughs> it's, it is what it is. Okay? It is what it is, boys. Soaking in an Epsom salt bath gives you transdermal magnesium and magnesium helps my insomnia a ton. I did that. I literally did that last night.
Earthquake in New York, 40 degrees in LA. This is Brandon's America, Israel fires two bad apples and genocidal campaign. It's Friday fun day. Oh, another thing I did. I fixed, I got my Steam Deck to do remote play with the PlayStation 5. And that shit's a banger. I played Rise of Ronin last night. Rise of Ronin is fine. It's not that good, I will admit. It's like, I would say Ghost of Tsushima is like probably better than Rise of Ronin, which is shocking, I know. Cause Ghost of Tsushima is like, you know, kind of basic, but it was a great fun game that I loved and, and I very much enjoyed. Wait, is the input lag bad streaming to the PS5 to the Steam Deck? No, it's perfect. Dude, Kaya is so fucking loud right now. Her snoring is so goddamn loud. Northern Lions take on weather events from like a year ago. Man just keeps getting more based. Give her a mic. No, she's actually in timeout right now. I'm actually very mad at her. She pooped in the house, which was crazy. If we had a video yesterday and closed it, don't resend it every day. He closed it for a reason. Thank you. Good take on that. Rise of Ronin. How about you try rising some bitches? How do you rise bitches? Friday fun day. J. Cole beef. Okay. All right. We're blasting off. Uh, we have officially blasted off. I'm not going to run a top of the hour ad break here because uh, honestly, it's only been 30 minutes and that would be uncouth. That would not be appropriate, I think. So yeah, we're blasting off folks. We're blasting off. Let the people know. Let everybody know your idea of farm reactions to MLK documentary. No, we're going to do, we're going to do even more. Wait, what the fuck? Okay. We'll do, I'll do this one piece quiz right now while we're blasting off. Okay. Very quickly. Easy peasy, baby. Okay. Uh, easy. Who was the first straw hat? Technically it's Nami, but, uh, I assume depending on your, depending on what you question, it could be Zoro as well, because Nami was like secretly not a part of the crew. It's a trick question. It's a trick question. Technically, I think you could say Nami, but the trick is that it's Zoro because Zoro actually voluntarily joined. Whereas Nami at that point was in the periphery of the straw hats, but had not officially joined the straw hats. So yeah. Uh, it is Zoro. The answer is Zoro. The easy answer is Zoro. There you go. Uh, how old is Luffy right now? I don't know how old Luffy is right now. I would, ex I would suspect maybe 19. Yeah. Um, there you go. Who inspired Luffy to become pirate King? So this is a really interesting one. Once again, it's, it, I think it's, it's Shanks, but it could be Goldie Roger because he loves Goldie Roger from his, uh, from in perpetuity. He's like a, a big follower of Goldie Roger. You expect it to be Goldie Roger, but the answer is Shanks. Um, anyway, trick question. These are very easy. Oh my God. Who was the first one to defeat Luffy? Ooh, this one is actually a little bit confusing. I think Crocodile. Because Crocodile did defeat Luffy, but, but I don't know. The real answer is actually Smoker, by the way. It actually is Smoker, and it's not even on here right now, which is kind of interesting. I don't know what they're considering defeat, though, because Luffy did end up defeating Crocodile at the end, and as far as I watched, she did not end up defeating Big Mom at all. They just kind of ran away. Uh, Big Mom was beating the shit out of him. So is it like... Does it mean that, like, uh, you lost the battle but then won the war, or does it mean, uh, you know, it, like, th that's the question. Like, is it... Is it just about that? But I think it's probably the simple answer would be crocodile. Yeah, there you go. Easy. Who looked after Luffy when he was young? Boa Hancock. That's weird. That's not true. Makino did. Uh, so did Shanks and Dadan as well. 
I assume this is, I mean, obviously it's not fucking uh, Boa, but I think the, again, trick question, it's going to be the Don. The Don, when he was really young, and then Makino and Shanks uh, to a certain degree afterwards, but it was the Don OG. Um, there you go. Easy. Asked and answered. What was the name of the first cruise ship? Going Mary, Mary, Mary Go, Thousand Sunny. Um, it was the Going Mary. Wait. Is that also a trick question? No, it, it is the going Mary. It's the going Mary. Uh, one of the one of the saddest moments in anime history across the board when going Mary uh, is officially one of the first uh, characters on the crew to, you know, there it is. What's Luffy's devil fruit? Oh, I don't know what Luffy's devil fruit looks like. I don't remember. Oh my God, it's not the heart. It's not the flame, obviously. Um, maybe it's number four. No, maybe it's number two. I don't know. I actually don't know this one. I'm gonna go with number two regardless. Okay, I lucked out on that. I lucked out on that. Didn't know what it was. Didn't know what Luffy's fruit looked like. I don't remember that. Who was the first Admiral? Akainu, Alkiji, Ryo Kugru, uh, Kugyu. I don't even know who this fucking guy is. And then Kazaru. Uh, I think maybe I don't know because like uh, I th this might be this one I don't know actually this might be spoilers too but uh, I I don't know I guess it's Alkiji I didn't know that one I'll admit I didn't know that one who isn't a hockey user uh, useless kids Sengoku Law and Sabo that's actually a really interesting one I I think it's I guess it's I mean they all. They, I'm pretty sure they all use hockey, but I don't know. Maybe Sabo? I don't know. Maybe, maybe Sabo? It's Law? Law doesn't use hockey? I did not know that. Okay, I'm getting owned right now. Who is the first son of Charlotte Linlin? Uh, the first son of Charlotte Linlin. Oh, uh, Cracker, maybe? Is it Cracker? Oh, it's Pedos Pedo. I did not know that that was the first son. How many did you get right? Write down in the comments. I thought, I thought Law did use hockey. Anyway, I'm finally starting reading One Piece due to your streams, and it's, I'm on the Archipelago arc, and it's sick. Are you going to watch the new good work? New person that got pissed that you said one piece is political. I don't even like a song that much, but this video pissed me off so bad. He was literally just saying one piece is political and gave examples and they all just laughed at him and acted like he was crazy. Wait, what? Zionist fuck off. Wait, this person is like on my side. Yeah. Which is kind of funny because like... I always love, first of all, they didn't even understand. The person is on my side, not realizing that the Trash Taste Boys agree with me. So I find that very funny. Like, every part of this is wrong. One, why is a person that's saying, like, Zionist fuck off being like, I don't even like Hassan that much? That I never understand, okay? Because, like, half the reason why people shit on me and say, like, oh, Hassan is a bad guy is literally because they secretly want to defend Israel or openly want to defend Israel. So you've been fed this propaganda that I'm a bad person by people who have very openly manipulated your perspective. So that's number one. Number two, number two, number two. Those boys at the Trash Taste Podcast did agree with me, so you didn't understand that point at all. Uh... And uh, I don't think they said I was crazy at all. I think they, they agreed with me. So she failed on that front either. Yeah, this is a person that's getting frustrated at the Trash Taste Boys. But she shouldn't be because... Anyway... Here's another that agrees with you. 
I love that this always bangs. Like this tweet is a, this One Piece is political is like a permanent thing that in the Western audiences has like drawn a little bit of rift in like the 30% of One Piece fans that are just like weirdly fucking insanely right wing. You know what I mean? Literally the core driving theme at the center of the story is a warlord government erasing history, suppressing freedom of information and killing anyone who attempts to learn the truth. I don't know how anyone can say One, one Piece isn't political without a straight face. Yeah. Extra small head in that pick. Yeah, I know. This is what Geo the One Piece poster said about it in the comments. That's crazy. Yeah, this person literally has made fun of me before and then got fucking bullied by the fandom. So now he's like openly. It's so funny because like Geo, I remember, had shit on my One Piece take before or like he said something like bros the one bro calling luffy a terrorist like what is he the one world government and then everyone was like no you're a fucking idiot like he's right <laughs> so now he's like now he's he's taking the now he's taking the other stance <laughs> where he's like yeah i guess it is <laughs> i guess it is political it's just not in your face yes it is bro it literally is shoved in your face the entire fucking genre is political and it's shoved in your face you just Refuse to recognize it because you want to fucking maintain this like apolitical narrative. Yeah, bro, talking like he worked for the one world government. Um, never liked this dude, but the article completely took this out of context. Ah, anyway. You deleted this app for a reason, close this tab. It's fine, bro. We're just having fun. Jesus Christ. Um. Uh the Egyptian government is taken over by skin changing crocodiles. Help us. What? Uh yes, there's a character in One Piece, a very cool character in One Piece that's power is literally transifying. Uh, their enemies. All right. All right. The issue is this doom scrolling on his off day. Yeah, this is like, this is fine to do when I'm live. It's not like an issue. You just missed the majority report raid. Oh my God. Majority report. Thank you for the raid. Hope you had a good stream. Um, anyway, flat folk Friday mentioned already mentioned so, yeah, I have met the flag general whose power is literally the buff workers into revolution. Yeah, and she's hot. It's sick. M majority report. Finster cosplayed as you. First accurate Hassan the Hun cosplay. This is literally... This is the the average Hassan the Hun enjoyer, okay? Uh, I heard she was like reviewing. I heard she was reviewing the uh, the 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 merch. Is that is that correct? Your fans don't wear pants. No. Watching any of the new anime this season? Not really. Finster is a Hasanabe head. How is that shocking? I like when people go, bro, he, him still. Like, it's right here, man. It's right here, chat. It's on screen. I don't understand it. Like, what do you mean? What do you mean? It's on the fucking screen. Why do you gotta be like this? Ain't nobody's out here reading, okay? Many of you, I tell you to read the Quran, but I also want you to read the things that are on screen. The first surah in the Quran 
is read, bro, okay? That is what Allah told the Prophet Muhammad. Read, motherfucker. That's the first thing he said. Literally the first thing he said. And some of you need to internalize this. Brother, brother, read, brother. It's the most important part of the Quran, brother. Brother, read. Variety article about Jewish support for Glazier's speech. Hell yeah. Joaquin Phoenix, Elliot Gould, Chloe Feynman, and more Jewish creators support Jonathan Glazer's Oscar speech and open letter. Let's go. I bet that's not a fucking Google Doc this time either. That's actually real. Dude, this is what I'm talking about, baby. This is what I'm talking about. Okay, anyway, we'll get to this stuff in a second. Um, what was I going to do here? There was some other stuff that I wanted to talk about. Um, 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 Dude, what the fuck? What are you, what do you mean? This is a Megatron tweet. This is not like, I'm sorry, no disrespect, but like, I'm not trusting anything that I see on fucking Twitter about like updates on Updates on the world, okay? I'm not doing that. What is this? I haven't read the queue, but I have I have looked into Donghua Xinglong's food grade glycine. What? Yeah, bro. Yesterday Twitter thought Tel Aviv was getting nuked, okay? By Iran. Anyway, um, um, burr, 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 burr. What was I going to do? Will you be watching the Fallout series? Yes. Um, ha yeah, happy birthday to congratulations to Ethan Klein for having another child. Every time this man has another child a conservative is getting owned because a, another another libtard is brought into this planet you know what i mean so congratulations to ethan my man's having my man's having kids like he's he's mormon at this point check out dungeon meshi bro best anime of the season is it dungeon meshi the food one German leftist anti-fascist rap group just put out a song with lines such as surprise even Greta hates Jews civilians in Gaza are the shield of Hamas the shield of descendants of Jew gassers my dudes you are the descendants of Jew gassers that's so funny I love German anti-fascist dude I love German leftist anti-fascist Rosa Luxemburg is is literally doing flips in her grave okay like like there was a time, there was a time and place when German anti-fascism meant something, okay? Oh my God, bro. Rosa was Polish, not German. Okay, whatever. Every German, every German uh, a KPD member. Yeah, she organized in Germany. It doesn't fucking matter. Everybody, everybody has to, everybody has to be like, eh. you, you got to give something to the fucking polls. I get it. She organized in Germany. She got fucking murdered in Germany. Uh. Uh. What the fuck? Is this not a twist off? Does Stumptown change their fucking... That's crazy. Hassan, you're being kind of weird. Wait, why am I being weird? Um, Classic Hassan hating on the polls. Yeah. You got soft hands, boy. It's true. Um, 
where was I? Uh, what was I talking about? All right, we'll, we'll talk about German anti-fascism and how much of a fucking meme it is in a second. What is this? Helen Keller is a fraud. Proud Helen Keller denier. Helen Keller was not real. I mean, yeah, it's not even a conspiracy. It's not real at all. Come on, bro. Can't see, can't speak, can't hear. So fuck's that about? That's crazy. That's crazy. It's a psyop. People are like, oh, no, totally. Sh sure. Okay. Sure. Sure. There are a lot of Helen Keller deniers. Is not new. Rush Limbaugh has someone calling about this in the 90s. Dude, calling into Rush Limbaugh to be like, Helen Keller is not real is so funny. Have you seen who rocked your merch today on the gram? Who? Who did? I can't link it. Oh yeah, I saw the uh, the fin post. I retweeted it. I can't link it, but there was an interview. They believe criticism of capitalism sounds like anti-Semitism. It's uh, it's unironically anti-Semitic to literally be like criticisms of capitalism are are, are actually kind of anti-Semitic, sweetie, because all Jews are the powerful that control the world. That's like the hidden underlying presumption to make this seem anti-Semitic. So only anti-Semitic dumb fucks would, would actually say that. You're the one who's being anti-Semitic when you say, no, you don't understand, actually. It is Jews that are controlling everything. They're the puppeteers. <laughs> and it's not capitalism and self-interest that is motivating those who own capital uh, to behave a certain way. Um, I'm watching with my cash. She said, meow, meow. She wants to know your opinions on that. Meow. There you go. That's my response. Um, okay. 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 Uh, so yeah, let's get started. Let's get started on. Oh my God. We have so many fucking cat lovers in this goddamn community. It's crazy. Um, I am not going to do the J. Cole transphobic line yet. Okay. I don't care. Um, what I'm going to do instead is talk about the earthquake. Attention, that was not an earthquake in New Jersey. I just like to get a little morning sex now and then. Everyone relax and get back to normal, my fault. So that's pretty funny. I'm glad that the East Coast is finally catching up to the West Coast memes, because that's like, this is like basically the oldest meme in the game. Like we don't even do this shit no more. We don't even make these jokes any longer because it happens literally all the time in the West Coast. So like, it's funny that this is new. For the East Coast. This is a new joke for the East Coast, which is cool. Yo, Sydney Sweeney is pro-Palestine. Top of the hour ad break? Bro, I'm not running a top of the hour ad break here. What the fuck are you talking about? Oh, I saw this. Dude, this is a this is literally a Yakuza character. Did I write it correctly? How do I spell that? Kamurocho. It's actually not even Kamurocho, actually. It's in Ichinjo, right? Did they have these in Kamurocho? I think it's in Ichinjo. No, Kabukicho is the real fucking place. We're not talking about that. I'm talking about, I'm talking about uh, Yakuza. This is a Yakuza meme. This is not for you. 
Eugene show, right? That's where it is. Yeah, I think they're only... This isn't weird. It's a Yakuza Sujiman. They're all over Eugene show. And Hawaii as well, to be honest. <sighs> this is a tweet not for you. This is a tweet that is like literally for one group of people, okay? This is a this is a tweet for one group of people. People who played Yakuza 7 and Yakuza 8. He's in his bag, leave him alone. Oh, I thought you were talking about me, but now I realize you're talking about the Sujiman. Okay, this is a this is a tweet that is like deserving of a retweet from Sega or something. You know what I mean? Yeah, Gene Park is not for you. You don't understand it. You haven't played the peak. You have not played. You haven't played peak, okay? You don't understand. Huh. Make fun of make fun all you want, but they are not catching that guy. Literally you. What is this? Japanese earthquakes are better. Dude, that's fucked up. That's, that's, that's so, that's so far out of pocket because it is me. You fucking got my ass on that one for sure. Fuck it. I'll retweet it. Nippon Earth folded hundreds of times. Sasha Baron Cohen just got divorced an hour ago. No way. Now he can marry Israel. Finally. My wife divorced me. <laughs> oh God. Anyway, all right, 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 all right. This is this is it. We're doing it. We're doing the damn thing. Let's do it. I can't tell if this is like an unironic person or this is a meme. I genuinely don't understand it. I said earthquake in New York, 40 degrees in LA. This is Brandon's America. And then this guy said, Glad you finally turned around. Welcome to the side of truth. And I don't know if this guy's like memeing along with me or if he genuinely thinks that like I do believe that this is Brandon's America and he did this. Fuck. Isla Fisher announced the divorce on Insta in the worst way possible. After a long tennis match lasting over 20 years, we are finally putting our rackets down. In 2023, we jointly filed to end our marriage. We've always prioritized our privacy and have been quietly working through this change. We forever share in our devotion and love for our children. What the fuck? Oh, this is this is in the halls. This is like Bro, this is actually this is a perfect meme. This will be remembered. There I've never seen something so fucking unhinged. It's cute, bro. Stop hating. Are you fucking serious? Just don't say anything. What do you mean? This is a new meme template at this point. Bro, she literally converted to Judaism for him. Wait, she did? Isla Fisher wasn't... Isla Fisher wasn't Jewish? Oh my God, I had no idea. Is this an infinite jest themed divorce announcement? Can you convert to Judaism? Yes, it is very difficult. It's not easy. They don't want you in the club, bro. It's not easy. You actually, I respect it. Like, you have to put in the effort. There's no like, oh, I said the fucking Shahada and I'm now in. You know what I mean? Like, you, you got to put in the fucking work. You get denied and shit.
Everyone is hating on Sasha. Did he do something I'm not aware of? <clears throat> I've always been a big fan of Sasha Baron Cohen, but um, I've always like hoped that he wasn't like a, like a major Zionist, even though he was a part of a Zionist troop when he was growing up. Um, but he kind of is, you know, it just, it is what it is. He's a bit of a, I mean, he's more of a liberal Zionist than anything else, but like, I do, I do love, I do personally love the, like the Iran Morad character and like a lot of his work, especially who was America was incredible. Um, but yeah, would you accept him back to the good side if he changed his ways? I would want him to be funny again. I would want him to be like, not so fucking annoying. Yeah, uh, I know, dude. This is the greatest. My goats. All my goats in one room. This fucking... This is so sick. Good evening. Let's take this country back. This is the greatest photo of all time. You can't... The amount of... The amount of swag emanating from this room is out of control, dude. Fuck, it's so sick. I just, dude, everyone is getting mogged. Baron is height mogging and mewing. Okay. Yeah, that's Trump's son. That's the prodigal son. Bro, that is the goat. And right next to Baron, you have my other goat, Patrick Bud David. Obviously, I'm a fan of Jay Waller as well. But Patrick Bud David is the is the actual I don't know. This is a goat off. Okay. I don't know who I love more in this photo. Probably Patrick Bud David. He is the best. It's just like oh, fuck. It's such a good photo, man. I don't know who the fuck this thing is. I don't know what's going on here. And I think is this guy like a UFC fighter or something? The all the way on the left. Colby Covington? Damn, bro. I know my shit. I know. <laughs> I don't know anything about <laughs> I don't know anything about the UFC. I only know him because he's a fucking hog and like is on the podcast circuit. I am I am basically like the hog Pokemon trainer. You know what I mean? I collect them. Yeah. Those fits are atrocious. God damn. Yeah, I know. Uh, I was watching one of those pedo catching videos and there was a predator that was quoting Patrick Bet David in pa value tainment while trying to explain his reasoning for messaging minors. That's awesome. I read a thread roasting their terrible fits besides PBD. Uh, yeah, D, uh, D Workwear did a thread as always because it's both political and also fashion. So that's like in his wheelhouse where he uh, roasted these guys' fits. Where the fuck is it? Let me see. We'll talk about that in a second. Oh, here it is. Um, I'm going to go ahead and say he's a hater, okay, right off the jump, because these guys are goats, and uh, and he's just a hater. Let's talk about some of the tailoring choices in this photo and how you can avoid making the same mistakes. A lot of guys have a hard time accepting that good tailoring is not about making things as slim as possible. When clothes are this tight, they will restrict movement. I expect this is why a lot of guys say tailoring is uncomfortable. He's right about that. 100%. He's going to block you now. He used to, he had me blocked for a long time. Uh, a lot of guys should first get it out of their head that slimmer is better. Some outfits can be slim, but the point of tailoring is not always to make things as slim as possible. It's about flattering your body shape, not recreating it. The shoulders and sleeves on the purple suit are too small, making the person look like he's about to bust out of his coat. The second coat doesn't even look like it can be fastened. Both men are wearing trousers that are too narrow and tapered. They do this shit all the time, by the way. This is like a... I don't know why he had, had me blocked. But these guys do this shit all the time. It's very frustrating. Look, oh my god, I just saw the shoes. Oh my god, what the fuck are those shoes? Oh, yuck. Oh, yucky. Okay. Um. Yeah, dudes do this all the time. Especially like jack dudes. Like, they don't know how to fucking... Let me tell you something. I wear a lot of stuff that's ill-fitting, 
but that's because I'm not getting them tailored. So if you're getting this shit tailored, like get a normal fucking tailored suit. Why are you tailoring your suit to make sure that it makes you look like your 10 pound sausage in a five pound bag? I don't get that. The, the more alpha you are, the more skin tight your suit is. <laughs> anyway. Um, both men are wearing trousers that are too narrow and tapered. A lot of athletic men assume they look better in this type of tailoring. They do not. Look at these athletic men who are wearing more classic proportions, a fuller coat with a higher rise trousers. These clothes have drape and shape. This is both comfortable and elegant. God damn. God damn. They're hot. Some may feel these outfits are too boring, but check out Domingo. Obviously, Domingo is literally the goat at this. He is the best at this. He is... He is the peak, okay? No one comes near him as far as, like, red carpet fashion that is, like, super elevated, that is, uh, uh, that, that's interesting, that's unique. He is the peak. Like, he is the guy at the top of the game. Um, his clothes follow the same principles, drape and shape, lines are clean, there's room for comfortable movement, the creativity comes from the cut, silhouette, and fabric. Exactly. Look at that, dude. Oh, with the flared... Oh, oh, Coleman Domingo, you are so fucking sick. God damn it. It's kind of funny because this is like Coleman Domingo and he's wearing what I would consider to be like a Doflamingo fit almost. Doofy. But anyway, he's, he's so awesome. Letting gay men compete against straights in fashion is cheating. Eh, let's cope. Although you don't always have to choose classic footwear, doing so will provide with the guardrails against falling into stuff like this. Two-tone tassel driving mocks and double monks look like five open browser tabs set to various menswear blogs. Yeah, this is, this right here, these shoes are made specifically, I feel like they don't sell these outside of Saudi Arabia or the Gulf states, okay? If you bought like, $2,000 moccasins with tassels on them that are of a different color, you should never be allowed in public. It's Louis Vuitton. It's already gross, okay? It's already gross. I fucking despise uh, Logomania. I have never understood the principle behind it. I think it immediately spells that you're a fucking broke boy who's trying desperately to show people that you are so bad with money, okay? It's cheap, it's terrible. You will never see someone do logomania that you respect, okay? It is so bad. It's disgusting. Louis Vuitton is one of the worst offenders of logomania. Nah, bro, don't disrespect Roger like that. I don't give a fuck, okay? I'm sorry. You know, RIP, but I fucking despise that shit, okay? You own a Gucci shirt with logos all over it? The only fucking item that you've ever seen me wear that actually has the word Gucci on it, it's still fucking not the, the uh, it's still not the primary feature of it. It's literally an ugly, uh, it's literally an ugly Hawaiian shirt that's created to look like a tourism shirt. I like your Dolce & Gabbana gaming chair. Yeah, I fucking despise it. I hate it. It's not the main logo. That's not logo mania at all. It's like cleverly hidden. You're not understanding logo mania. I did not get rolled. You guys are fucking our men's fashion advice. You're so stupid. I'm sorry. This is like, you just don't know what you're talking about. Fuck. Why? Why am I having a conversation with dumb fucks who don't know? Anyway, don't you have a Louis Vuitton bag or suitcase? No, I have a, I have a, a, a Gucci bag. Not a Louis Vuitton one. Where is it? Which definitely does fall under the category of logomania. That part is true. This is, the, this is the one thing that I have that's like definitely logomania. But even then, it's like a little bit more subtle. But you're right. They make a lot of the shit that is logomania. You're right about that. Chat doesn't get you mean a purse that has 500 logos on it as the main design. No, this is a perfect example of logo mania right here. It's just like Louis Vuitton does this fucking 
disgusting, gaudy bullshit, okay? It's like, oh, look at me. I'm wearing something that's Louis Vuitton. It's a, it's a $2,000 moccasin, and it sucks dick. It's got two-tone. It's got the fucking 2005 Cole Haan. Is it actually supposed to be sporty, or is it actually supposed to be classic shit going on? With the, with the under cushion, okay? I hate that shit. And it's orange. This stuff is in, this stuff is not even being sold in fucking outlet malls, man. They don't even sell this shit at the Cole Haan outlet store. This was like popping, right? This was popping in like 2014. Ugly as hell. Oh, that's literally just LV's regular look for canvas stuff, though, without the orange accents. I know it's fucking gross. Louis Vuitton sucks ass. The Pharrell collections have been kind of good. Tyler, the creator, actually did a phenomenal job. But aside from that, Louis Vuitton is like, for the most part, this. It's exactly that. It's gaudy as shit. Caring about people's clothes is so fucking stupid. Chatter, we're literally talking about a dude who went out of his way to buy those fucking shoes because he thought they were hot, okay? Obviously, I'm gonna fucking criticize it. For all collections have been terrible. Some of the pieces have been good from the For All Collections. The back of those shoes are actually disgusting. No! Okay, they're $950. Oh my god, at least they're not like $2,000. Oh my God, bro. That is unacceptable. Oh, dude, what the fuck? I got the shopper bag MM for the Pharrell collection. It's just not available to purchase for people. I'm a preferred customer with them now. I just don't fuck with Louis Vuitton uh, that much. Like, uh, out of all of those, like, big designer stores, I don't, I don't fuck with Louis Vuitton that much. I think the new collection, like, the new direction they're going in is, like, not that bad. Um, but overall, I think it's, like, silly. I, uh, $870 too much? Yeah, by the way, that's the cheapest Louis Vuitton shoe. Even Louis was like, yeah, these are gross. No, this is the shoe for the fucking crypto entrepreneur, Okay. That's it. This is the shoe that you have if you're a Wall Street Bet subscriber, if you're hodling on some GameStop stocks, and obviously your portfolio is constantly in a fucking terrible pit. Uh, your portfolio is constantly taking a nosedive. That's why this is the affordable version of like a better shoe that you could possibly purchase. Yeah, see, this collection is a little bit better. A little bit of subtlety goes a long way, Louis Vuitton. Fendi is even ver worse than L uh, LV. It's not like they don't have shit without their logo. Uh, Louis Vuitton is the worst offender of this. They barely have shit without their logo, okay? Barely. Nah, bro. Shoes are a depreciating asset. Fuck that, bro. Calls on Tesla. See? Look. You see this? These are a much better version of this. How do you feel about Prada? I didn't used to fuck with Prada. I think Prada is kind of good. I, I do kind of fuck with Prada now. I feel like Prada over the past like five to ten years has really elevated its, its game. I think it's like... Out of all of like the the big designer fat label stores like Gucci, Louis Vuitton, all of those stores, I would say Prada is like I don't have anything Prada except for those like massive fucking shoes um, that I rarely ever wear because it's like goofy as hell. Um, I think uh, Prada is probably better than than all of those. Can you rank the top five in your opinion of the big designers? No, because you're going to get, you're going to laugh at me. It's all, it's all Japanese. My favorite designers are Japanese. I wear 
I love Yoji Yamamoto. I think some of the Rick Owens pieces are good, but uh, I wish I could wear... Uh, well, I, that's not true. I got some French ones, too. Le Maire is pretty good. He, they're French. It's just I can't wear any of their shit, so it sucks. So I only wear Yoji. Like Issey Miyake, for example. I love Issey Miyake's clothes. I can't wear them because that piece of shit, he's dead now. Uh, you know, rest in piss, Issey Miyake. Never made anything over a size five. And the size fives are actually fucking L's in American sizing. Loewe is also good. Some good, some not so good. Anyway. Needles and Undercover are fire too. Uh, Needle has some good stuff. Stop being disrespectful. I will be. He's disrespecting my whole life. Wait, why is it rest in piss? I don't know about him. No, I'm saying that because he's disrespecting my whole life, making sick ass fucking clothes, but not fucking doing anything over a four, dude. That's why he's fucked up. No, I'm serious. It's so fucked up. If he, if he has shit clothes and then he made it only for like little people, then that's fine. But, like, if you're going to make sick-ass clothes, you have to make it for, like, Capital is another one. It's like, come on, bro. You guys are literally a Maribus. How the fuck are you going to be Visvim and Capital, two Japanese fucking designers that are a Maribus. The entire aesthetic is directly a merger in the East and West, okay? Literally, everything they do, they fucking love denim. They love Western patterns. They love all this shit. And then they don't make sizes for fucking Americans, dude. Make some fucking fat sizes, bro. It should be illegal. It should be illegal. Sorry, I get very, very frustrated. I love fashion, as you guys know. It makes me so sad that I can't fucking fit into anything that they make. Ever fuck with engineer garments? Yes, I do. I wear uh, those pants that I wear all the time. And the fat man jacket that I wear all the time is engineered garments. Uh, but guess what? They're Japanese, but in New York. So that's why they actually have good sizing. Um, thoughts on J.W. Anderson? No, I never think about J.W. Anderson at all. Bro, it's almost like a curse. You earned your money without exploitation as a social. As a result, you can't buy anything you love that fits you. It's almost poetic. Yeah, I grew up fucking wanting to... I grew up wanting to own cool fashion stuff and now that i have like the actual finances to be able to purchase whatever the fuck i want i still can't because i can't fit in it and like i've lost a shit ton of weight and i still can't fit in it thoughts on tj maxx i was a maxinista for most of my life i was a maxinista for longer than i have not been a maxinista um let me tell you okay uh yeah, that's it's good You know what I hate, actually? You, here's a brand I fucking hate. Let's talk about a brand I hate. Amiri. Yuck. Basically fucking, uh, what is it? The, the Ed Hardy of this generation, okay? Yuck. I hate their shit. Straight up. I do not like Amiri at all. I'm a Marshall's head. I was a Marshall's head as well. But I do think... Honestly, for me, um, I used to be a Target, uh, or not Target, so I actually did shop at Target a lot as well. Target also, where do we stand on Target clothes? They are made by the same company that does Elwood. I know the fucking dude who owns the brand. We used to be friends. We're no longer, I don't think, friends. But, um, but they are white label production. Uh, Elwood makes all of the Target uh, uh, brand stuff. So there is always... There was always a surprisingly decent amount of like cheap but kind of nice fitting silhouettes at Target. I don't know how it is now. Bro, I'm a Balmain head. No, Balmain sucks. Last time Balmain made some cool shit was in like 2014 when they made those like thigh high boots. Um, I didn't have enough money, but I really wanted to buy it for my girlfriend at the time. And uh, I couldn't. Wait, or did I? I don't remember. Yeah, H&M Balmain collection was, like, kind of hard. Oh, yeah, I did get the H&M Balmain, Balmain collection. 
He said Miyake designed the 92 Lithuania official uniform, and that wasn't even the sickest uniforms the Lithuanians wore in the Olympics. It was this. Oh my god, this is so sick. Uh, Alexandre Matuisi, Amy Paris is my shit. Amy Paris is pretty good. Amy Paris is good. Um, Dior, I don't fuck with Dior. I don't fuck with YSL except for the buckle shoes. Uh, I have the YSL buckle shoes and a Western, uh, and a Western belt from them. But again, another brand that only makes shit for twinks. Okay. YSL only making clothes for motherfucking twinks. Do you fuck with Celine? No. I, I don't really know enough about Celine. Uh, I once told you that you used to dress like an eighth grader who just discovered monster trucks and you've gotten better, but man, sometimes you invoke that energy. Sure. Um, Givenchy, I don't really... I don't really fuck with Givenchy. I mean, I, I don't, I don't like know enough about them. Amy Leon Dor ALD. Oh my God. This is, <laughs> this is funny. That's awesome. Uh, Amy Leon Dor, fine, decent stuff. Um, good sizing. Here's a Visvim jacket for you. No, it's not. Visvim's giant social sculpture denim set. Real funny, boys. Real funny. This is what, uh, what is it? Uh, Masahiri, is that another? There's another Japanese designer that does this shit, by the way. And it's so fucking annoying, okay? Remember, I wore it. I wore it on stream at, uh, at, at H. Lorenzo. What is the fucking brand called? God damn it, someone will know in here. There's at least one. Yeah, Mihara Yasushiro. Uh, I think that's the brand. No, it's not Vetman. Vetman actually does, like, decent oversized clothing. Um, no, not Margiela. Yeah, it's, it's, they do it. Yasushiro does this. It's fucking nuts. They do like 7XL and then they, they, they make it so that you can like, uh, put your arms through it and wear it like a, wear it like a cape. Was that you saying Margiela? No, I, I did say Margiela, but I, that's not what I was talking about. Here's another thing I hate from the new Margiela collections. Maison Margiela. I, I, think, I think that uh, their new collections, when they do like the two different tone, like, oh, I, this is like the underwear that you can show. I feel like fashion has gone out of control. What do I mean by this? Fashion has gone out of control. Like, I feel like they're bored. They're trying to find something new and they're just fucking missing, like, real aggressively. Okay. I've never seen here. I'm going to show you this. Maybe it's because of fast fashion. I don't know what it is, but I've never seen. Hold on. Maison Margiela. I've never seen a motherfucker rock these and look good or rock these at all, as a matter of fact. Hold on. These, bro, these pants. Look at these fucking pants, dude. What are you doing? What is that, dude? These pants specifically come like that. They specifically come like that, dude. Wait, are there titties in this? I'm a little worried. Is, is couture? There might be boobs in this. Uh, boobies. Yeah, the pre-wedgie fit, dude. What are you doing? Shirt goes hard though. The yoke striped cotton shirt that goes kind of hard. Look at the Supreme collab. They popped off. No, I don't. I don't know. I think like. Is this the one? Oh, yeah, this is the one. Yeah. That's the one I was wearing. Art is out of control. It's called revolution against societal norms. No, I just don't like it. Wisdom's take. I think I just purchased the biggest flannel of all time. Oh, he bought it. I can't believe he bought it. Look, look at this. Are you shitting me? 
This thing is huge. I look like fucking Ariana Grande right now. I look like every girl that has a boyfriend over six foot. So this flannel was designed by Mahara Yasuhiro, the same designer that makes these shoes that you might've seen literally everywhere. It's like they asked them, how big do you want this? Bro, I hate, oh, that's another one I have smoke for. I fucking hate those shoes. Oh my God. Chunky, chunky shoelaces are so in right now. And I fucking hate hate it i hate chunky shoelaces it is literally this season's cum shoes okay it is this season's one-off i hope it goes away now they're making osiris ass shoes every fucking designer went oh we got to go back to the 2000s and everyone's making dc fucking skate shoes now with the chunky laces. I fucking despise it. Oh my god. Anyway. Having said that, however, bit on the chunky side, but the Rick Owens Doc Martens collab was kind of fire. I was actually gonna buy it in Australia. The short one. I wanted to buy the long one. The fucking uh the tall one. You are a hating ass old head. Why would I be a hating ass old head? It's literally fucking shoes from my era. When I was growing up, I should love it. Look up the most recent Balenciaga and Vet Mons runway. Yeah, I told you designer houses are the same as like your favorite artist. Okay, there are going to be skips. There are going to be a lot of skips. You got to look at a collection like you look at like an album. A new album comes out. Some are fucking hits. Some are bangers. Some are skips. If there are more skips than there are hits, then maybe it's time to move on from your favorite designer. Um, that's just how it works. Why don't you wear Chrome Hearts fraud? Dude, are you kidding me? Do you want me to get fucking executed? Why don't I wear Chrome Hearts? I think Chrome Hearts are dope. But think about why I don't wear Chrome Hearts. Do you think it would be okay? I wear fucking jewelry that's basically like either handmade shit that I bought from my friends, like this silver ring. That was like a hundred bucks. Or Vivian Westwood, that's also like 150 bucks, 200 bucks maximum. Chrome Hearts jewelry is like minimum $1,000. I wear $1,000 jewelry. I'm gonna get fucking ass blasted on Twitter every time somebody goes, somebody recognizes what it is. Anyway, got to respect the Japanese tabbies. Yo, these, these fits go hard, brother. Hard. Okay, Balmon has bangers, but maybe you're not twinkish enough for it. Okay, that jacket is pretty fire, but... Um, no, uh, I, I don't, I don't really like Balmain. I think it's like so gaudy. It's so out there. It's ironic because I'm literally fucking wearing, uh, uh, Dolce and Gabbana razor collab that they sent me for the record. And I have been known to wear some Dolce and Gabbana that they give me for free for the record. Um, from time to time, which is like the peak gaudy brand, right? Okay, these are pretty fire. Okay, these are cool. I, I, I'll recognize that. Thoughts on Belinci? Uh, like I said, on Belinci, some hits, some misses. I will always respect them for going for the fucking big, the big boy look. Um, they've they've kind of. They've kind of been pushing the limit a little bit, though. Like, I don't like these fucking long-ass, goofy-ass shoes that they got. Right? But I, I always am a sucker for the silhouette. And I think some of the Balenciaga silhouettes are fire. Like, it's, it's very comfy. These are ridiculous, though. Like, these are so stupid, bro. They're fucking goofy as hell. But these are sick. These large cargos. But like, what is this? Look, look, dude, dude. They have a towel skirt for $925. They have leaned far too into their fucking whole like, uh, uh, 
their their uh homeless aesthetic, homeless chic. Uh, the other thing I fucking hate about Balenciaga is when they go crazy on the logo mania. Some of the ugliest shits you've ever seen in your entire life are the Balenciaga logo mania stuff. It is literally so gross. It's like you can't see it in this collection because I guess their new stuff is not as bad. But sometimes they go so hard on the fucking logos. It's so stupid. Anyway. Bro, all those pieces are trash? No, they're not. These pants are sick. Um, these pants are sick. This jacket is sick. Uh, the, I guess, reversible shirt? Uh, nah, never mind. It's not that good. These cargo pants are fire. These glasses are sick. These cargo pants are fire. Unity Sports layered hoodie oversized. Let me see. No, I hate this. I hate this two-layer shit. It's so dumb. Layered parka is, uh, brother, uh, sample sticker t-shirt oversized. That kind of goes hard. How do you feel about early Raph Simmons? I don't know enough. This denim shirt is kind of cool. Gallery department, again, some hits, some misses. That parka is the only good thing on screen. I no, the parka is nice. I don't like the parka with the with the double. I don't like uh I don't fuck with the parkas with the uh, the the double layer. Oh my god, we've been doing so much fashion this morning. How the fuck did this happen? Where did we get here? Oh, we got here because I was talking about the goats. I was talking about the goats. We were talking about Derek uh, shitting on our goats. Okay, let's get back on track. All right, let's get back on. Do you like Levi's? Yes, of course. What is this? Rick Owens thoughts? I mean, Rick Owens has some fire shit. Uh, I'll admit. Some of their stuff is fire. Some of their stuff is straight fuego. Uh, I mean, it's very unique. Problem with Rick Owens is like you can't really piece it up with anything else. You have to go full Rick. Um, if you don't go full Rick, it just looks weird as hell. No, none of that looks good. Okay, bro, come on. At least that's like experimental in a good way. Jesus Christ. No, Rick Owens has a lot of hits and very few misses. You have to remember, like, at least he's trying. Your taste in your fashion is worse than being unsubscribed at the top of the hour. Oh, come on, brother. Brother! Brother, don't do that, brother. I don't like Versace. Brother, uh. Rick does a vibe and does it very well. Yes. Armani, Armani, do I look like a Jordanian uh, uh, foreign exchange student? The fuck do you mean Armani? Wearing the skin tight, wearing the most skin tight shirt you've ever goddamn seen. <laughs> My man said Armani. <laughs> okay, dude. Armani is clothing for Andrew Tate and Andrew Tate fans. Okay. Sorry. Sorry. Do you fuck with Acne Studios? Yes. And apparently they fuck with me too. All right, let's continue. Let's continue. Archive Armani is top tier. Yes, but we're talking about new. We're talking about Armani for the past 15 years. What about Diesel? Again, Diesel had a moment when I was growing up. Uh, I feel like new Diesel is kind of back a little bit, but uh, for the past, um, I would say for the past like 10 years, Diesel has been kind of shitty. It fell off, um, but it, I think it's it's making a resurgence now, especially because the 
the early 90s is like making a resurgence so like they kind of didn't ever leave that era because that was their fucking peak era 90s and early 2000s peak diesel they were great they were popping off what japanese jeans did you buy okay why you gotta hurt me like that that's a question that is hurtful do you like palm angels no Palm Angels, Rude, these are brands like, these are brands specifically for, for basically being like, hey, listen, like, look, this is a t-shirt because it says Palm Angels on it, it is fucking $1,000. Now, before people say, you have a Rude t-shirt, yes, I do, but you have to remember, I get a lot of shit for free, so suck my dick. Um, thoughts on Scotch and Soda? No. That is, Scotch and Soda was my... I had some scotch and soda stuff way back in the day because I would get it at Nordstrom Rack. Super cheap. Um, Lucky Jeans, absolutely not. It's very... Lucky Jeans and scotch and soda is like 2015. You wear Jacques Mousse? No, I don't. Um, but I do think that they have some cool stuff. What about Denim Tears? A lot of cool stuff on Denim Tears. Denim Tears does a lot of a lot of cool stuff. Adidas Y3, uh, yes, it's still on the Yoji line. So uh, obviously, put some respect on it. That's my goat, Yoji Yamamoto. Absolute legend. I love you. Thank you so much for existing. Thank you so much for making clothes that actually fit me. Uh, Junjay, I almost bought some Junjay at the, in in Australia. Uh, interesting brand. Some cool shit on there as well. You ever fuck with Onisuka Tigers? No, because uh, I don't wear those shoes. Um, would you wear... Do you ever look in the vintage Gerbaud jeans? I don't know what that is. Anyway, um, we're talking about all these things, but many people have tight budgets, especially at the top of the hour when there's a three-minute ad break, and they have to fucking pay to avoid those ads. Engineer garments is great. I do wear uh, engineer garments quite a bit. Uh, you guys have seen me wear engineer garments quite a bit. I wear those those uh, crazy cargos that I wear. I wear those are engineer garments. I would not have expected this community to know so much about fashion brands. I mean, the community reflects the streamer, and the streamer loves fashion brands, so it's not that crazy. You ever fuck with anything affordable, not thrifted? What do you mean? Um, I mean, anything I say that's affordable, everyone is going to yell at me in this community. But if you're talking about like, uh, if you're talking about fucking, you know, underwear, pants, Uniqlo, shit like that. Um, yes. One of my favorite, one of my favorite jean jackets that I have worn for the past 10 years that you guys always ask about is ASOS. Um, it's an ASOS jacket. I love online ceramics. And also, uh, they are friends of the show. Online ceramics is uh, Hasanabi heads. They're dope. No, I don't fuck with Stussy. So... Um, Uniqlo is great. I would say it's the, it's the best. Uniqlo is the best in comparison to like Zara, H&M, all these other fast, fast fashion brands uh, and ASOS. Uh, Uniqlo is anti-abortion. Wait, what? They're Japanese. The fuck? The fuck do they know about? Bro, who asked cover Gaza man? Shut the fuck up, bitch. Uh, is Uniqlo better than uh, Cos? COS is like the elevated version of Zara. Uh, they have some decent stuff. It's it's more expensive than Zara shit, but it's better quality than Zara shit. Um, but yeah, as far as Uniqlo goes, I, I like it. I just don't. I fuck with that one YSL Lakers shirt you wear. That's not actually YSL chatter. That's a that's a uh, market like one-off that they made for a uh, complex con thoughts on rag and bone brother uh rag and bone no these are brands 
I, that I look down at now because like these, those were the brands that I was fucking trying to wear when I was, uh, when, like those are the brands that I thought were like affordable enough in reach in like 2017. And I would like find one of them, or, like one rag and bone thing at Nordstrom Rack. And I was like, oh, it has like, it has a, uh, it has the rag and bone, uh, uh brand. So it must be good. No, I don't wear f uh, Fashion Nova. Visvim or Capital? Um, Visvim, but I can't wear Visvim. And yes, I used to wear a lot of Pleasures stuff, but that's affordable. Pleasures is affordable. All right. A safer, more tasteful choice would be brown or black Oxfords. Pick one. Or conservative tassel loafers. Pick two. If you want to be dandy, then Prince Albert or Belgian loafers, pick three or four. He's right. Actually, I don't really fuck with the pick one uh, uh, loafers either, but, you know, it is what it is. These are kind of nutty, though. Patrick's outfit here is pretty good, except for a critical part. The jacket's collar should always hug your neck. It's difficult to judge why a jacket isn't hugging a person's neck online without seeing the outfit in person. Yeah, Patrick Bet David is the only one that put that shit on here. He's like... This is the one instance where Patrick Bet David is unironically wearing is unironically wearing a fit that fits him, which is funny because normally he never does that. Maybe he's put on a little bit of weight. Maybe he's feeling a little self-conscious. That's why he wore something that's a little bit larger and it actually fits him perfectly. So that's good. Um, but you can see in this example of quality tailoring. Here's Fayard and uh, Harold Nicholas, the Nicholas Brothers dancing in the 1943 film Stormy Weather. Notice that even in such extreme movements, the collar hugs the neck. He's absolutely right on this. That's good tailoring right there. Good tailoring is supposed to make you seamlessly move around without breaking the silhouette too much. If you start seeing like crumpling and shit like that, too much crumpling and too much restriction of movement, that means that either the, the, the material that they use in the suit is not good or that the suit is not well suited for your body. Finally, Jacket and trousers should always work together to form a harmonious whole. When trousers are too low-rise and tapered like this, they look at odds with the coat. He's right about that. The trousers should hang clean, and the jacket should flow into the trousers. Jeans should not be cut like dress trousers, but even when wearing something like chinos or jeans with a tailored jacket, you can see how the two parts need to form a coherent whole. He is absolutely right on this as well. God damn, these are such fire fucking fits. I would never look like this because I'm too fucking big. I kind of hate it, except this guy, he always uses this guy. He's a big, he's a big boy that always finds somehow the best shit. In my opinion, we should take our country back from made to measure clothiers run by marketing people instead of tailors from bad taste shoes and from the idea that everyone needs to squeeze into sim foot tailoring instead of dressing for the body type. So I think slim fit tailoring had a moment once again, early 2010s. Uh, slim fit tailoring, like skinny ties, shit like that had a moment early 2010s is gone. That moment is gone. Uh, what is popping now, especially so is old school on the tailoring front on the suit front. Slim fits era is over. What we are now looking at, what we are now looking at and should be looking at, especially on the suit front is high waisted jeans. I mean, uh, sorry, high waisted, um, higher waisted. You look so, they look so divorced. Yeah. Higher waisted 1950s era, 1960s era flared trousers, higher waisted trousers, pleats are back. Pleated trousers are fucking fire. If you find something with pleats on it, cop that shit. Okay. Let's say you're thrifting. And you see some fucking. If you see something high high waisted with a pleat, oof, dude, that looks like ass. You are wrong. You are wrong. Pleats are this area. When you sit down, it looks like a tent has been pitched on your pants. They're great. I used to hate pleats. I I used to fucking despise pleats when I was in high school because. We in Turkey have to wear suits to high school. 
And I used to hate those pleats because it looked like I was, uh, you know, it looked like I had a boner. I was very self-conscious about it. But pleats are back. I'm telling you right now, pleats are fucking back. You're telling me we're going to look like this? Yes, that's a good fit. You need the whole fit to work with a pleat or it will look like ass? Yes. What's a good cool shoe for a guy in your opinion? That's such a broad question. I don't even know how to answer it. We're about to lose gay rights. Harry Daniels sings national anthem by Lana Del Rey to President Joe Biden. Yeah, it's over. And honestly, the gays deserve less. That's it. You know, I, I know I've always said gay rights and gay wrongs. Turns out sometimes it's too wrong. Easy Doc Martin shoes. Yes, Doc Martens are fucking awesome. Thoughts on fear of God? Uh, uh, fear of God, I think, is kind of washed now as well. Big fucking, big blowout. Uh, what was it Jeremy Jeffrey Lorenzo? Big blowout early on when it first came onto the scene. It captivated everybody, okay? But their essentials line is eh. And fear of God has just like completely fallen off, I would say. Um, I think essentials probably is part of the reason why their shit is kind of lame now. It's just like, I don't know. I think we are moving a little bit away from athleisure, finally. And like moving in here, I'll tell you, I'll tell you what I think is interesting. What I think is going to be the next meta. Uh, Gorp core was the big meta. It's still here very much, right? The Arcteryx or whatever. And, and all of that, like tech wear, Gorp core still very much in. However, I think the next meta is going to be running core. I'm calling it right now. Running shit. Okay. That is going to make a big that is going to blow up as a big, it's already started. That's going to be like a new thing that people uh, dress in the drippiest ways possible. What do I mean by that? Running shoes. Okay. Salomon's are, are, are Trek stuff. That's still Gorp core, but it has like running stuff too. I'm pretty sure. No, it's not athleisure. Athleisure is like sloppy, big, running Running core, I would say, running core, like, you know, skate core, skate core has never gone away since it fucking blew up with like Supreme and with the Kanye Yeezy stuff with fear of God, like, um, ASICs look, look, ASICs is, is already having a massive fucking year. I think it's going to keep popping off. ASICs is sick. Okay. Um, running shorts. Like the double layered running shorts that are super fucking high, thigh high. That shit is popping. It feels like you're delayed on every micro trend. These trends you've mentioned are already really big. No, I already mentioned that Gorp Core is like two years in at this point. Like Asics was last year with the Kiko collab. Yeah, that's true. Asics is like I'm talking. I'm talking about micro trends that are making its way into fucking uh like normal. Uh, normal circles, okay? I'm not talking about your little fucking club at uh, of, of throwing fits enjoyers that live in fucking, uh, what's, that, what's that weird area that like all the podcasters congregate at in New York? I forget. Throwing fits whack? Okay, put some respect on throwing fits. I like throwing fits. Come on, those are my boys. Uh, Dime Square. No, not Williamsburg. See, people saying Williamsburg is a Bushwick and Williamsburg in Brooklyn implies how little people understand trends in this community. Okay, no, I'm talking about fucking Dime Square. Huh. This is super out of touch. It's one thing in the beginning of the stream, but you've been chirping about this rich people shit for an hour and a half. You know how you talk about comedians having good, relatable content at first and becoming alienated from their fans by rich people problems? You're actively doing that, bro. None of us can afford to keep up with fashion trends. No amount of thrifting gets you actual drip unless you look, uh, unless the look you're going for is grunge. You're absolutely wrong on this. 
but you'll get a lot of truths in here probably. Bro, just say you're dripless and move on, okay? Just say you're dripless and move on. I just told you pleated pants are in. Fucking steal from your grandparents. They're not wearing that shit anyway. What the fuck are you talking about? It's free 99. It's free 99, baby. Yeah, he is not putting that shit on. Chatters are not putting that shit on at all and unafraid to openly, to unafraid to openly fucking admit that in this chat. Okay? Motherfuckers are out here looking like Adam Sandler at the basketball court wearing a fucking ill-fitting polo t-shirt with the largest shorts you've ever done seen in your entire whole life, dude. Shorts coming all the way down. They might as well be capris, but they're not slim fitted enough to even be called capris. That's what this motherfucker is wearing out here. Being like, oh, I can't believe this. This is rich people problems. All right. People be spending hours customizing their in-game characters, but confused when people do it IRL. Yeah. Steal from your parents. That's the greatest way. Bro, this is this your fit? <sighs> that's Coachella. Like, that's literally, it's, it's meme fits. The fuck do you mean? And there he is. Will rocking the fucking uh, Issei Miyake. Uh, the, 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 pleated pants that I can't fit into. So good. I had that shirt when I was six years old. Those pants are so ugly. I'm sorry. Okay, you're crazy. Those pants are incredible. Uh, anyway, all right, let's move on. Uh, where are we? We were talking about the earthquake. Let's get into it. Very rare 4.8 magnitude earthquake rocking the East Coast, folks. This is CNN Breaking News. Uh, this is CNN Breaking News right now. And uh, just to tell you uh, what we're hearing, the latest out of New York, the tri-state area, that an earthquake was felt in New York and the surrounding areas where we understand from a U.S. Geological Survey in the last several minutes that they have initially measured the earthquake to be about 4.8. Our Andrew Kaczynski, uh, our uh, investigative reporter, um, Andrew, uh, doesn't take any investigating to figure out what's going on here. What did you feel? Yeah, so I was in uh, my bedroom with my toddler, you know, as one does on a Friday, and we felt, uh, first I kind of thought I was going crazy because I looked and mirror was shaking. Uh, you know, stuff was just moving around a little bit, never experienced an earthquake uh, before. And I was, yeah, I first thought I was going nuts a little bit, but then, you know, what I, what did I do immediately? Went on Twitter and saw about, you know, 3,000 other people tweeting that they asked if they felt an earthquake too. Yeah. And Andrew, I mean, what did it feel like? How long did it last? Did, I mean, what, did it bother the toddler at all? I hope, uh, hope the little one's okay. Oh, yes, Jim, we have, we've survived uh, New okay. York City earthquake. We're doing okay. Uh, my Bro, this is so funny. This is New York's version. This is New York's version of, like, when it rains in L.A., okay? Light drizzle in Los Angeles, and we're like, everything is going to shit. Everything is going to shit. And then, this, like, it's a 4.8, man. It's a fucking 4.8. Are you crazy? You said we survived a 4.8? Bro. It barely shakes here in Los Angeles with a 4.8. The fuck do you mean, man? My uh, toddler just jumping on the bed literally did not notice a thing. I think it maybe lasted, what, a few seconds around? Yeah, you know few seconds uh, and then we were just immediately like what was that because we haven't experienced something like that before got it and no damage nothing fell off a shelf or anything like that 
Um, nothing fell off the shelf. No, I'm trying to look. No, everything looks in place. Got it. Okay. Hey, Andrew, thanks for calling in. Uh, That's so funny. You win the prize of the first reporter to be on uh, standby and ready for us. We appreciate it. Uh, let me go to Jason Carroll, uh, who's in New York. Uh, Jason, uh, Andrew beat you just by a smidge, but thank you for <laughs> jumping in there and helping us out here. Um, and I don't want to make light of it because I'm sure this worried uh, folks a little bit there for a few seconds. What happened? Were, were you in the bureau? Did you feel this? Tell us. Well, full disclosure, Jim, I'm from California. So first of all, I'm yeah. used to feeling earthquakes. Uh, I was on the 18th floor with my colleagues yeah. uh, at my computer and the computer monitor started moving just ever so slightly. And to be honest, I didn't have breakfast this morning, and I thought, am I, am, am I lightheaded? Am, am I about to faint or something? And for a split second, I thought, are we having an earthquake? And, and I thought, you know, this just cannot. I was on the Topanzi Bridge at the time of the quake, and I thought I was going to die for real. That's so funny. <laughs> That's fucking awesome. Bro, don't admit that. That's crazy. Oh, my uh, God. Hey, walk out of my office. I see my colleague, Jean Caceres, and she says, I think we just had an earthquake. And then, of course, all the producers started gathering around, and it quickly became evident to us that we had experienced an earthquake here in New York City. Not the first wow. time. Several years ago, I think you remember we had another slight earthquake in the New York City area. I remember feeling that. That's when we were over at a different location. Here, just to let your viewers know, we are at a place called Hudson, Hudson Yards. Right. It's on the very west side of New York City, right up against uh, the river there. We are on the 18th floor, and we could feel it. I mean, once again, it lasted for mm. several seconds. Again, I'm from California, so we are, yeah. people like us, we're accustomed to feeling things like this, not accustomed to feeling it in a place like New York City. So I had to sort of check myself and, and think, Yes, this is an earthquake that we are experiencing. Uh, and I have to say, yeah, you know, and being Jason, from I mean, a 4.7 is not is not insin insignificant. I mean, that that you're going to feel that you definitely are going to feel that. I mean, again, when you're from a place like California, a magnitude 4.6, 4.7 isn't going to rattle nerves, if you will. But in yeah. a place like New York City, most definitely. Oh. Yeah. Another test of China's earthquake gun, perhaps. Yup. The HAARP weapon first deployed on Taiwan, also sometimes known as Chinese Taipei, now being used in New York City. I knew it. All right. And, uh, and Jason, I did mean he just call us New Yorkers pussies? Yeah, he did, because he's right. New Yorkers are pussies about earthquakes, just like Californians are pussies about fucking rainfall. Okay. That's it. No, that's literally it. People from LA freak out over 0 0.001 inches of rain. It's almost like people freak out when they experience things they aren't used to. Wow, Weeby. Brilliant point. Wow, you really, you really nailed it. I mean, how did, how did folks around you react to this? I mean, I, you know, was it, did everybody sort of have the same feeling at the same time? Like, oh my goodness, did we just have an earthquake? We did. A lot of us were, yeah. were, were second guessing ourselves. We were wondering, did we just experience that? And then obviously, as more and more people started coming out of their offices, we realized what we had experienced was, in fact, uh, an earthquake. Obviously, uh, an, an unusual event to experience something like this yeah. in, in New York City. And when you're from California and you're used to earthquakes and you move to a city like New York, always in the back of your mind, you always wonder, Bro, I'm sorry, but one of these things is not like the other. No, you're coping. 4.8 4. is is literally the same as like a light drizzle from a California, uh, like a Los Angelino perspective. That's the whole point. No, like 4.8 is literally nothing. It's pretty funny that you're like trying to justify it, but it, it is quite literally nothing. You have, if you've been watching me for like two years, You've probably seen me go through a bunch of like 5.2 earthquakes, at least like four point or uh, above four, like a five, literally on this stream. Like you've seen it. This is what happens here. I'll show you. That's it.
I just did it. It goes on for like, it goes on for like 20 seconds and then it stops. Tri-state reacting to the earthquake the same way California reacts to the seasons. Except it rains a few times a year. We get an earthquake once a decade. Bro, I didn't feel shit, but there were other people that did in the same location I was working at. Now, I will say this. I will say this. I, li I will say this. The problem is East Coast infrastructure is probably dog shit, just like West Coast infrastructure is dog shit. And because infrastructure is already not hardened towards like extreme weather events or like rain, light rain in Los Angeles or... Yeah, here, this is And a it's ironic because he's doing it on... He's doing it on Twitter and... And he's getting like 55,000, 70,000 likes on it. And it's just like, it's Twitter likes. It's so bad. It's so f bad. Whoa. Oh my God. I think that was an earthquake. Earthquake. Baba. He's sitting me. Earthquake detected. Drop cover. Hold on. Protect yourself. <laughs> Earthquake. You freaking out in this clip? Yeah, it's a 5.5. What do you mean? Doesn't sound like nothing. I mean, I keep streaming. It's not like I... What's going on? It's so bad. And then I look back to see what it looks like. Yeah, that one was like right here too. Why'd you put a Turkish accent on it? New Yorkers think four is half of an eight. Oh, yeah. Guys, the difference between a 5.5 and a 4.8 is massive, dude. <laughs> I love that. I love that the dude was like, uh, it doesn't look like nothing. Yeah. If you got a fucking, if you got a 5.5, a you would know that there's a massive difference between a 4.8 and a 5.5. <laughs> anyway. Um, it's not about the magnitude. It's about the fact that we aren't used to it. So it's scary because you don't know what it is happening. Yeah, I know. Um, so that's what I was actually going to talk about. Two things I was going to talk about. Obviously, I know that it's like, uh, different. You're not used to it. Um, it's different. So you're not used to it and it scares you. That's fine. It's normal. Uh, overall, like Japanese people will probably laugh at us for even uh, reacting to any of it. Now, uh, how do you actually say earthquake in Turkish? Deprem. An earthquake of magnitude 5 shakes 10 times as violently as an earthquake magnitude 4. Go easy on the New Yorkers. They don't know the Richter scale. Yeah, I think you guys also need to remember, like, I... I have probably a little bit of a trauma response to earthquakes a, a little bit harder than than the average person, partially because I, you know, survived one of the most uh, devastating earthquakes in Turkish history before this last one. So it's like, you know, I was pretty close to the fucking center uh, on that one. So I, I, I think I, I have a little bit, uh, a little bit of a trauma. So I do get worried even though like living in LA I've I've gotten much more used to it but having said that it's not a big deal overall my point was at 5.5 it's like even then it's you know you just uh you just kind of take it on the chin um having said that however one thing I will mention one thing I will mention is this one thing I will mention is this The New York infrastructure is not hardened for earthquakes. So if this was a larger earthquake or even this one might have already like caused irreparable damage that we don't even see. Local news just said an East Coast 4.8 is like a West Coast is. It's like a like it's a men's rights podcast. <laughs> 
Local news just said an East Coast 4.8 is like a West Coast 6. True. Living in a place that has regular earthquakes is wild to me. I live in the UK and have experienced two earthquakes in my entire life. The ground is not supposed to shake. What the fuck? It kind of feels good, though. It feels good as fuck, dude. Especially for the ground. Like, it probably feels good as fuck for the ground when it shakes like that. You know what I mean? It's like, it's like cracking your back. You know? <sighs> Big stretch. <laughs> Earth was trying to tell her to take this the fuck clavicle off. Clavicle out. It's the summer of clavicle. Is my whole building shaking? Was that an earthquake? Or just me? <laughs> mm. Okay. Love this outfit. Clavicle. You should not love that outfit. Um, so, <laughs> so newsworthy, she didn't even realize. In New York, they got the earthquake alert 20 minutes later after it happened. She was mother cunting too hard and causing a full blown cunt quake. She was not mother cunting. She literally was not serving. Guys, you have a very false notion of what it means to serve. If you think she was serving there, she was not. She was serving fucking boiled steak. Okay. That's the only thing she was serving. <laughs> yeah. I, we are still hungry. Rude. Come on, bro. That was some jellied eels being served right there. Some Mormons soaking just had an unreal time. <laughs> it's a good one. Good meme. They found the reason for the earthquake. Ice Spice saying, my bad for the earthquake, y'all. You know this ass be clapping. Facts. All right. Do you like chicken hearts? I do. Very high in protein and delicious. Kezo said, I tripped when I got out of bed this morning. Y'all good. Uh, anyway, yeah, because he's fat. I get it. I mean, I'm sure that'll continue being a banger forever. Like, no disrespect. No disrespect. This part is, this is actually the best tweet I've seen of, of uh, the earthquake so far, though, which is, if New York is going to steal earthquakes, LA's going to take y'all shit too. Someone fly a plane into the Hollywood sign right now. Don't know why he deleted this banger. Because it was objectively a banger. He didn't say anything wrong. Did you see Adam's tweet? I did. What's wrong with people? Was there an earthquake? My nudes in profile. Not the time. <laughs> anyway. Eric Adams said, New York City is the best city in the world. Where else can you be a small business owner one day and Fukushima the next? <laughs> um anyway new york city will recover we survived the new york city earthquake we will rebuild oh it's awesome uh hogs of course are probably being very normal about this oh no they're not solar eclipse is coming earthquakes locust coming devil is our president wars raging i'm off to the liquor store Hell yeah, baby. 
Brandon, Brandon's doing it again. I wonder what would happen if something like that happened. Honestly, dude, uh, dude, hogs make the world so much more fun. Like, let's be for real. Hogs see the world through a much more fun lens overall. Okay. They do. That's fucking awesome. Um, by the way, uh, Chinese H A A R P gun question mark. The impact, the map of the impact puts the Trump national golf court, uh, golf club Bedminster at the epicenter of the earthquake in New Jersey. Don't send it. Did I say Brayden? I mean, fine. There you go. Hogs are fun until they turn your country into Empire Strikes Back. Oh, the thing about Chuz, they believe in the end of the day shit and they want it to be true so bad. They see it everywhere. It's like, bro, it's, if the days were ending, they would have ended already. Y'all stuck here with the rest of us. That's awesome. Marjorie Taylor Green says, God is sending America strong signs to tell us to repent. Earthquakes and eclipses and many more things to come. I pray that our country listens. I love that fucking Twitter nerds are like, uh, actually, here's a context. Here is a, here's a context now. Uh, earthquakes happen all around the world. Like, shut up, bitch. Margarine is right. Streamers have ruined the Everyone generation. Knows. Oh, God. Yeah. If anything, God told Oklahoma to stop fragging, and th those motherfuckers prayed to God that the oil uh, refine the... <laughs> The oil fracking yielded uh, a better bounty. That's both of those things I mentioned are real. Oklahoma's earthquakes due to fracking literally increased in frequency, size, magnitude, impact by insane amounts. And Mar uh, Governor Fallon at the time literally instituted a national oil prayer day. That was those are both real things that happened. Mary Fallon, not Jimmy Fallon. Um, but also wonderful that, you know, X's new AI algorithmic topic explainer doesn't know about jokes, should be fine and not a problem. Adams versus earthquake, 50,000 cops in subway showdown. New York City Mayor Eric Adams has announced the deployment of an additional police officer to the city subway system in response to an earthquake. The number of officers being sent varies across reports ranging from 50,000 to 1 million. This action is part of the strong response to the situation with some posts suggesting the officers are being sent to shoot the earthquake, which is likely a hyperbolic expression indicating a robust reaction to the earthquake. This is not a real thing that happened. It's just memes, but the AI doesn't understand memes because it's fucking bad at memes because it's Elon Musk's dumbass meme AI. So uh, it's the funniest thing that could have happened, and it's happening uh, on Twitter in real time. One million cops shooting the earthquake in the subways. Um, I tweeted about this yesterday as well, if you guys remember, where uh, I posted about this, where we found out that... Uh, uh, where is it? Where is it? Earlier today, I noticed the trending in Explore tab was no longer aggregating hashtags like it has been since Elon fired the content team. Turns out it's AI aggregation and now it's promoting false stories like Iran striking Tel Aviv right now, which was really funny because someone went, is it false though? You always can expect the blue check mark in the replies being like, uh, actually, 
This very obviously fake story is real. What's the statue behind me? It's uh, Don Quixote do Flamingo. Okay. Anyway, let's finish this off. Happened here. Wow. Now, of course, we don't have to wonder anymore. Absolutely. All right, Jason. Hey, thank you so much for being uh, ready for us. We appreciate it. Uh, I, I want to go to Laura Dolan, uh, one of our CNN producers out in Long Island. I, I feel like I'm getting to talk to all of my New York friends today, Andrew, Jason, and Laura. Uh, Laura, what did you feel? I think you're out on Long Island. Is that right? Yeah, I'm about 20 miles out from uh, the city. And when it first started, I thought it was a truck coming down one of the roads near us, like a heavy truck. And it just didn't stop. And it started small and it got stronger and stronger to the point where I ran outside. I initially thought it might be my boiler or something crazy going on in my home. And when I ran outside, my other neighbors had also, uh, those of us who were home today, and we all thought the same thing. Maybe it was initially something with our home. And when we went outside, we all said, oh, my God, I think we just felt an earthquake. Slightly wow. relieved. It wasn't anything from my home, but then the bigger issue of, Wow, that was a really strong earthquake. And like Jason just said, quite different from the one we felt about 10 years ago, I think, um, where it was just very quick. This one was noticeably stronger, and uh, our, homes, our homes were shaken. I was a little shaken, but I think my dog felt it. It was yeah. a little uh, more concerned than I was after the fact. I, yeah. I, bet, I bet it takes your breath away a little bit. And I, and I was just wondering, Laura, I mean, did anything fall off the shelves? Was there any damage? Uh, and forgive me for asking questions. People might say, oh, in California, we, you, you should come out here. But I, I, just curious, did anything fall off a shelf or anything? Nothing fell off the shelf. Things were shaking on my desk yeah. that I was working at. Um, you know, um, on the windowsills, things were shaking, but they didn't fall off the ground. And I, I did make a clip to my neighbor that, you know, welcome to L.A., but I'm sure they think this is nothing. So, uh, but for us, it was definitely something. This is not something yeah. we feel any day. I mean, this is, you know, growing up here, I'm, you know, a Gen Xer, as all my colleagues know. Um, right. To, to feel an earthquake at this point, it's pretty shocking for those of us who've lived here on the East Coast for, yeah. for a while. And I remember the one in, in D.C. about a decade or so ago, and you felt it and you knew exactly what it was, and I was at all places – uh, Mount Vernon when that happened and you could hear all the antiques inside George Washington's house shaking back and forth and so I mean it does kind of catch you by surprise and, and take your breath away a little bit and Laura I, you were just getting to the question I wanted to ask you next which is I know you're a lifelong New Yorker uh, I mean do you have you ever felt anything like this before in New York nothing not even close wow wow I mean, that shows you how, how rare this is. All right, Laura Dolan, uh, thank you so much for calling in. Again, I feel like I'm getting to Thanks, talk to all my longtime friends in the New York Bureau, Jason and Laura and Andrew. Um, just want to update our viewers. Uh, the governor of New York, Kathy Hochul, uh, has tweeted about this. Uh, she is obviously going to be updating folks throughout the day. But she did tweet earlier that an earthquake did hit west of Manhattan, felt throughout New York. She says her team is assessing the impacts, any damage that may have occurred. We will update the public uh, throughout the day. And, of course, uh, to our viewers uh, who are watching all of this at home, if you happen to have caught some of this on video and your ring doorbell camera, uh, that sort of thing, feel free to email me or anybody here at, at CNN about this. Um, and I should... Uh, feel free to email us. He's like, guys, listen, feel free. Feel free to call me. Feel free to email me. We can talk about it. We can talk about our feelings. We can talk about how scared we were. Don't listen to these fucking Los Angelinos. Fucking making fun of you. Golden Kappa Train. Okay. Okay, Golden Kappa Train. PSA, I'm providing emotional support to my community in Williamsburg. Yes. We, uh, we have opened up a new charity in Williamsburg for your... We are providing emotional support to your emotional support uh, snakes, your emotional support hamsters, and your emotional support cats and dogs as well. So fear not. Fear not, folks. We got you. Don't forget, your animals also need emotional support. Also note, uh, just uh, on a lighter note, I know 
an earthquake is a serious situation, wherever it happens. But on a lighter note, the Empire State Building also tweeted, quote, I am fine. Uh, so that from the Empire State Building there, and uh, the Empire State Building also saying we are business as usual at the Empire State Building. I want to go to Pete Montine, our aviation correspondent. Uh, Pete, uh, any flight interruptions at this point? I, obviously, this had to have been felt over at LaGuardia, JFK, or perhaps over at Newark. Hey, okay, Ghostface Miller, two days in a row, by the way. Goddamn. Out, AVK Mott. Thank you for the 10 gifted. Xylax, thank you for the 20 gifted. Five egg, thank you for the five gifted. What is happening? Goddamn. How are the World Trade Towers? Oh, yeah. Ex Guardian, think of the five. And I have to think it, it shook people up at those airports as well. Illumin. It seems like they've pared the down 10. on the ground stops here from the FAA. Here's the latest. There's a ground yeah. stop uh, at Newark Liberty International Airport, big United Hub, until 11.30 Eastern Time. Uh, in JFK Trinwreck, until thank you for the five. Eastern Time. BWI Perry's and the five. Philly now just deleted from that list. Also, White Plains, where there's commercial Dang service. You with the five. Big, Cancerous. Uh, hub for business jets and corporate aircraft coming into and out of the New York area. It is interesting, though, that this is already impacting air travel it Darmy. seems like flights are moving five. again at newark according to cnn producer greg level Wallace. six seems achieved. like things are starting to get back to normal here's the latest from flight aware the cancellations and delays relatively low uh cancellations in the u.s right now only 79 so double digits yeah. delays in the u.s a thousand has cookies one we could see that number go up though uh, little these, courage uh, mump stops do stick of course, Raging a lot of the tent. Here, and we know that the FAA was on an operations planning call just a little bit ago. Blizzy uh, Gobbler. Following this earthquake. Earthquake can't Plumpkin. be felt in the air, of course, Thank although it can be felt right. on the ground. Uh, and we know that uh, earthquakes have been felt in some major metro areas like the D.C. earthquake of 2011. Right. Uh, Broke that wasn't all that far five. away from the uh, major airports of the D.C. <laughs> area, Dulles, uh, BWI, and uh, Reagan National. Uh, so we will see uh, if there is any mm, response Gore, from the, the Port Authority of New York and New Jersey, which operates those airports around the Darby New York area, another ten. Uh, and whether or not there is any damage Broke there social. on the ground. Thank you for the five. So I'm told now that we have Elijah Westbrook. Elijah Westbrook. That's crazy. They are fucking farming this harder than I'm farming the Golden Kappa train. They are farming this. How much coverage do they add on to this? That's crazy. They're like witnesses in New Jersey describe earthquake. I didn't think it was real. Geophorio, thank you for the five. Blue Wizard, thank you for the five. Goose Majeure, thank you for the five. Brajian, thank you for the five. We're, we're about to break. We're breaking fucking, uh, we're breaking Pyro Software's record today, boys, with this golden Kappa train. Let me tell you. God from Fault. I can't even keep up with this. Cake the bot, thank you for the five. Namrick with the five. God from Fault with a 33. The King Rexatron with a 10. Okay, I'm gonna stop reading these now. This has gone out of control. I can't fucking keep up with it. If they're farming, if they're farming the Quake, I'm farming the Kappa train, baby. Look. Hey, look at this. Wow, it? we are messing around. So Elijah, first off. Where were you, and did you feel it? I, I sure did, John. Good morning to you. Right now, we are live in New Brunswick, New Jersey. Uh, we were sent out here on an unrelated Yo, story. These are my streets, baby. And as I walked inside uh, one of the buildings and then got into my car, uh, the car started shaking. It started swaying. And at first, I thought it was just the wind was blowing because it did feel... This is where Rutgers is, chat. A little windy out here, know. Uh, you know, when you get those normally strong gusts of also where I was born when next thing I know, I see emails and text messages coming in from some startled folks saying, did you feel that? Did you feel that? And someone who actually did feel that is Jill here. She's a student at Rutgers University. We found a person who felt the earthquake is so funny, dude. That's crazy. Broke social. Jill, thank you so much for uh, being live on the show right now to talk about this earthquake. It was a 4.8 magnitude earthquake. What did you experience moments ago? So I was laying in my bed and my whole apartment building just started shaking. Mm. And I freaked out. I was like, what's happening? I yeah. didn't, I've never felt an earthquake before in my life. So it was very scary. The whole, Mike, my whole bed shook, everything shook. Wow, wow. And, and, and what, would, what were you thinking when that was going on? I mean, did you think earthquake at first? No, I thought I was in a dream, honestly. She sounds like Meadow Soprano. That's how every girl from New Jersey, level seven complete. 
That's how every girl from New Jersey sounds, bro. What do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think it was real. Yeah, it's, it's, it's definitely quite startling. And like I said uh, just moments ago, I was sitting inside the news truck and the truck started swaying. I thought it was uh, gusts of wind. Apparently, uh, I guess the, and, and John, correct me if I'm wrong here, the, the proper terminology uh, for the magnitude, I know it was a 4.8 and it was felt, I believe, in Lebanon, New Jersey. I guess that was the epicenter, yes, uh, that, essentially. Right. And again, correct me if I'm wrong no, on the you, terminology. Okay, so 4.8. 4. 4. 4. 4. Lebanon, New Jersey. Lebanon. Now, the next thing we're going to have to worry about is how deep was it? And you, we talk about primary waves, secondary waves. But, uh, right. so, Carlo Elijah, was a five. Everybody's talking about it, right? Everywhere you go. I mean, people, it, it's Everyone it's is talking about it, including Jill, yeah. Yeah, Mr. yeah it, it's very, you know, five. startling. Um, so, what, what are your friends saying? What are other people saying about what Pop they... Who 90 um, think it was a five. My whole family group chat actually was blowing up my phone saying, what was that? Was that an earthquake? Then my friend from Delaware texted me and said that she felt it too everyone was feeling no they didn't you can't feel it's fucking from delaware get the fuck out of here tj three stacks thank you for the 10 anonymous user thank you for the five surge tanky thank you for the five no no yes you could oh come on bro really really Feeling it. Yeah. And everyone was like, what was that? Yeah, <laughs> so it's not just here in New Jersey. Of course, portions of New York uh, State, uh, New York City. Uh, we're also getting reports people in Pennsylvania and I believe Massachusetts possibly may have felt that. So we're, we're looking at at least Evan the Northeast uh, corridor, if you will, here. Uh, Jim, thank wow. you so thank much. You really if we can just have five. you on standby uh, yeah, just sure. in this area until uh, we get back to you. But uh, John and everyone else uh, watching at home right now, yeah, Ace certainly nice. some startling moments out here in New Brunswick, New Jersey. Again, Again, uh, we were out here covering an unrelated story. Uh, I walked inside of a building, Stop came back coping. out, got in the car to write my script for uh, a story airing at noon. Next thing I know, the car Ruka started shaking. Roman. You see some of the parked cars ahead of me. Katari Dancer with 100 gifted subs. Jesus Christ. Okay, dude, th I, am I coping or are you guys coping? Earthquakes in the eastern U.S. are felt over a much bigger area than the west coast. Why? Eastern U.S. has older rocks. They were subject, subject to extreme pressures and temperatures. They're denser, so shaking travels much farther. Example. Between planets, thank you for the five turn. Give this up. Should I should I set up a fucking community fundraiser for all of the victims impacted by this this earthquake? Should we do that? Undercover mermaid. Vox Nuz. Golden Kappa trained level ten achieved. We're going the distance, baby. Literally send you the fucking link. This says it's by the USGS. <laughs> yes, please. Some of us will never be the same. <laughs> I felt it in Phoenix. Token Black Guide, thank you for the 10. <laughs> Damn, they felt it in Florida? What the fuck? Uh, swaying back and forth. I thought it was just gusts of wind uh, passing through. So certainly some startling moments in this area and something that we normally don't experience, especially here on the East so Coast. So I'm gonna, of course, that? try to- The car was actually five. shaking? It, it was. It was. I mean, nothing too aggressively, but enough to get your attention, if, if that makes sense. And then as I looked out the window, I saw a couple of cars that were parked on the same side of the street moving just a wow. bit. So I knew something had to be going on. Next thing I know, I see text messages rolling in, yeah, emails, sure. people asking, did you feel that? So very, very startling. Well, Elijah, thank you. I'm going to be joined by with Mary Kelvey here. Yeah. Thank you for all your hard work. And uh, who's your uh, so photographer? Who are you working with? Out there. I'm working with uh, Eddie and Connie this morning. Tell Eddie them thank Connie. you because I know that was a quick hustle to get that live shot set up. So thank you. Israeli military has released a set. All right. All right. Let's get to some other news. Okay. I know we've, we've covered the earthquake quite a bit. I know it's the most significant story. 
Manong Hassan, thank you for the five. What the fuck? Not Christian Ev, thank you for the five. Okay. Listen, listen. We beat the record. 11, setting a new record. Keep until the clock runs out. Yeah, I guess the highest I've gone to is a level 10. We beat the new record, baby. <laughs> I bet it feels so good for the buildings, like getting their bulldussy rock for the first time in years. That's what I said. It's good for the earth, too. It actually is good. I felt it in Seattle. At first, I thought it was just the rain, but then I realized it was an earthquake. <laughs> Some of the things that I let you know how unserious this earthquake is, I thought it was hungry. I thought it was in my boiler. Nothing fell off the shelf. I thought it might have been the wind. No, you don't understand. We're being insensitive for saying this. Okay, we're being insensitive. We're being positively insensitive. It's really, really, really messed up. Had one in Arkansas last month and literally no one cared. Yeah, the tech tussy was wobbling. Okay, okay, I'm done with this. All right, let's do the, the let's do the fucking real news now. Israeli military has released a statement on the aid workers killed in Gaza. So the Israeli military murked seven aid workers, as you guys know. Obviously, they've killed 200 plus since uh, October 7, but these seven happen to be, uh, you know, white. So uh, it it was uh, more newsworthy for the Western world. A lot of people got mad. Doctora, thank you for the five gifted. Captain A cap badge thirteen twelve. Thank you for the five gifted. Um, it was uh, it was it was very very important uh, that uh, you know everybody got mad at it. Everybody uh, everybody were like, hey Israel. Uh, Joe Biden even said Joe Biden even said things along the lines of, uh, you know, I'm about to have a very stern conversation with Benjamin Netanyahu. So. Seven paragraph statement NDB, thank you for the on 10. why it says that a convoy of aid workers in Gaza was hit by airstrikes on Monday, killing seven people. President Biden expressed outrage over the deaths in a tense call with Israel's Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu yesterday, which could could mark a major shift in U.S. policy. One I like that they, she doubled down on the could. It could mark it, but it also could not. So. I, he, uh, ah, he, he fucking called him up and was like, Hey, open up the Eretz crossing, which is really interesting because like, why was it closed to begin with? Not just a second, but we're going to start with Holly Williams. She's in Israel. Holly, good morning. What does this report say? Good morning, Gail. Israel's military has blamed its killing of the seven World Central Kitchen aid workers on operational misjudgment and has expressed its, quote, deep sorrow. It says members of its armed forces were convinced they were hitting Hamas, but they were in... <laughs> oh, were they? Were they convinced, dude? Yeah, that's... They always think they're hitting Hamas. They, they were convinced they were hitting Hamas when they were hitting their own fucking hostages too, okay? When they were shooting them point blank. No, they're not hitting Hamas. They always are con uh, convinced that they're hitting Hamas when they're fucking shooting at ambulances too. It's bullshit. Yeah, they were, con they were convinced they were hitting Hamas when they did the flower massacre. Classic operational misjudgment, dude. Had trouble explaining to my friends that the crossing being closed is not a U.S. policy. They were confused as to what I wanted. I think they are accidentally admitting it here. Yeah. Dude, it's always, it's always, oh man, we just, oopsie. We fucking, we thought they were Hamas. No, what they thought was that they probably thought that they were Palestinian aid workers at least, okay? That's it. They're so used to killing random Palestinian aid workers and Middle Eastern aid workers that they thought this was more of that, more of the same. Why would they, after all, why would they, after all, think that this was weird to do, especially when there is no accountability anyway? It's top-down fucked up, okay? violation of standard operating procedures 
Israel's military says it wrongly believed that a militant was inside one of the world's central kitchen vehicles. It says after striking that car, it identified people moving to the second car, which it also hit, and then the third, killing all seven aid workers. The report also found that the Israeli military's cameras failed to detect the markings on the world's central kitchen vehicles. It confirmed... Why are leftists so powerless? What do you mean? Being a leftist, or being an anti-capitalist especially, means that you are at odds with everything that has won and succeeded and dominated the planet for the past 100 years, pretty much. Cold War ended. The USSR dissolved. Socialism took a fat L. It was already taken L's before then. Okay? 500? I mean, yes, that for sure. But I'm talking like our understanding post-industrial revolution, post like, oh, everyone, shut up. Doesn't matter. Okay. There is no, there is no balance. There is no alternative. Uh, it, this is, this is the reason why everyone is so fucking powerless. We are living in the era where there is no counter, no alternative to capitalism. That's why conditions worsen every single day. Firms in large part the account of the attack given earlier this week by chef Jose Andres, World Central Kitchen's founder. They were target. That boy Dan is live. Thank you for the five. Car. Israel also confirmed that World Central Kitchen was coordinating its movements in Gaza with the military. All I can say at the moment is... Bro, these guys did literally everything. Okay, they did everything to the book, by the book. Okay, they were specifically brought in so that Israel can do PR to be like, see, we're not fucking, uh, we're, we're not stopping aid. Look, uh, this very famous chef and his very famous aid organization is operating. Obviously, even him operating, Jose Andres' uh, aid workers operating in the region was not enough, especially considering that most of the aid that is supposed to come in with trucks via land crossings were being held up at the border. Even if the, the WCK aid workers were not assassinated by Israeli drone strikes, it would still not be enough, right? Nothing was fine before the aid workers were killed. If anything, the aid workers being killed, so specifically Western aid workers being killed, <laughs> specifically Western aid workers being killed, got people on board with the brutality. They got people to recognize the brutality. Uh, is to uh, offer my apologies and uh, say that we share in the grief. Despite the deaths of the aid workers, a spokesman for Israel's government insisted yesterday that Israel is setting a, quote, new gold standard in preventing civilian casualties. Yet, President Biden has said that this was not a standalone incident and <laughs> Israel has standard. not done enough to protect civilians. I mean, is, is, is that a wake-up call for Israel? Our fight is with Hamas, not the people of Gaza. Uh, and we Yeah, right, dude. <laughs> that's why, that's why, like, the liberal alternative to Benjamin Netanyahu was on Morning Joe, like, two days ago going... Innocent civilian, innocent civilians in Gaza, innocent Palestinian civilians in air quotes. No, man. Ay, ay, ay. He did do that. Yes, he did those hand gestures. I mean, here, this is it. Number. Where was it? I think it was like around the end here. Oh, here, here, look. And we collaborate with the world, funding, helping uh, the innocent people, the innocent people in Gaza. Let me run it again. And we collaborate with the world, funding, uh, helping uh, the innocent people, the innocent people in Gaza. That yeah, he, he doubled down on it twice. He did it innocent, innocent people in Gaza. That guy's in the government, not liberal. 80% of them, 70, 80. I mean, he's the minister of economy. He is definitely more liberal than Benjamin Netanyahu is.
80% of them support October 7th. Yeah, and then he followed up by 80% of them support October 7th. This logic, by the way, this logic, by the way, implies that everyone in fucking Israel deserves October 7th too then, by the way, because Israel has been doing genocide. The Israeli government has been doing genocide in Gaza and an even larger percentage of Israelis support it. So what the fuck is that? What do you mean? The only way this... The only way this attitude works is if you just genuinely think like, well, Palestinians are not real people. They deserve it. And Israelis are real people and they don't deserve it. That's it. That's it. Um, just like many of you don't deserve the top of the hour ad break, but you are able to avoid it now because of the fucking hype train that just completed. Where... A shit ton of people were gifted subs. At the top of the hour, there's a three-minute ad break, of course. And many of you that are undeserving were able to still avoid it as a consequence of all the gifted subs that you guys got. Even I got a golden kappa. Wait, how do you spell... How do you do kappa with a fucking capital K? God, I'm such a fucking... I don't know shit about Twitch. There it is. Here's the three-minute break now. Patty Pegan, thank you for the five-tier one gifted subs. <laughs> Dude wrote Kappa. I don't think you guys understand, okay? I love you all, but, like, it's not bad that I don't know how to fucking spell emotes. It's, it actually shows how normal I am. <laughs> I don't think you guys understand that, but let's not have that conversation right now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. O, comma, Henry, thank you for the five gifted. We will do our utmost to uh, limit civilian casualties on both sides. But the medical aid group Doctors Without Borders said yesterday it does not accept the incident was simply a mistake, claiming it's part of a pattern of deliberate attacks. Humanitarian workers are protected. No ifs, no buts. We do not accept the narrative of regrettable incidents. In a phone call yesterday between President Biden and Israel's Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, the president said U.S. policy on Gaza will depend on Israel taking steps to reduce civilian harm and address the safety of aid workers. After that, Israel said it would increase aid deliveries to Gaza, including through Ashdod port and the Erez crossing. The main checkpoint in northern Gaza that Hamas attacked on October 7th closed since the beginning of the war. Israel's military says two officers have already been dismissed and it says the findings of its investigation have been... This morning I was able to use the information I've learned from this broadcast to make my Zionist friend reconsider his bloodthirst. Good. ...passed on to military prosecutors to determine whether to open a criminal prosecution. Gail. That's interesting. Yeah, it's crazy that the U.S. can actually change Israel's policy. Um, where are the liberals? They were saying that it can't happen. The question now should be, why did it take so long and why so little? Why don't we, uh, now that we dipped our toes in that water, maybe we should change it even further. Where's Brianna Wu? Probably taking, she's probably collecting dubs in her mind. She's like, oh yeah, fucking, see, I told you guys, Brandon is really trying. They should all be canceled for not predicting the future. That's not a fucking prediction. There's a difference. Okay. There's a difference between saying, oh, dude, Russia, of course, is not going to fucking invade Ukraine because it has not at that point. Okay. In a, in a broad fucking actual full-blown invasion versus like uh, annexing fucking Crimea. Okay. Versus being like, oh yeah, Israel certainly is not going to do the thing that it's been doing and hasn't stopped doing and will continue to do because there is no accountability whatsoever. Russia's invasion of Ukraine is still an insane thing that they did. It is on the other hand not insane that an apartheid ethno state is going to continue doing sieges in Gaza and fucking kill aid workers as, as they are saying that they're going to do that over and over again. The insane prediction that people would have been wrong about 
would have been to say that October 7 is going to happen. Even though that is still predictable, nobody, not including the fucking Hamas leadership, thought that it would be as uh, deadly as it was or as successful from their own perspective. There's a difference between denying abject reality. You're denying abject reality. Dude, you're just a fascist. Stop. This dude is such a fascist. He was just talking about fascism in the beginning. Wait, why am I a fascist? Please. I love, I love hearing from chatters that say stuff like this. Interesting. Holly, before you go, does the report say why the Israelis believed, as we just heard, that they... That they thought that there were mil maybe he thinks I'm a like firm committed uh, Zionist who believes that uh, Israel's demographic concerns are normal. Sorry, what? What do you mean? Explain to me why you think I'm a fascist. Militant gunmen inside this convoy. What made them think that? Gail, it's an extremely complicated account of trucks unloading food aid at a makeshift pier. Israel's military believing that they spotted gunmen, uh, vehicles entering and then leaving a hangar, all resulting in that critical error. The bottom line is this should never have happened. No, that's not funny. Don't give it a fucking Omega lol. He's just making the worst joke of all time. I gave him an hour off. Yes, we all agree with that. Holly Williams reporting from Israel. We thank you. And just moments ago, the World Central Kitchen released a statement that says in part, without systemic change, there will be more military failures, more apologies, and more grieving families. Adding, we demand the creation of an independent commission to investigate the killings of our colleagues. The IDF cannot credibly investigate its own failure in Gaza. We've just received the IDF's... So, Unk, mad he got got? Come on, dude. Um, have you covered Israel opens new lines for aid work? Funny it happens right after they killed seven workers. Yeah, they opened the Eretz crossing. Okay. They opened the Eretz crossing. Now after a little bit of pressure from the Brandon administration, one, they should open all of the crossings and stop holding up aid with like ridiculous, ridiculous setbacks. Oh, there's one pair of scissors, medical scissors in an entire truck. Yeah, sorry. The entire truck needs to get turned around. The amount of aid that they're refusing to let into Gaza is unimaginable. It's unconscionable. Okay. Okay. And it's not like they're doing it for some secret reason. They have openly mentioned from the start that they're doing it to starve out Hamas. Okay? They're doing it because they want to starve the entire Gazan population because this is an ethnic cleansing campaign. I've never seen so many very obvious, broad, open, well-defined markers for an ethnic cleansing campaign be denied this aggressively, maybe because I wasn't alive during World War II. During the Holocaust. That's probably what it is. Initial findings on the Israeli strike that killed seven World Central Kitchen workers in Gaza on Monday. The internal investigation has found Israeli forces believe they were targeting Hamas and, quote, mistakenly assumed Two Hamas gunmen were in the vehicles in the aid convoy. Israel has now fired two military commanders. I can't believe they fired him. This is like this is like firing Candace Owens. <laughs> it's like <laughs> firing Candace Owens for anti-Semitism for the Daily Wire when you fucking hired her for the anti-Semitism originally. You know what I mean? You didn't give a shit about it. You're firing him now. This would be this would be akin to firing Steven Crowder for being racist. It's like, what do you mean? It's their job. Their job was to keep doing fucking ethnic cleansing. What? What the fuck? Also, firing is pretty funny because it's like they should be in jail, dude. That's a murder. Even, even, okay. Even from the metrics of the Western world, right? Where they only care about white people getting killed. It's still a murder. What do you mean fired? The fuck do you mean fired? Jail. Jail, okay? Jail is what needs to happen, okay? Firing is what happens 
when you fuck up over and over again at your job. Jail is what happens. It's kind of like cancel culture, but like you're being canceled by the government when you kill people. Okay. Let's get right to CNN's Nick Robertson, who joins us now live from Jerusalem. Can you walk us through the findings? It's a couple of pages. Um, and what do you see that might be missing when you look at some of the details of this? Yeah, sure. This is a sequence of events that the IDF has laid out that they say led to this misidentification and misclarification of the events on the ground. They say um, they, the IDF spotted a gunman getting on aid trucks. We're talking about trucks here, the big vehicles that carry the actual pallets and containers of food and other humanitarian supplies. And then the IDF says they saw another gunman. Again, a single. Before you say this is just like the cops, bro. Listen, the IDF trains our cops already post 9-11. That's number one. Number two, the IDF do behave like cops in America, except even American cops would not be able to fucking withstand legal scrutiny beyond firing if they killed six white people. Okay? If they killed six fucking white people straight up, they would go to jail. Okay? That's insane. There is not... This is far beyond cops at this point. So we're talking about two gunmen they're saying they see get on the aid truck uh, or aid trucks. Then the convoy goes into the warehouse and the IDF says what happened next is where the misidentification and misclarification happens. That the IDF then tracked the SUVs, the vehicles leaving the warehouse after the aid trucks had been there. The IDF says they didn't realize these SUVs were for the World Central Kitchen, despite the fact these were markings are clearly emblazoned on those vehicles. The IDF then says that those vehicles were engaged because the <coughs> IDF believed that the gunmen were inside those SUVs now, no longer on the aid trucks after they've been to the warehouse, but inside the SUVs. Now, the IDF says this should not have happened. It was against their protocols and against their rules of engagement. Um, and they have now dismissed a major who was directly involved in the... <laughs> a 17-year-old major general, major brigadier general. <laughs> ...incident and the brigade chief of staff, a reserve colonel, and disciplined the, uh, the brigade commander as well. Now, the World Central Kitchen say that... It is good that the IDF has acknowledged and accepted responsibility. It's good that they have uh, taken disciplinary action. Oh, yeah, it's so good. Th guys, 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 it's all good now. It's all good. They've been disciplined, okay? They feel really bad. Not because they did it, by the way. They just feel really bad because they got yelled at. Not because they did it. Not because they took lives, because they've been doing that literally since October 8. They feel bad because the Western world was like, what the fuck are you doing? You did too much of the thing that we have been totally allowing you to do. You did it to our guys. It's not that they got caught, because they've been caught killing people that they're not supposed to, like little children that are calling for medical professionals, killing medical personnel that goes up to... Uh, you know, uh, children trapped. They literally stop ambulances regularly. They do this every fucking day, by the way, and they do it so much that it doesn't even get news coverage. Settlers sending gift baskets to the fired soldiers. What is this? Nohi Mandel, the guy responsible for killing seven humanitarian aid workers, received a thank you letter and a box of chocolate from his settler community. To our neighbor and friend, Colonel Milnohi Mendel, a token of appreciation from us, the people of Gush Etzion. Kudos to you for your continued contribution and dedication in the war in the Gaza Strip. We are sure that you have always acted in accordance with the spirit of the IDF. I mean, they're right. <laughs> they're right. He is acting with the spirit of the IDF, for, for the record. Technically, these guys are right. They're not wrong. It's not an English chat. This is Google Translate. Why are you guys like this? 
Lemao, nice Photoshop. Come on. Come on. Listen, brother. Brothers and sisters. I need you to understand something. A lot of things come across like it's fucking insane. Here's the original. Okay, here's the original from a con news reporter. Are you happy? Are you happier now? I know it looks fake, and I know it sounds insane. Like, who could fucking do something like this? This is unconscionable, right? It's Google Translate. Okay. Are you happy, dummy? Why does your dick feel this way? Why are you the way that you are? Imagine being a loud bitch about it, and when confronted, do you talk to donators? Meds. Take your meds. Take your meds. Take your meds. Take your meds now. You have forgotten to take your medication today, chatter. All right, let's continue. So that's Google Translate. Huh. Although some are quick to judge when they are under the neon lights, but we who participated in battles and fought against a cruel enemy know that in the context of combat with the fog of battle, mistakes are made, and that is part of the price of war. Unfortunately, the idea of forces accidentally killed hostages, soldiers were killed by the fire of our own forces, and the army command realized that unfortunately this is part of the war. The importance of the political campaign is clear to us, but it is forbidden for soldiers and commanders to pay such a high price. We send you a warm hug and salute you, Yaron Rosenthal, on behalf of the residents of Gush Etzion. Here's the original. So just understand, technically he's right. The settler community is correct. He was acting in the spirit of the IDF. And he did technically get fired specifically because there was a political price for it. Okay? Yeah. <laughs> this is madness. I can read a little bit of Hebrew and that translation seems accurate, but take it with a grain of salt. I mean, it's Google Translate. It's going to be the best uh, that we can get without, you know, actually being uh, good, decent readers of Hebrew. This, to me, this to me is a perfect demonstration of how brain breaking, uh, how brain breaking fascism is. Okay, this is just pure fascism. Like they're they're not riding for this guy alone. They're also straight up saying like even the fucking soldiers that killed our own Israeli citizens actually were just doing their jobs. <laughs> That's why the dehumanization, the steady propaganda of dehumanization that is required to maintain a captive audience that is willing participants in fascism actually ends up dehumanizing them, okay? A person who thinks this way is no longer human. They've lost their humanity. They've lost their capacity for empathy completely. They are now a part of a machine, a broader project, a project that is fascist, okay? If they were brown aid workers from an African country, it probably wouldn't have even made Western media sad, but true, it didn't. 200 aid workers have been killed before these seven. 200! You never heard about it. Anira literally stopped their operations after the uh, WCK aid workers were killed. Anira had an aid worker killed of Middle Eastern descent, of course, a month prior. You didn't even hear about it in the news. So it's not even a, this is not something that we need to speculate on. This is something that we know is a fact. <laughs> UNRWA and ANIRA and many other aid organizations that hire almost entirely Middle Eastern aid workers 
are not considered real casualties, real deaths. The 35 plus thousand that we know of that have been murdered by Israel are not considered real deaths. They, they, they're just a number. It's, a, it's statistics. Okay? If you want to see it. They've been targeting journalists. They've been targeting doctors. They've been targeting healthcare professionals. They have been... What? The problem is that most people are like that, even... In Israel, even a decent amount of Israeli Arabs? Wait, what do you mean? A big chunk of Israeli Arabs are like that. Yeah. If you are dedicated to the Zionist project, which happens to, uh, you know, uh, it, it happens to only come to fruition with the full-blown extermination of all Muslims and Christians in this region... You are going to take it to this level. Wait, Candace Owens? What is... Candace Owens wants to debate Sharpino. I would like to debate Ben Shapiro about Israel and the current definition of anti-Semitism. Can somebody make that happen? Ay, ay, ay. It's awkward how the IDF keeps killing civilians and killing workers in Gaza, and the only reason why it becomes... Relevant for the media. Yes. The cruel irony of residents of an illegal settlement gifting chocolate to a war criminal who bomb workers delivering food aid to starving people in a war zone. It's just cruel. It's not even ironic, dude. It's just like, it's not ironic at all. It is completely in line with these values. <laughs> and the reason why the WCK aid workers getting killed is, is even more significant and, a, and an even larger L for Israel politically is because Jose Andres was in defense of Israel saying that they were not doing. Yeah. It's not ironic at all. He, 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 he was saying that they're not doing a genocide as a matter of fact, and that they brought him in specifically so they could show the world like Israel brought him in specifically so they could show the world like, see, we're letting in humanitarian aid, actually. Like, fuck UNRWA. WCK is doing the right thing. UNRWA is all terrorists. WCK is not. That type of shit. So they fucking killed the own PR people, the, the, their own people that were doing that they were trying to utilize for PR. Now, this doesn't mean WCK is bad or Jose Andres is bad. I'm not saying that at all, okay? WCK is a wonderful organization. It's a wonderful aid organization. It actually kind of, even before, um, even before Gaza, one thing that WCK has done is kind of similar to UNRWA. UNRWA hires Palestinians, okay? WCK also hires, wherever they operate, they hire local chefs, they hire local truck workers, they hire the people and try to use ingredients from, uh, from local providers specifically to also help them economically when they are engaging in aid. So they are a great organization. I'm not saying that at all. I'm not saying that they're bad at all. I'm saying that Israel's interest in bringing in that organization was to do PR. Their ultimate goals in the region obviously were not bad. I would never say that. Um, however, they're saying that this is these outrageous killings. That, that 600,000 German civilians died in World War II from the Allies. How is this different? Well, let me explain to you how it's different. Okay. Palestinians are not, as a whole, not closer to fucking Nazi Germany than Israel. Israel is closer to Nazi Germany than Hamas is, okay? If Nazi, because Nazi Germany was a mechanization of death and violence brought upon 12 million people, 6 million Jews specifically, we know them as, understandably, a truly evil 
demented system of violence, death, and destruction. And personally, for me, I don't think it was great that 600,000 civilians died in World War II, just like considering that Israel is closer to Nazi Germany in this equation, I would not be happy if 600,000 Israeli civilians died if the Allied forces started bombing Tel Aviv. Okay? I hope you understand that. I wouldn't be making these comparisons to World War II because guess what? A lot of the world is starting to realize that maybe it's not Hamas that is closer to Nazi Germany in this regard, but instead Israel. Okay? You don't want that. You don't want to even bring up that. You don't want to invoke Nazi Germany at all in this conversation, especially when you are justifying civilian deaths. Okay? People think that you think something like Hiroshima is based, but Dresden is bad. They're so fucking dumb. Yeah, I don't think either are good. I don't know why you think this is a, uh, a, a gotcha. But it's not one that suits you. It's not one that suits your purposes at all. It's also ridiculous because we fucking set protocols specifically so that this doesn't happen again you know, rules for war, internationally recognized rules for war that Israel has voluntarily avoided since day one. Talk to the people who think you tell people to vote for Trump. I can't talk to those people. They're, they are like the John Fetterman style stroke victims of, of this community and orbiters. Okay, if you think that I'm telling you to vote for Trump, you are literally the dumbest person I've ever met. Oh, I don't know if I will be able to convince them of anything, really. What the IDF has said so far and what they've done is really of cold comfort. They said that the IDF report shows that the world's central kitchen workers were doing everything that they should have been doing. Uh what about civilian deaths in Iraq and Afghanistan wars? Dude, what are you doing? Are you are you running the are you running the all the bad things are good actually argument here? Like what the fuck's happening? You think one million deaths in Iraq is good? Like you think I'm going to say that? Are you fucking stupid? Hello? Are you okay? You're describing gruesome acts of imperialism. You're just listing... We're doing a, a war crime uh, celebration hour here, I think. Like, when have I ever fucking said that those things are good? Do you, why do you suspect that I would say that those things are good? Like, when, when have you... Is there a moment where, where I have come across like I, I am uh, pro-American imperialism? Like, what the fuck's going on? I'm not saying it's good. I'm saying war is horrible for civilians anywhere, not just this war. What do you mean? Do you? I don't get it. This doesn't make any sense. Why are you bringing up other war crimes? It's like, uh, what about Vietnam, liberal? Do you have a take on that? It's like, yeah, I do. It was fucking gross and disgusting and similar to what's going on in, in Gaza right now. What the fuck? Like, is, is, the, is the second argument here that it's like, listen, Israel's going to get a little, get a couple licks in? Like, they should be allowed to do a little bit of war crimes? They should be allowed to have their own little ethnic cleansing campaign? Like, what the fuck do you mean? Also, this isn't even a fucking war. It's an ethnic cleansing campaign. It's like beyond a war. You understand? And even war, the wars you especially mentioned, 
were war crimes, okay? The things that you just mentioned are war crimes to begin with. I'm against all war in general, and sometimes it goes beyond. Israel is doing ethnic cleansing. More than 10 children losing legs in Gaza every day as dire health crisis grows, aid groups say. Ah, it's just war. It happens. <laughs> Do you condemn Genghis Khan? What about all the Britain can casualties of the Anglo-Saxons in the UK? Do you also condemn the Sea Peoples? Do you condemn Genghis Khan? Read my previous text. People don't care. Spilled paint. The 30K was similar to an accident of spilling paint. All the wars happening right now are justified, though. Wait, what? Hiroshima was one of the worst atrocities ever committed in the name of war, and we're taught that it was a noble and heroic thing to do. Pretty crazy, in my opinion. Yeah. Um, but uh, this, of course, leaves many, many questions unanswered. How could it be assumed that the gunmen who'd been on trucks were now inside? And we're talking about two gunmen could be in. For the record, and I think like this is how the media narrative kind of is like swinging. It's not just bad that they killed seven aid workers. It's bad that they're doing ethnic cleansing and it has to stop. And I hope everybody understands. Maybe you're coming in now because you're like, okay, I'm more amenable. I am realizing the error in my ways. Maybe Israel has gone too far. And I need you to understand. My position is that, one, the Nakba should have never fucking happened from the jump. Okay? And that Israel's last cleansing operation, its mowing of the lawn operation, is ethnic cleansing through and through. Yes, they have engineered a famine. This is an atrocity, okay? It's an atrocity when the Saudis did it to the people of Yemen. It is a war crime and genocide when the Saudis and the UAE did it to the people of Yemen. So I can show you my consistency because a lot of people will go, oh, he's Muslim. So he's just like hates it when Jews are doing it to Muslims or whatever the fuck, right? That's not the case at all. It was an atrocity and a war crime when Americans did it to the indigenous population and it's still a war crime and an atrocity when Israel is doing it to the Palestinian population now. Okay? Inside three different vehicles and so many more unanswered questions. Yeah, that's true. Oh, we really good segue to Norman Mark. They covered these examples. Yeah, we'll cover it in a second. I know the World Central Kitchen founder has asked for an independent investigation that is not done by the IDF. I, I do want to talk to you about something that has just happened. You know, after this conversation between uh, Netanyahu and President Biden, um, the aid crossings into northern Gaza uh, opening up and a dedicated port, Israel says, will be available for aid shipments. What else are you learning there? Yeah, I think it's kind of key to look at what the White House is saying here. U.S. policy is going to be determined on how Israel moves forward from these statements. And we heard the same from Secretary Blinken today, and it's what uh, Palestinians are telling us as well. Um, it's one thing to hear it from the Israeli government, particularly when they're pushed by the United States to do this. But let's see the reality on the ground. And the context of that, of course, is that back in January this year, um, the Israeli government said that it was okay for food shipments to come in through the port of Ashdod, which is 20 miles from the Erez crossing. Um, however, those food shipments, when they arrived, were then blocked by protesters. We already know that elements with inside Netanyahu's, Prime Minister Netanyahu's government, the right-wing elements, are saying that they didn't agree with this move by the Israeli government. This sets the scene for, again, potential protests to potentially stop convoys. It hasn't happened, but this is why the White House will look closely. And another point of reference here is that when he was here, in early February, Secretary of State Antony Blinken told the Israelis... The New York Times fired the ID of journalists who co-wrote the fake sexual assault story. Wait, what? Is this for real? New York Times fires Israeli reporter for liking Gaza Slaughterhouse tweet?
I don't know. I, I don't know Israel national news. I mean, it might be like a big outlet. I, I don't know. <laughs> Why don't you feed your dog a vegan diet? Okay, take an hour off, dude. Zay tweeted about it. Breaking. The New York Times has fired Anat Schwartz, who expressed their genocidal racist views about Palestinians in an attempt to scapegoat her and shield Jeffrey Gettleman and her partner's nephew, Adam Sella, who collaborated with her to fabricate the mass rape hoax. Not only is this a transparent attempt by the New York Times to shield Jeffrey, I don't do evidence, I do stories, Gettleman, and her partner's nephew, food blogger, Adam Sella, they're also lying about her being it, it lying about it being uh, about a like tweet to defend the mass rape hoax they fabricated. It was never just about one like tweet. It's a pathetic cover up attempt. She expressed repeatedly, including with her nephew, Adam Sella, that she sent out the fabricated mass rape hoax because it's important for Israeli Hasbro. Then the intercept went back and looked over her public detail segment, say, uh, statements and confirmed this, by the way, another moment of vindication. Not that it fucking matters. Not that it fucking matters, but this is yet another moment of vindication. This is the New York Times' version of firing the two fucking people that were responsible for the WCK murders. Okay? That's what this is. This is the the New York Times version of that. To be like, oh yeah, this isn't like a... This isn't basically uh, a, a, a propaganda that suited our needs at the time. That we could like greatly... Uh, make people look the other way with Israel's war crimes that were becoming ever present and and uh, more severe by the day. This atrocity propaganda that we engaged in with like really bad reporting overall in a in a real atrocity for the record. Like I mean, October seven was an atrocity. This is the story people call you a rape apologist for, even though you were obviously vindicated multiple times already. Now, yeah, I'm being called a rape apologist by dudes who literally victim blame every woman that has ever been raped. They are professional rape deniers, and they're calling me a rape apologist for this. Suck my dick, okay? Like, I'm sorry. If there's if there's one area where, uh, you know, these guys have no fucking ground to stand on, it's this. Get the fuck out of here. Jesus Christ. Yeah. Dudes that have talked about how it's actually a febophilia and not pedophilia, talking about who's a rape apologist and who's not. If I was an actual rape apologist, I'd have their fans be my fans, okay? That's what they look for. Mr. Bonarelli is the one who says rape apologist, I suspect. I don't even know if he has said it, but I assume it's him you're talking about. Fucking ridiculous. <sighs> it's kind of crazy uh, how like th this is like the fact that this was like really 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 bad reporting on a really 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 important story the fact that that got like very little western media scrutiny is mind-boggling Anyway, what the fuck were we listening to? They said they should be opening the Erez crossing in the north of Gaza because that's where the humanitarian... Have you noticed any real difference in the hate you got since you started directly addressing D? It's actually gotten not worse. It, it's, it's actually died down a little bit. I'm not even kidding. Or maybe because I'm not on Twitter, so I don't see it. Yeah, for the record, I... Yeah, for not, not ever responding to it, I think galvanized a lot of people and got a lot of people into like believing uh got a lot of people into uh, believing some of these fucking ridiculous statements <laughs> really feels about the same maybe a little less no it was definitely i think it's, it was fucking worse um one it's because i'm off twitter and two because uh the the uh 
Mr. Bonnaroo got exposed as a fraudulent charlatan and a uh, genocide lover. Like 80% of your replies, guys, completely fucked off when you stop tweeting. Yeah, I know. Bonarelli is now backtracking by heavily criticizing Israel. No spine genocide apologies. Oh, yeah. Well, smart of him to like actually retriangulate. I thought he would just continue. How many D chatters do you think you've recruited? Got exposed? He admitted to it. I don't think I can recruit those guys. I think I can recruit people in the periphery. But yeah, no, they're they're. Yeah, it's gotten better. You gave the green light to shit all over these people's extremely cringe and easy to embarrass talking points. It's actually hilarious how we completely demean his public image too. Yeah, a lot of... I think the public, public image was that like no one really knew who the fuck he was or didn't know his like... No one really knew who the fuck he was or how gross he actually was. So now that there's like a lot more people who uh, found out about him and were like, what the fuck is this guy's deal? He's been getting cumpstered every fucking day. The meme accounts still make fun of you, bro. They are literally blue check mark warriors. I don't care that like, uh, what is it? Scuba Ryan is getting paid like money by kick by by uh, those who own Stake.com to fucking tweet every week. This is the worst streamer of all time. You know what I mean? Come on, bro. Oh no, oh no! I can't believe an anonymous meme account is saying I'm the worst streamer of all time. How will I recover? How will I recover, guys? What will I do? The coining of debate purpose did profound work. I mean, yeah. Yeah, I think you ignoring Mr. Bonnaroo kind of made the little hug buck spin out of control until they got confident enough to step outside and then they stepped outside and everyone was like, dude, you're, you guys are fucking insane. Yeah. I think a lot of people... Vosh included think that me not talking about them was because I was afraid of them or something or afraid of their audiences. No, dude, when you reach a certain level of public notoriety, you're going to start getting a lot of people who go, yeah, I don't really like what you're saying. It happened to me as well. You used it for years to your advantage to build a following of people who don't really have any discernible political opinion beyond fuck Hassan. And not realizing that, like, you have a lot more takes that are infinitely fucking worse. You have to clip me out of context. You, in context, look like shit. You have to be more sarcastic when you say, how will I recover? The right-wing podcast sphere is worried about your mental health and not taking their feelings in the account is frankly disgusting. Yeah, I know. I'm so, I'm so devastated, guys. <clears throat> anyway. The debate against Finkelstein seems to have tarnished his image amongst Normans. No, dude. It wasn't that. His image was always slated to be tarnished amongst Normans. He's fucking gross. He's like, anyone, anyone that consistently debates the ethics of CP or the ethics of incest for fun is going to be seen as a disgusting little pervert freak by normal people. The problem is most normal people didn't see that shit. So when he actually went on a broad stage and debated someone who's infinitely more knowledgeable than he is, he got clowned on. And then people were like, wait, let me look into this background. And they realized that it's a target rich environment. And the reality is 
That's not even fucking 5% of the unhinged shit that he has said. He has a fucking entire decade. Yeah, your ops are the horse fucker pedo, the divorce cuck pedo, and the conservative media pedos. Yeah, always. I think this community don't understand he's been normie repellent for a while now. Yeah. Yeah, it's like when Milo Yiannopoulos went on Bill Maher. Yeah, uh, Milo Yiannopoulos uh, also like has so much shit that he has said that it's like completely and utterly unhinged. Literally zero people IRL know who D is still. I know we're we we haven't even gotten to the normal people in the real world know who he is uh, stage yet. We're we'll, we're probably won't even get there. Okay. We're at the stage of extremely online Twitter people recognizing who the fuck this guy is and being grossed out by him. <sighs> That's where we're at. The situation is most desperate. That's where people are literally dying of starvation. We just got a figure from people on the ground there today. You know how much it is for one kilo, 2.2 uh, pounds of uh, potatoes today? 22 bucks 22 bucks for two pounds of potatoes that's the price of potatoes that's why people are starving in the in in, in the north of uh, gaza right now and that's why there's going to be so much scrutiny to see um if this actually happens that the u.s has called so many times for errors to be opened yeah yeah and the u.n agency um that's looking at famine says famine is imminent um there a man-made famine I've always hated how I get the same reaction mentioning your name, at least with him it's founded, and convinced me of the wildly unfounded hate against you. I mean, 100%. The difference is if you come in here uh, and you spend a long enough time, you'll recognize that a lot of that stuff is just completely fucking bullshit. It's completely made up. If you go there, you will learn how fucking real a lot of the criticism is and how much worse it actually gets. Nick Robertson, thank you so much for all your reporting. So this report also comes out as Israel is now, as you guys were just discussing, opening, planning to open another crossing into Gaza to allow more humanitarian aid to flow in. And this is after that phone call between President Biden and the Israeli Prime Minister, where Biden issued an ultimatum that Netanyahu takes specific and concrete and measurable steps to protect aid workers to or risk losing U.S. support. CNN's Arlette Sines is at the White House now with much more on, on this. Arlette, what are you hearing this morning from the White House about this initial review, this initial analysis, this initial report coming out about that strike? Well, Kate, officials here at the White House were closely waiting and watching for this initial report from the Israelis as they're trying to get some further explanation for what exactly led to that strike on that World Central Kitchen convoy. It comes on the heels of a very blunt conversation between President Biden and Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu yesterday, where Biden warned Israel would face consequences if they do not do more to protect civilians and ease the humanitarian crisis in Gaza. Now, in that phone call, a senior administration official tells CNN that Netanyahu admitted that the IDF was to blame for the strike on this convoy. And this morning, we have some interesting new language from Secretary of State Antony Blinken, who ahead of the Israelis report being released, said that there must be a thorough independent investigation and full of accountability for what happened. Take a listen. Uh, it's also critical that we see um, an independent, thorough, and fully publicized investigation into the killing of the World Central Kitchen um, team uh, who were performing heroic work under the most difficult circumstances in trying to get assistance to people who so desperately need it. Uh, so we're looking to see that investigation, we're looking to see a public accounting, and we're looking to see accountability uh, in, in its wake. Now, this. In the next few days, the IDF and Israeli government by court order will need to publish a report on aid entry into Gaza and what they've done to block it. This comes after a petition by Gisha and other Israeli human rights groups. Gisha, time without an OWO, by the way, is the group that also petitioned, right? It's the humanitarian, uh, humanitarian group that also petitioned the government to force to open the Eretz crossing, right? That's the one, right?
What sucks is in between the cracks of horrible journalistic malpractice, there have been a few reliable stories of rape and severe sexual abuse, which are horrific, and they're almost certainly more, and just hasn't been released and investigated yet, but because these cynical fucks keep repeating obvious lies, those stories are minimized in the eyes of many. You're absolutely right on this. There are even people in this community that probably don't know, and I have covered this, um, that there is at least one very real accusation of rape one very serious accusation of rape from uh, a hostage, a first-hand account. <laughs> okay? That's real. That's a real... I don't think that was a direct result of the petition, but that was by general pressure. Geisha helped pressure internally. Yeah. That is a real thing. I've covered it, but... People probably haven't even heard about it. That it hasn't even gotten like enough coverage, as a matter of fact. Okay. So far, it's one. But of course, because the narrative was set from the jump that it was systematic and also inform like instructed by Hamas, that that real sexual assault has gotten almost no coverage whatsoever. all comes on the heels of what was could be one of the most consequential phone calls of this co conflict uh, between President Biden and Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. In that phone call, Netanyahu assured the president that Israel would be trying to take steps to prevent incidents like this from happening again. That's according to a senior administration official. One thing that the two men agreed on was that more needed to be done to be able to track where these humanitarian aid workers are in Gaza. There's also was a discussion about the need to to get more humanitarian aid into the enclave, and that was through the opening of these access points. As Nick was talking about earlier, uh, just in the hours after this call between Biden and Netanyahu, Israel approved the opening of that era. This one instance doesn't justify their accusation of systematic rape. It's pure projection from their part when they're the ones engaged in systematic rape of children. No, there's there's it, 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 the systematic rape accusation is is uh, hasn't been proven at all. But I have, since October 7, said that rape absolutely occurs, and there is a likelihood that sexual assaults did occur both on October 7 and since then. It, it's, this is just, it, it is a statistical likelihood at that point. The conversation... <laughs> <clears throat> Wait, don't get clipped. Who raped who and which hostage? I'm out of the loop. Um, the the uh, th this was uh, one of the hostages that came out uh, with very credible accusations after being freed. There was another hostage that also came out. There was another hostage that also yeah, amidst Susanna. Thank you. Um, there was also another hostage that came out and said that they had heard secondhand accounts of some of the hostages being sexually assaulted. And they personally said, they personally said that they would report it to a Hamas commander, implying that like the, even the other hostages believed that Hamas commanders, this is their words, not mine. This was a guardian article because a bunch of the hostages have since, uh, since being uh, released, yikes, Hassan. Wait, what? No, there is no yikes. I'm just directly telling you what the reporting says on this, okay? Other hostages that were released, listen to my words, other hostages that were released said that they had heard of accounts of sexual assault. And they said that they would report it to a Hamas commander. They're... The, the hostage takers, implying that they had confidence that the Hamas commanders, judging by how they had treated them, would take care of this problem. And the person who did a sexual assault would be punished. That was literally in the Guardian article.
that goes directly against, as far as evidence goes, that goes directly against this being a systematic form of sexual assault directed by Hamas commanders. It is the exact opposite, as a matter of fact. Here, we were constantly in terror. Israeli hostages tell of the captivity in Gaza. She said the group discussed reporting these allegations to a Hamas commander on their release. By and large, the Hamas commanders seemed to be receptive enough that we thought there might be a chance of relaying it. But she doesn't know whether that happened because most of the women were left behind. She's now desperate for the remaining hostages to return home, but added, having experienced how horrendous the fighting and bombardment was, I can't really understand how you can both have that and care for the captives that are there. This is a hostage that was held captive by Hamas saying this to the Guardian. We covered this. Talking about how, in this same article, they talk about how, in order to shelter them from the shockwaves of the bombing, they literally put their bodies on top. The Hamas members put their bodies, they put mattresses on top of the Israeli hostages, and then put their own bodies on top of those mattresses, sheltering them from the Israeli bombs. And I'm not saying that they did that specifically because they have care and consideration for human life. Maybe some do, maybe some don't. After all, they were still taken as hostages, right? Were they forced to lie? What? What do you mean forced to lie? They're safe in Israel. What the fuck are you talking about? They're doing that because hostages are bargaining chips. They did that. First and foremost, because you don't kill hostages unless you're trying to prove a point. And if you're going to kill hostages, you're going to do it publicly. And as of today, they have not. This is bordering on both sides in this. What? Second-hand accounts are credible? No. I started this conversation by talking about a first-hand account of an actual victim. Shut the fuck up. There is no both sides in genocide. You're dumb as fuck if you think that one actor implies that, like, all Palestinians, including Palestinian children and women, deserve to get fucking bombed to smithereens. Just like recognizing that the civilian death toll on October 7 amounts to an atrocity and a clear-cut, defined act of terror does not justify Israel's retaliation. That's your own moral compass being out of whack. Another earthquake? Aftershock in New York City just felt? That's crazy, bro. What was it this time? Was it, was it harder? Was it, how hard was it this time? Felt in Chicago, less aftershock in New Jersey, bro. That wasn't an earthquake. That was the top of the hour ad break. That's what you felt because it's coming at the top of every hour. And if you no longer want to see those ads, all you need to do is subscribe for $5 or free with a Twitch Prime by connecting your Amazon Prime account to your Twitch account. Uh. That's right, baby. Don't worry. Shelter yourself against the aftershock of the top of the hour ad break by subscribing. I've been buried under the rubble and you're debating me. <laughs> New Jersey's pain isn't your ad break joke? Yes. Here's a three minute ad break now. This is what happens when a large community of people want to wear Tim's year round. Yeah.
An Iranian official said on Friday that Washington warned Tehran not to attack U.S. facilities after Iran told it not to fall into Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu's trap. <laughs> Anyway, let's get back to it. crossing uh, in northern Gaza. Now, one thing that Secretary Blinken and other officials here at the White House have stressed is that uh, while they welcome the opening of this uh, crossing, while they op uh, welcome the ports, uh, they also want to see th the metrics of this, see how many aid trucks are actually getting in, see how much assistance is actually being distributed to the American, uh, to the Palestinian people. But really, this call between Biden and Netanyahu will be closely watched since it was one of the starkest warnings that he's offered that Biden has given to Netanyahu about the way that they're conducting their operations, saying that things need to change. Arlette Sines at the White House for us. Thank you so much, Arlette. Joined now by the president's national security communications advisor, John Kirby. John, thank you for joining us again. Let's get right to that question Mary posed at the end. Has Israel now done enough to meet the president's demands? Well, we're going to have... Oh, my God. Yeah, let's ask this fucking clown, dude. This dipshit. Has Israel done enough? Well, you know... I'm of the mindset that Israel's doing too little. Okay? I'm of the mindset that Israel's doing too little, actually. I mean, come on. I have to watch and see where, uh, where they go from. Fucking clown, piece of shit, garbage. I hate him so much. I hate him so much. Inshallah, he will, he will feel the suffering that he has caused uh, till, for the rest of times, okay? here george uh, just Demon. overnight uh, they announced some very welcome uh, agreements to open up crossings additional crossings for aid to get into gaza they've talked about a commitment to increase the number of trucks that will get in those are good starts but we got to see them execute and implement those things over time and if they don't well, again, I don't want to get ahead of the president or close down his decision space. I think he was very clear with the prime minister yesterday. If we don't start seeing meaningful changes uh, in the way Israel is prosecuting these operations and allowing for humanitarian assistance and working towards a hostage deal and a ceasefire, then we're going to have to make changes in our Gaza policy. And that means conditioning aid, doesn't it? Again, I wouldn't close down uh, decision space for the president, it, but, but he was very clear uh, with Prime Minister Netanyahu. We've got to see some changes. We've got to see the humanitarian situation improve in Gaza, or otherwise we will have to try to take a look at our own policy and, and make decisions uh, and change the way uh, that, we're, uh, that we're supporting Israel. President Biden also told the Prime Minister that an immediate ceasefire is essential. A ceasefire without the release of hostages? No, he's been very, very consistent, George. We want to see those hostages home. We want to see that aid increased. And the way to do that is through a, a, an immediate ceasefire, a temporary ceasefire for a matter of weeks uh, to allow all that process to, to, under, to undergo. So you, you could actually have the, the, the ceasefire before the hostages are... CNN is now saying on the front page, U.S. is preparing for a significant Iran attack on U.S. or Israeli assets in the region as soon as next week. Actually released. I, again, this has all been part of a larger deal where... Here's the other side of this. Here's the other side of this. Okay. America, much like Israel, is showing every regional actor that they actually do back down when someone is relentless. When Israel pulled out of Lebanon because it was becoming far too costly for them. It showed the Palestinians that like Hezbollah was the only entity that was able to withstand uh, or was the only entity that Israel uh, was, was willing to concede with. Yemen, Ansar Allah, is showing everyone else in the region that America will bomb you but they'll pull out. They can't consistently keep bombing you as long as you are willing and able to take pot shots and disrupt shipping. That's the reality of it. And and my and what's frustrating about this is that I'm not saying America should go even crazier, okay? I'm not saying America should go even more violent. I'm saying America should show everyone that they are willing and able to engage in 
diplomacy. Okay? But instead, they're teaching everyone in the region the wrong lessons. That, yeah, if you do retaliate in a violent way and escalate on your end, which is not even an escalation, really, it's just <clears throat> retaliation, that inevitably, inevitably, they have a runway that has an end to it. They have a limited runway. We're trying to negotiate. So I think there's been some confusion here. Nothing's changed about the president's desire. An immediate ceasefire in exchange for getting those hostages out and for getting all that extra aid in. That's what negotiators are meeting this weekend to talk about in Cairo. Uh, we're going to be part of those conversations. Uh, we want to get this uh, done as quickly as possible. As the president said yesterday, we need it immediately. Iran is warning again of retaliation for that strike against... Why isn't Hamas releasing the hostages and the ball will be in Israel's hands and even U.S. won't side with them? You're so silly for thinking that the number one defender of Israel's apartheid regime is only not siding with the Palestinians now and siding with Israel because Hamas has hostages. Yeah, dude. This is that Johnny Harris-style liberal thinking right here that, like, uh, MLK had the moral high ground, and that's why liberals were like, damn, it sure seems like the white supremacists ha are, are coming at this from a moral low ground and the black people demanding uh, civil rights are the ones with the moral high ground. I guess it's kind of a bad look, Sweaty. <laughs> it's crazy. The Revolutionary Guards earlier this week in Damascus. Israel seems braced for that retaliation. What do yeah. we know about what's coming? Historically, you're absolutely fucking right. The Lebanon withdrawal happened two months before Camp David, which affected Palestinian popular opinion significantly, especially in conjunction with the joke of an offer Barack gave in July. Yeah, and prime things for the second intifada. Yeah. They were like, what the fuck? This peace process sucks dick. We haven't gotten anything by trying to peacefully get a peace process going they just keep holding us they just keep holding us in 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 captivity as they increase the stranglehold that they have over the west bank illegally illegally expanding on the occupations uh illegally expanding on occupied territory meanwhile these guys fought back and they fucking got israel to leave completely ballot or the bullet israel will always choose the bullet oh yeah Well, again, I want to be careful here on the intelligence front, George, but uh, it is a very real, very viable and legitimate threat that Iran's posing here. Uh, and we have got to make sure that uh, that Israel's ready uh, in case there is uh, a set of strikes. And certainly we want to make sure, and the president yeah. made this clear to Prime Minister Netanyahu, uh, that they will continue to have our support. I think it's important to remember, and this is a great, uh, it's a great segue, that mouth. Israel lives in a tough neighborhood. Israel lives in a tough neighborhood. What is this? I know. I saw kids in my college celebrating October 7th right after it happened. That felt so wrong to me. Why isn't Hamas releasing hostages? Then we ball. Then the ball. Bro, I am a liberal. Sorry for being liberal, I guess. I mean, dude, you're, you're demonstrating the, the fucking logical endpoint of liberalism being feckless in the face of genocide. You're also... It's not the liberalism that is, like, frustrating, okay? No, I untimed him out. I, I need him to understand something, okay? It's not liberalism that is frustrating, Uchiha Itachi, on your sock account. So you, I suspect you might have been banned before. You know, same day followed, same day account created, April 1st, 2024. Is, this is not like, oh, I'm anti-liberal. Okay, there's plenty of liberals who have a much better understanding of the situation in Gaza than you. The problem is you're just wrong. The problem is not that you're a liberal. The problem is that you're wrong. Your assessment is off base. And that's why I explained it to you by describing to you historical precedent. Does that make sense? Like, think about it this way. 
I know, but when I saw college kids celebrating October 7th right after it happened, that felt so wrong to me. Like, think about how much smoke you have for fucking random college students, but I haven't heard you say anything about, like, American politicians that have been that have been continuing to facilitate this ethnic cleansing campaign and had been supporting this, uh, this apartheid state for years and years. Okay? I'm, I, I wonder what you mean by celebrating, by the way. College students celebrating October 7. There were people that definitely said things that were out of pocket. I mean, I've mentioned it before. People that thought that they could have the same callous indifference to civilian, uh, uh, to civilian deaths as uh, Israel supporters demonstrate on a daily fucking basis. You can't. I said this about Mia Khalifa as well. No, there were people definitely that were... There were people definitely that were um, showing indifference to the atrocities. Not immediately contextualizing it within the framework of like existing under an apartheid state, but instead directly, directly and actively uh, coming across as jovial. Wait, what happened with Mia Khalifa? Mia Khalifa was just like posting uh, stuff uh, saying this is cinema, like someone should tell uh, the Hamas people to put their camera someone should tell Hamas people to put their camera like sideways so we can get a full clear uh, vi uh, you know full and clear picture of what they're doing on October 7 things like that that is like that for the record is literally like that is is barely Barely as callous as like everything that you've heard from Israel defenders as Israel has objectively done. Yeah, uh, a shit ton worse. I mean, guys, we showed you the, the most popular Israeli telegram that operates still to this fucking day. In the telegram, they're literally calling uh, the humanitarian aid workers like pigs, Arab lovers that deserve to get fucking killed, celebrating like photos of the dead humanitarian aid workers that were executed by fucking Israel. As they're saying, like, these guys are fucking Arab lovers who deserve to get killed anyway. Okay? The difference is the reception. The reception... What is this? Conspiracies are running rampant? Okay. We'll look at this in a second. The difference is the reception to those words. When Zionists say those things, it's either cast aside and never taken, never, never uh, uh, brought about on the center stage. Okay. Because it is the normal position, is the normative position, is the position that like everyone, uh, like most people in America have and had historically. Now that's changing. But because that is the uh, in-group, because that is the proximity to power, uh, like whiteness, I'm using the, the socio-political terminology here, because that attitude is, is very commonplace in both uh, people uh, in, in positions of power, because it's in line with the American State Department, Zionism is not met with their most severe defenders and and cast it with like this broad brush that every Zionist is like this, right? Especially when even the average defender of Israel at this stage is still a defender of genocide, which is insane.
neighborhood. Everybody's focused, as and rightly so, on Gaza and the humanitarian situation there. But they face threats from elsewhere, from Hezbollah to the north, from uh, militia groups in Iraq and Syria, and from Iran proper itself. They're even getting strikes from Houthi-controlled territories in Yemen. So they've got they've got a range of things they got to be worried about, and the United States is going to stay committed to making sure that they can defend themselves. John Kirby, thanks as always. Yeah, they have a right to defend themselves. All right. Israel Here are my two goats. Okay. Two friends of the show. Duking it out with one another. I'm going to close this tab. Um, duking it out with one another. Not duking it out, but like actually having a, a fun and cordial conversation, I suspect. Norm Finkelstein talking to Mark Lamont Hill about um, Gaza. The U.S. could have stopped Israel on day one. Israel's brutal war on Gaza continues, and Israel is facing a case of genocide at the International Court of Justice. But are we at a turning point for Western support of Israel? And what future is there for Gaza and for Palestine more broadly? Earlier, I went to New York to speak to one of the foremost scholars on Israel-Palestine, Norman Finkelstein. Professor Norman Finkelstein, thanks so much for joining me on Up Front. Thank you for having me. You've been an advocate for Palestinian freedom mm -hmm. for decades. You devoted much of your life, certainly your scholarship, to this. Uh, you're also the child of Holocaust survivors. Your parents mm -hmm. uh, were in the Warsaw ghettos during the uprising. They were both taken to concentration camps. Your father was even in the Auschwitz death march. How do experiences like this inform your work? Well, <clears throat> first of all, I came from a very political home. That was just a fluke of fate. No other people who survived, they weren't steeped in, immersed in, passionate about politics. <clears throat> my parents were. Actually, I'm not sure if this is the best way to begin the interview, but my parents had a very turbulent, tormented marriage. I think both of them never really recovered from what happened to them and what happened to their families. On both sides, every member of the family was exterminated. And so it was not a happy marriage. Um, but I remember my mother once saying to me, that for all, your, for all the horrors of the marriage, we never disagreed on politics, meaning she and my father. And they had very strange politics by current standards. They were both fanatically pro-Soviet, pro-Russian, because they looked at the world through the lens of the Nazi Holocaust. Mm. And the Soviet Union defeated the Nazis, there's no question about that. 90% uh, of the German troops, the army, they were fighting on the Eastern Front. Um, my parents were fanatical Stalinists, Long after the Soviet Union had distanced itself from Stalin, the famous speech by Khrushchev in 1956, um, my parents would not brook any criticism of Stalin mm. till, the, their de till their last days, their last breaths. Um, and I think there were probably the only two Stalinists left in the world. <laughs> it was very funny when I, let's say when I was in seventh grade, who was professor, the teacher, who was Josh Abramson. And we were discussing World War II, and I didn't know better. I was defending... Stalin and Russia and singing their <laughs> praises. I remember the uh, teacher, Mr. Abramson, he said that you realize how many people Stalin killed? So what do I know in seventh grade? So I went home and I said to my mother, do you realize how many people Stalin killed? And she said, well, Stalin said that this generation is going to suffer, but the next generation will live better. Next day I go, up to go into school, raise my hand. Stalin said this generation will suffer, but the next generation will live better. So Mr. Abramson says, in other words, you're saying, Mr. Finkelstein, he did call us by our surnames. He said, in other words, Mr. Finkelstein, you're saying that the ends justify the means. Well, I didn't have a clue what that meant. But I went home and I said to my mother, in other words, Mom, you're saying the ends justify the means. And she said, well, in this case, yes. And I went back and I just repeated it. I had the clue what I was talking about, obviously. Um, so you've been riling people up for years. <laughs> well, I wasn't intentionally doing it, but you understand that at that age, you're very influenced by your parents. Yeah. I remember in sixth grade, it was 1964, and it was the presidential election. It was between um, Lyndon Johnson and Barry Goldwater. And my parents were very, again, 64, before being anti-war was popular. They were very anti the Vietnam War. And I came to class one day, and I raised my hand, and I said, well, in my opinion, Lyndon Baines, President Johnson is belligerent, okay? The teacher said, sit down, you don't even know what the word means. 
I think I've heard you say something like that in interviews before. <laughs> I've been watching on the internet lately. But let me ask you something, though, because you are a controversial voice, clearly since middle school. Uh, you're, one Wait, of, cool. <laughs> you're one of the leading you know, scholars in the world on this topic, but you're also one of the most controversial ones. I mean, you've been called, quote, the foremost Jewish anti-Semite on planet Earth. Some people even call you a Holocaust denier. But why does your work generate these types of responses? Um, I think it's a kind of paradox, to tell you the truth. Because as you well know, my actual political opinions are very conventional and well within the mainstream. For example, long after the whole of the left went over to this notion of one state, I was still advocating two states. Yeah. Whereas the whole left was... It's true. <clears throat> it's true. He actually was. And that's why originally, uh, originally he had a falling out with BDS and BDS supporters. He's talked about this quite a bit where uh, like, he lost his like only... Uh, only leg of support when he took this position. I'm trying to anchor their thinking in things like settler colonialism and this and that, I was very firm in just in repeating what international law said. I, I thought that was the best vocabulary uh, to try to reach a broad audience. So the controversial part comes, I think, from... There's a certain element of, I would say, fanaticism to me, which is I read everything and I'm ready to cite chapter and verse and everything. So I don't give my, so to speak, adversaries any wiggle room. There's not a kind of debate. No, I go in for the kill. Yes. You're lying. That's not true. That's false. And I <clears throat> am relentless. I know that I'm relentless because I spend, a, I think it's a kind of ideological war. Um, and I'm, I am relentless. I know that, but that's because I do the work. Have you lost faith in those, ref, in those reference points and those frameworks? I mean, I know you used past tense when you mm -hmm. said, I held on to the, 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 mm -hmm. the two-state idea. Mm -hmm. I believed in international law. Mm -hmm. Do you now no longer have faith that those are effective oh. frameworks for getting a pr practical outcome? Okay, those are two separate questions. Yeah. Um, on the question of international law, obviously it moves very slowly, you know, pain, painfully slowly when people are being killed in the genocide. And so there's a certain degree of more than impatience, there's a degree of indignation. So for example, on the car ride over here, I was reading the new International Court of Justice uh, response to South Africa. And it goes on for about 12 pages. And they say, we have to first consider this point. We have to first consider that point. And we have to first consider this, that, and other. All right, come on, guys. Let's just cut to the chase. People are getting killed. People are dying of starvation. But on the other hand, I have to say there's a kind of, I don't know, I was kind of touched by the fact that at the end of the day, the law at a huge price for the people of Gaza, but the law seems to be kicking into place. And for example, right now as we speak, 31% of children under the age of two are facing acute malnutrition in the northern part of Gaza. They went through the evidence and they concluded, no, Israel has got to give, let the food in, you know. It took 12 pages. It took six months, but the law is, you know, kicking in, so... But will I, the food be let in? I mean, we saw after the January yeah, decision, I know. not much changed. I know. And then what do you do? Mm. You know, on the one hand, it's a very slow, tedious process, uh, while the numbers are... Uh, since the January 26th decision of the court, uh, 5,000 more people have been killed. So, yeah, it's... So then, why do, you, why, why do you have any optimism that mm -hmm. any of this matters? Particularly because I think about in 2020 when you actually mm -hmm. stopped writing on Gaza mm -hmm. and you said you felt like the work you, you were doing was yeah. sort of, uh, I think you said pointless and mm -hmm. purposeless. Mm -hmm. um, why is it less pointless and purposeless now when we see legal decisions coming out, international mm -hmm. outrage, and yet Israel still remaining fairly obstinate? I guess the simple answer is twofold. Number one, if you do nothing, you can be certain nothing will happen. So that's not an option. And um, the, the second uh, thing is... Dude, he promises a fun day? Dude, what do you mean? If this ain't fun for you, I don't know what to tell you. It's that you do see changes. I mean, it's not what you would want, obviously. But you do see change. For the IC, first of all, the fact that South Africa went to bat for Palestine. Extraordinary. You know? Not one Arab state. Not one Arab state. It took South Africa. You know? The fact that the vote was 14 to 2. I said, this is impossible before the vote. I kept counting. I could only come up with six countries. 
that really? we vote for. Wow. If you, I would have bet every single dollar I own that it was impossible that the U.S. and Germany would vote yes. Hmm. There are grounds to be optimistic. Not the least, for me, the most optimistic thing is the young people. Hmm. If you had told me that people were going to keep coming out to demonstrations week after week after week after week I, for six months, I would never have believed it. The tenacity, the conviction, you know, it's, it's really an extraordinary sight to behold. You know, somebody Place. said I was at a demonstration three weeks ago. It was at Washington Square Park in Manhattan. It was pouring rain. And it was um, a Saturday. And there were about 50,000 people there. And um, they were all around 25. I was an age cohort of one. <laughs> and then there was a gap, literally, there was a gap of 40 years, wow. you know? And then after it was over, a lot of people went down to the subway to go home. And so in the subway platform, on this side of the, tr of the train tracks and then on the other side of the train tracks, everyone's still chanting, everyone's still chanting. If you know the scenes from the civil rights movement in the United States, yeah. how when they were in jail, they kept singing and they kept chanting and they kept singing and they kept chanting. I really want to know if you would condemn Islam since it openly supports slaughter and pedo. I can give verses from scholars to back this. <laughs> oh man, that's awesome. I like that we have to have this conversation every fucking day, dude. Every day. Listen, brother, religion is a weapon that you can wield in the direction of good or in the direction of evil. If you think that the entirety of a religion and all of its supporters are exactly the same as the most brain dead, most fundamentalist charlatans and their advocacy, you're simply doing backwards thinking. Okay, this is small mindedness. That's it. That's all it is. Now, this kind of thinking might actually help or might actually be celebrated in other circles, but this is not one of those circles. You will not find any allies with this kind of sentiment. Absolutely zero people should think that Ben Shapiro represents the average Jewish sentiment. Absolutely zero people should think that the Christian fundamentalists represent the average Christian sentiment. And many don't, especially in the Western world. Because in the Western world, Ben Shapiro and others also say that this is a, a nation founded on Judeo Christian values. This is considered a part of the in-group, so you can actually have more nuanced thinking. Because this is what you grew up with. This is what you learned. So you know that no, not all Christians believe in the most fundamentalist aspects. And not all Jewish people believe in the bastardization of Judaism to begin with. Okay? Okay. But you somehow feel as though Islam and all of its supporters are monolithic. Nowhere in the Bible advocates for these things. Ah, ah, my friend. The Bible has been utilized to advocate for slavery. What do you mean? I mean, just the simple question alone of how old was Mary when God fucked her? Should help you come to different conclusions than the ones you currently have. And no murder? Bible's got a lot of murder. The difference, of course, is... that I do not believe that this represents the entirety of the Christian religion. Nor does it represent 
the entirety of Christian believers of the faith. Every religion has been used in support of awful things, whether it be slavery, genocide, pedophiles, or incest. I already had addressed that, but I guess you failed to recognize that. And it was like these young people, except there's one difference. The people in the civil rights movement were fighting for their own rights. Right. These were young people fighting for Gaza, you know? Two million people in a, some ghetto way off in the Middle East. It's deeply inspiring. No, oh, absolutely. So there's every reason on those grounds, both to be proud of, you know, the capacity of human sympathy and solidarity, uh, but also <clears throat> on the grounds of being hopeful. As a follower of Christ, I can say Bible, especially Old Testament, has some very unethical elements that we would never find acceptable today. There was also very ethical elements in the Old Testament. My favorite being the the one about uh, how 30 children were making fun of a bald man, and then the bald man said, fuck you, and then bears came and ate those children. Never make fun of the bald. That's actually a good lesson. Yeah. Bald man bear. One of the things you talked about was how arguments that were on the margins have shifted, at least mm -hmm. to the mainstream, to be debated. They're now debatable. Correct. They're engageable. And they no longer can be shot down with you're an anti-Semite. Right. Those days are over. You made an argument recently that turned some heads, to be mm -hmm. sure. Uh, you said uh, that Hamas's October 7th attack was comparable in some ways to Nat Turner's slave revolt, uh, mm -hmm. rebellion of enslaved black Americans in Virginia that took place in 1831. You've also referred to Gaza frequently as a concentration camp. Mm -hmm. uh, those types of historical comparisons probably aren't in the mainstream yet. Uh, in fact, they offend some people, they outrage some people. Why do you make them? Well, the primary reason I make them is because I think they're true. Now, uh, the Nat Turner Rebellion was replete with the most horrifying atrocities. Yeah. The order Nat Turner, for those of you who don't know, because I don't know what your audience is. Exodus 12, 7 advocates for and says the terms for selling your daughter into slavery. Fucking, dude, that's just the free market. Uh, the United States had not a lot, but it had slave rebellions before the Civil War. And the best known one and the most famous one was um, the Nat Turner Rebellion. Uh, they killed about 60 people in the Nat Turner Rebellion. Uh, the order given by Nat Turner, according to the historians, the order was very straightforward kill all whites. Yeah. That was the order, kill all whites. And they proceed to do just that. So when I read that, when I read that, a light went off on in my head and I said, okay, now I have something roughly uh, analogous to October 7th. So now my next challenge is, okay, so how do you render a judgment on the Nat Turner Rebellion? So I figured I would go to the people who were, so to speak, closest to me in my political trajectory, yeah. which would be the abolitionists, those who were um, fighting for the end of slavery. However, they were very strictly against the use of violence. And... Oh my God, I just realized how fucking fat his calves are. Dude, not the slut shame, but put those away, Norm. God damn, he's got some daddy calves up in this bitch. What the fuck? That's why, I mean, he is in great shape for his age. He's like 800 years old. God damn. That boy thick as hell. He's never coming on. Stop saying he pressed, it's pressed against his leg, okay? My man is literally about to burst from the seams, regardless of whether it's pressing on his legs or not. You're out of your fucking mind. That's a big old calf pressed up against his other leg or not, dude. Fuck you mean. Yeah, it turns out he's not just working his brain out at the library. He's working his body out as well. To Norm Finkelstein, I say, your body is T. So I was curious. Okay. How did they judge, assess the Nat Turner Rebellion? And so Show them free Calvestein. <laughs> I turned to William Lloyd Garrison, who was one of the most famous of the Abolition. abolitionists. He edited the newspaper called The Liberator. And it's very worth reading it 
what he said. He began by saying, we told you so. Because he was speaking to white people. We told you so. We told you. If you keep treating people this way, if you treat them this way. Where'd that, where'd that Christianity doesn't support any of those things guy go? Did he just learn about a lot of stuff about Christianity all of a sudden? That guy stopped talking as soon as we started mentioning Bible verses in here real quick. It shut him down so fast. Like, I, I'm, like I said, I'm not a fucking r slash atheist Andy at all. I'm not. But it, it is pretty funny that he was just, he had to be like, no, dude, you don't understand. Like, the Bible's different. The Quran, the final uncorrupted word of God, states the sacred value of human life, unlike any other book like the Bible or gospel, that were corrupted by humans. <laughs> okay, dude. Yes. Sure. It's the most uh, comprehensive. It's the third version. It's the best version. Brother. There's going to be a reaction. And he went on to say that, of course, atrocities, or I think he called it horrors, occur during the Nat Turner Rebellion. But if you read the statement from start to finish, he never condemned Nat Turner. He does not. It's, you know, it was for me a, a epiphanal moment because I spent the last 15 or more years of my life chronicling the horrors in Gaza. The fact that those folks who burst the gates of Gaza on October 7th had been born into a concentration camp. Not only were they born into it, but they were living in it and they were destined to die in it. And that was Nat Turner. But is this, a, is this an explanation from a dispassionate scholar who's simply saying, look how inevitable this violence on October mm -hmm. 7th was, or is it an endorsement of the action by saying, look, they had no choice. This is literally the only legitimate well, and morally acceptable option they could make. Look, when you, make, when you pass moral judgments, in my opinion, you have to offer options. What else could they have done? So when Hamas was elected in 2006... Well, you just talked about the international courts, right? So well, and you have a growing optimism. Yeah. Does that stuff only happen because of the armed resistance? Mm -hmm. In other words, would we have mm -hmm. the world's attention? Would there I would, be... I would, I'm going to say what the facts tell me. Now, I'm not saying I'm the only person in possession of the facts, yeah. but the facts as they tell me. In 2006, when Hamas was elected, it was elected on a reform platform because the Palestinian Authority is so corrupt, people wanted to change. Yeah. If you study, immediately as they were elected, the international community, first Israel, then the US, then the EU, imposed this brutal economic blockade on Gaza. Now, if you study the record, Hamas was attempting a diplomatic solution to the conflict. It talked about recognizing Israel, two states, having a long-term ceasefire. It made many options. All of it was rebuffed. All of it was rejected. Then, in March 2018, they attempted the Great March of Return, a nonviolent civil resistance. What happened? Well, we know exactly what happened. A UN investigative body produced a report with 250 single-space pages. According to the report, Israel targeted, deliberately targeted children. Israel deliberately targeted medics. Israel deter deliberately targeted um, journalists. And here's the best one of all. Israel deliberately targeted disabled people. Okay? The best one. And they have the descriptions in the report. <laughs> Not the best one. No, no. A person in the distance on crutches, 300 meters from the perimeter fence, shot in the head. A person in the wheelchair, 200 meters, shot down. So, of course, the nonviolence is going to fail. If people are just being shot down, like, you know, swatted down like flies, and there's no international reaction, it can't work. The whole premise of nonviolent civil resistance is that if you're willing to incur the suffering, then the international community, or in the case of our own country during the civil rights movement, the North and the federal government will be moved by the violence, moved in sympathy uh, to act. When you show the violence, you remember the whole point of nonviolence as uh, Martin Luther King understood it. If you read, for example, the letter from the Birmingham jail. The Bible had a detailed guide on how to buy slaves with itemized prize list. What the fuck? 
I mean, at least they put a standard on it. Exodus 21, 7, 11. When a man sells his daughter as a slave, she will not be freed at the end of six years as the men are. If she does not satisfy her owner, he must, be al he must allow her to be brought back again. But he is not allowed to sell her to foreigners since he is the one who broke the contract with her. Why are you going Southern? I mean, come on. Why aren't Islamic countries free? They're the last of all the slavery and to raise, wait, misrepresenting a text is a lot different than just clearly taking direct action because of what your text says. I don't have time to respond to all these guys. Wait, what do you mean? Bro, you think the Crusades didn't happen? George W. Bush said God told him to invade Iraq. Do you think the 1 million death toll is attributed to Christianity as a consequence of that? Or do you think he was just kind of saying that because you have the capacity to identify and separate Christianity from the actors, but you cannot demonstrate that same thing when it comes to Islam being monolithic? I've already addressed these talking points a million times over, but I can duke it out with you over and over again if you would like. Why aren't Islamic countries free when they're the last of all the slavery and to raise the age of cassette is a coincidence? Yeah, dude, the, la the, the Islamic country of France, the Islamic country of the Japans raised the age of consent. The Islamic country of Alabama, the Islamic country where child marriages is seen as totally permissible by the very same people that say Islamic countries are so backwards thinking. Come on, dog. Come to me with some something better. And as far as slavery goes, America has the highest prisoner per capita density of all nations on the planet. The United States is only 4% of the entire world's in population, yet has 25% of its enslaved, incarcerated population. The United States of America also constitutionally allows slavery. Slavery still is very much an industry in this country. It is called our prison system. But yet, you do not consider that to be an aberration. You do not consider that to be an abomination. You consider that to be good, I suspect. <clears throat> Tennessee. Where people say, two children, you're the only 10 I see. And the 10 doesn't refer to their looks, but instead their age. Shut the fuck up. And as far as the Bible, how many times have been disproven? I'm into history. As far as I can tell, you can Google it yourself. There's not been a single archaeological discovery that goes against it. Plus, we wouldn't have any Western nation. Wait, what the fuck? This boy said the Bible is historically accurate? Yo! I didn't realize this guy was writing for Christianity. I thought he was going to have the decency to try to make it seem like he's like, oh, I'm against all religion. He's like, no, actually, the Bible is literally correct. Google it. Whoo! Who prove him wrong? You think Jesus Christ unironically turned water into wine, dude? If you do think that, there has not been a single archaeological evidence that proves anything that the Bible has, dude. Yeah, there's archaeological evidence that proves that Jesus Christ walked on water. And also, there's archaeological evidence that, like, yeah, no, Jesus' mommy was actually fucked by God. This guy's awesome. Prove the Bible is not correct in one picture. Yo, chill. Dude, you're going to trigger this guy. You're going to trigger this guy. Places, prophecies, history. Oh, this guy's awesome, dude. Dude, there's nothing funnier to me than a dude who is like unironically the same like mullah that he is criticizing, but in America for Christianity. He's like, yeah, these fundamentalists, the entirety of the religion rep is represented by these fundamentalists. Oh, also, I'm a fundamentalist for Christianity, but that's good and right and proven by archaeological digs. Brother, uh, I say to you, okay, brother. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. 
Dude, it's so funny. I thought he was one of those like r slash atheist guys. This guy's awesome. I don't force my opinions on anyone. <laughs> yeah. Probably because the last time you tried to do that, people were like, yeah, no, dog. I think you're fucking hallucinating. <laughs> Here's one for him. I challenge anybody to find one piece of information in the Bible that you can prove to be false. Not that you... Easy enough. Genesis 3230 says that Jacob saw God face to face. Exodus 33 says that Moses saw God face to face. But John 118 and 1 Timothy 616 both say that no one has ever seen God. This guy is going, oh, uh, actually the Bible is contradicted by other passages in the Bible. <laughs> I mean, it's true, but who cares? So if these verses are true, then these are false and vice versa. It, it is kind of funny to go um, r slash atheist when you, when you see a fucking dude who's like super, super fucking invested in, in defending the Bible. And I'm not Republican. Those verses need context. Moses did not see him face to face. He was in the presence of him. Oh, okay. My man's got so much context. My man has got so much context when it comes to the Bible. Meanwhile, he's like every, every Muslim wants to do rapes and are pedophiles. <laughs> Cause the Quran said so. Oh, that's awesome. The Islamic scriptures in the Quran were actually far less bloody and less violent than those in the Bible and cites explicit instructions in the Old Testament calling for genocide while the Quran calls primarily for defensive war. Philip Jenkins, professor, professor of religious studies. Wait, what do you mean? Does it not? Bro, you are awesome. You actually are awesome. Thank you. Keep doing what you're doing, baby. Remember when your original point was that like the Bible doesn't have any slavery in it? And then when I told you that it does, you very quickly swapped it to, well, actually, Islamic countries uh, still have slavery. And when then I told you Christian countries still have slavery, like the one that you're uh, defending, you're, you quickly swapped it to prove me wrong. The Bible is actually real. Everything that it prophesized is correct. Becoming inc increasingly more unhinged. You're awesome, and I love you. Thank you for being you. Keep popping off, King. The end times are coming. If the Bible isn't real, how did Putin open the oldest vault and show that all the biblical figures were black? We don't talk about that. This chatter, a student debating their religion 101 professor energy... Okay, but this chatter is also unhinged. So, like, any fucking theology professor would, would cook this dude. Other people who are religious in the chat are cooking this dude. <laughs> Calm like a Tom. Thank you for the 10 gifted subs. Please guest star him, I beg you. I don't want to guest star him. He's a little... <laughs> He's a little too gross for my taste. 20k, yikes. This place is falling off, huh? 36 month subscriber. Yeah, it's it's over, dude. Hassan, are you a Zing guy? Saying opening it up only reinforces Hamas. It says that Hamas methods work. What do you suggest that Israel do the next time Hamas has a mass terror attack? 36 month subscriber. Welcome back into the fold, baby. You and 10,000 other people just like you uh, left the community specifically because you could not cope with the reality that the country that you have learned uh, was actually good and infallible is, as a matter of fact, bad. Welcome back to the community, though. We welcome you with open arms as long as, you know, you change your ways. Yeah, that is true. 10,000 individuals in this community left after October 7. Because they could not cope with the reality that Israel is an apartheid state conducting ethnic cleansing. Some of them are coming back now, slowly but surely, because they're recognizing that maybe Israel is doing some bad shit. We missed you. I hope you stay. 
We welcome you with open arms. Welcome back. What do you mean? I really don't think it was that much, bro. My average concurrent before October 7 was 30k. My average current after October 7, like once the once uh that shit unwound and people uh were no longer paying attention, uh it, it went down to 20k. You were getting 40k after October 7? No, that was only because everyone was interested in learning about what the fuck was going on. You're wrong. Ay, ay, ay. And no, I did not change my opinion. And I will not change my opinion. But anyway, like I said, listen, used to be super confusing to me as a Jewish kid growing up. We were taught in Hebrew school that Republicans were the only ones that care about Israel, only to vote for them, even when everything else we believed in did not align with any conservative. is a trip. I still want Israel to have its state, but I don't want Bibi Netanyahu. People shouldn't be confused about Bibi being a psycho. His brother died fighting PLO members in the 70s. Bibi shouldn't have power. He is too compromised. Super Used to be super confusing to me as a Jewish kid growing up. Saying opening it up only reinforces Hamas. It says that Hamas meth is work. I still love you, man. Listen, liberal Zionists are coming back in every day. Was that chatter really here for 36 months? You've been talking about Palestine for years now? It shouldn't have been a surprise that this happened. It's different. Oh, he unfollowed. Oh, well, I guess he's not coming back. He just came back in to say, yikes, you fell off, Andy. I did not. 20K is still pretty fucking solid. But not only that. What? Yeah, he brought up Operation Entebbe when his older brother Yoni Netanyahu died as a reason for why he's compromised. Yeah. Operation Entebbe. Uh, I thought, I think incorrectly that because of Israel's policy of not having two brothers uh, go on the same operation, I thought there was a chance that Benjamin Netanyahu could have died in Operation Entebbe as well, but I don't think he was a part of the idea at that point. I've been watching less after October 7th now because I'm a Zionist because I can't handle being the you-can-only-watch-trolley meme. Come back. Baby, come back. Baby, come back. Baby, come back to me. You try to do the podcast and video thing and can't get more than eight likes on a video. He never fell on. Okay, I don't. I'm not even. I'm not even shitting on this guy, bro. Come on, listen, brothers, brothers, understand something. This is a perfect example of exactly what I'm talking about. A person that was a supporter for 36 fucking months, dude. Does that not, does that not like, does that not change your, your, your attitude about this kind of thing? Stop being so rabid. This is a person who loved this community objectively. Okay. Okay. He's a prick for dropping by and saying that shit. I'm sorry. I can't hold back. This man is alive and stops being a sniveling little shit. I think this is the type of person who can be reasoned with eventually. Can't wait to, for post Israel ban appeal stream and all the liberal Zionists want to come back. They won't. I think a lot of people won't. I think they're, I think that something legitimately, they, they just like have decided that I'm a terrorist lover The point is, or the thing is, I get it. The date of his last message is when you and Ethan had the debate, Sag. A lot of people left then because drama farmers made a big deal about your and Ethan's disagreements. I know. But that also is alongside, like, I'm sure there are plenty of people who are still in here who didn't like the way that that resolved, okay? 
That's not the major problem. The major problem is when you already have hangups about Israel or my coverage on Israel, and then that's the final blow for you. <laughs> The point is, and I'm trying to describe this to everybody who doesn't understand. I understand why that person has these positions. There are plenty of people who have been conditioned into believing what many believe in this country. Okay? Many people in this country have been primed into believing that Israel has to exist or else the Holocaust will happen all over and over again. Yeah. Now in 1976, Bibi was graduating MIT. He wasn't even in Israel, bro. I wish he could have died in Entebbe, but it wasn't meant to be. I know. I, I used to think that uh, Bibi could have died alongside his brother in Operation Entebbe, but he couldn't because he wasn't. I found out later that he wasn't a part of the IDF at that point. Yeah. So... I I think that um I think that I treat this attitude that people have with the exact same with the exact same care and consideration that I treat those who have like opinions you think I'm dying would have changed Israel's course? No, but it would have been cool not to know about Benjamin Netanyahu as a human being. I mean, he, he has like, he has definitely shifted Israel's reactionary policies in a way more right wing. He almost has single handedly. I mean, obviously the, the population was primed for it. But he definitely played a very significant role over the course of the past couple of decades in making, um, in in making Israel even more reactionary. Are you still good with Ethan? Yes, I talked to him this morning. Listen to me, okay? Listen to me. I understand where a lot of these people are coming from. This is, we are all, we cannot escape our social programming, our social conditioning. Okay. So I treat this in the exact same way that I treat anyone with opinions that are reactionary. Do you get it? So instead of like trying to yell at people, and I get why people want to yell at people because the fucking genocide is happening. Okay. But instead of trying to yell at those who we can convert, we should try to be a little bit gentler and, and not sway away from trying to educate people. Okay? That's it. Many of you in this community, and I explain this every fucking day, many of you in this community had some reactionary opinions, some reactionary hangups. I myself did as well. Because we cannot escape our social conditioning. But you can escape the top of the hour ad break by subscribing. Because at the top of the hour, there's a three minute ad break. Now, of course, you might think, oh man, what the fuck? I don't want to see this. What the hell is that? Well, don't fear not. You can subscribe for $5 or for free with a Twitch Prime by connecting your Amazon Prime account to your Twitch account. They changed where the Twitch Prime button is. I don't know where it is now. Okay. But you can change your mind about seeing the ad break at the top of the hour. I hate you. I am not kidding. It's hard to put up in the emotional labor to do that when it seems like they don't care either way. Generally, not just about H3. We just uh, moved on. No. Um, first of all, emotional labor. If, if, first, if you're not Palestinian, the emotional labor is not even for you. Okay? And as far as I know, many Palestinians are taking on that emotional labor and asking you to take on that emotional labor. 
as someone who is at least like perceived as a Muslim Islamist fundamentalist terrorist lover and supporter, I do take on a shit ton of emotional labor myself personally. So if you're like a white person from Iowa, maybe you shouldn't have as, uh, as, as edgy opinions on educating people. Okay. That's my point on the issue of Palestine for sure. Okay. I got to disagree. I think some of those historical developments are actually really tragic. I mean, just one example is that after Rabin was assassinated in 95 and the Perez provisional government was through, Bibi won the prime ministerial election by less than 30,000 votes. Yeah, but I remember looking at data that showed that Benjamin Netanyahu was slated to defeat uh, Rabin regardless. That's 1%. I'm no fan of Perez. He sucked. But between 96 and 99, Bibi's positive towards Oslo irreparably damaged the peace process and all for 1% of the votes. Pretty sure Bibi was going to win anyway. Or at least he personally thought so. He literally said, I wish Rabin had never been killed because I wanted to defeat him anyway. I was going to defeat him regardless. But yeah, you do have to remember that. You do have to remember this, this key point here, which is that These people who are otherwise very progressive individuals have this weird cognitive dissonance when it comes to Israel. One must ask the question, why? Where does this come from? It's proximity. It's, it's a distance that they have from actual Israel. Because I feel like a lot of people who do have like liberal Zionist tendencies, as a matter of fact, if they were to really live in it as a constant, well, maybe they could become more reactionary or... Maybe if they went to the West Bank, for example, they, they would, as many have, change course entirely because they would be absolutely grossed out by how fucking psychopathic the Zionist project is in general. Okay? That's something that you have to remember. But yes, this person is a great example of this. A person who is probably very progressive. <laughs> libtard <laughs> it's funny yes but i'm talking about the 96 election which was very close he uh, he thought so because that his narcissism and gall to some extent but the election was very very close Being transphobic and growing up is very different from denying the crystal clear genocide happening right now. I agree with the point you were making, but these specific people need to be ostracized. No. There's a difference. If that person wasn't a 36 month subscriber, I wouldn't be talking about it as much. Ben, debate confirmed. Oh boy. Let's do it on my show this Monday at 5 p.m. at our studios in Nashville, 90 minutes, live streamed. Oh, I can't wait to watch this shit. Oh, fuck yeah. God, I hate this kind of because, like, I hate when it's Candace Owens defending the position of Palestinians. Ugh, yuck. Uh, but what are you going to do? That's not true. When I was a transphobe, there also was a clear, crystal clear policy of attack on trans people um, in the States, and yet Hassan has changed my mind. Yeah, I think you're wrong. It is exactly like transphobia. It is so normalized in their worldview. It is so normalized in their worldview that they don't even see it. They think it's like a totally separate thing. They have probably... Con uh, They've probably seen the criticisms and have either contextualized it from the framework of like, well, this is a lot of anti-Semitism uh, at, at play here, or probably contextualized it by saying, well, Hamas is really, really barbaric and really right-wing. Israel's right-wing too. Brother, you cannot call our position defending Palestinians. She's defending Palestinians for the same reason as motherfucking Hinkle Dink of all other anti-Semites on the planet who are pro-Palestine. Yo, no, I agree. That's why I said... She is ostensibly on the pro-Palestine side in this conversation. That's why I'm saying it's gross that she is the one who is supposedly defending the Palestinian position.
It sucks. My point for all is that, and I'm going to, I'm going to move on from this. Um, my point for, for everybody that is uh, in here that has uh, like different opinions on Israel than myself is that I'm always open. I'm always open to receiving people back into this community, no matter what they've said, as long as they genuinely show that they've changed their minds on things. Okay. There's always a chance. Like it's not a thing. Now, many people will hear that and go, dude, fuck you receiving me with welcome arms. Fuck yourself. 36 months chatters hating on you now because October 7 is the same as single issue voters. If they followed you for that long and disagree with you on Israel, they, pre they still probably agree with you on 99% of the issues. Yeah. There is literally an entire, there's literally an entire fucking genre of this way of thinking. It's called progressive except Palestine. And it's the same in many Western nations where there are a shit ton of people who are like diehard left wingers on every issue until Palestine. And then they become diehard right wingers on that issue. Okay. That should cause you to really think about why that is such a commonplace thing. <sighs> It's because it's been seen as like the normative position. And I do make fun of that all the time. And I make fun of those guys for their cognitive dissonance. But it doesn't matter when it comes to it, when it comes down to it. Don't, don't you think the main factor is Islamophobia? Yes, Islamophobia is a huge factor. Israeli leftists here have been watching for a couple years. Thank you for shaping my political upbringing and changing my mind on Israel. There you go. If people who fucking live in Israel can change their opinion on, on this shit, people who live in America can too. He says that violence is embedded in the system. And all we're doing is we're bringing it to the, the right. surface. They're dramatizing it and putting but, a spectacle on it. Exactly. In order to evoke sympathy. But does it work but, if everyone's... The reason well, that's it. what I'm going to say. Oh. <laughs> you, you answered, that's the point. It didn't work in Gaza. It didn't work. So now you're at the, the heart of the dilemma. If diplomacy didn't work, they tried. I'm not saying what they were saying was perfect. I'm not saying it wouldn't have required, you know, intense uh, negotiations to make it work. But there were steps taken by Hamas. That didn't work. Nonviolent civil resistance didn't work. And by the time you got to October 6th, it was clear that a deal was going to be made with Sa the Saudis. And then the whole conflict between Israel and the Arab world would have been resolved above the heads of the people of Gaza. And the only thing those two million people would have to look forward to is to languish and die in that concentration camp. So your, before, your, your, your critics, so, though, would say there was at least an opportunity for hope or possibility. Now there's 33, uh, almost 33,000 people dead, 8,000 of the rubble, schools destroyed, I, I, building, almost I'm entire not, built environment yeah, I'm destroyed. Not gonna, I'm not going to defend that. I'm not going to even defend their no, action. No, I know, but I guess I mean, is, ultimately, me, was, it a, was, it a, was it a successful plan? Um, you know, I think, I, I think that politics is a very unpredictable business. So let me give you the analogy, and then you can answer me. Yeah. When Nat Turner carries out his rebellion, the immediate reaction was the whites in the South went on a lunatic rampage. They randomly killed about 120 of black people just you know, off the street, as you can imagine what happened. Yeah. And then another 80 were killed, uh, died after being convicted in court. So about 200 black people were killed. That was the first consequence. So many a person like yourself would say, was it worth it? 61 white people were killed and now 200 of us were killed. Was it worth it? What was the second thing that happened? The law changed. After Nat Turner, they passed the law. Black people can't learn how to read. Because Nat Turner was very literate. I said he knew the Bible and yeah. he was very smart. So they banned, uh, they 34 MKD 50 is back and fucking lacing it up, dude. God damn. 100 total gifted subs. 
That's crazy. Prohibited teaching a black person to read. Third thing that happened, they prohibited black people from congregating together, okay? Because the people thought he was giving sermons to the black people, and instead it turned out they were plotting the uh, uh, rebellion, okay? So someone like you would say, did that make any sense? Was it worth it? Right. 200 black people were killed, or 30,000 Gazans were killed. Uh, the law is now more repressive than ever, okay? So there's an argument there. But then along comes John Brown. And when you read John Brown, he says, I was inspired by Nat Turner, okay? So then you could say, well, John Brown, what did he accomplish? His uh, uprising was put down in, the few, uh, in a, about a couple of days. Michael. He was executed. John Brown? Perfect demonstration of a quirked up white boy. Another very religious guy, by the way. I would say a religious nutter, as a matter of fact. Straight up, it, like as close to insane as you can get. But sometimes you need that. Okay. The most swagged out white boy to have ever done it. He was so crazy that literal black liberation advocates were like, yeah, dog, I think you're just going to die. Like, and I don't want to die yet. And he was like, nope, I'm going to do the damn thing. And he did. Go to with the sauce. Okay. But then along comes Frederick Douglass and he delivers his famous speech on John Brown, one of his best, in my opinion. And he says, he goes through all the arguments. John Brown was a failure for this reason. John Brown was a failure for that reason. John Brown was a failure for this reason. And John Brown, like, you know, Nat Turner was a religious fanatic. So was John Brown. John Brown was just like Nat Turner. He was convinced he was a vessel of God and slavery was an abomination, which it was, but most people yeah. didn't believe it. It was Frederick Douglass, right? That was like, nah, nah, dude. <laughs> it's too much. <laughs> No, John, you're weed too bad. You're, you're weed too strong, John Brown. You're bitch too bad. They'll kill you. Dude, you are going to die, is what he said, which he did. Except some point to his um, execution as the, the like, arbiter of the, the, the Civil War. If it was that degree of abomination right. that you're going to give your life for it, okay? John met him in the 1840s with his plan, and Douglas said, that's an insane idea. You'll die. So along comes uh, Frederick Douglass, and he says, you know, there's a straight arrow line from John Brown to the Civil War. Now, yeah, okay, Norm. God, I fucking love Norm so much. He's so crazy, but like... Turner, John Brown... Civil War. Now, I know I leave out a lot of other factors, yeah. but it was a way station to the Civil War. And now Nat Turner occupies an honored place in American history. Yeah. The thing is, dude, listen, listen, listen. The thing is, sometimes people just need to be shown that it is permissible. Okay? Sometimes people need to be shown that it is allowed or that people are willing to take the fucking initiative. That's what is important. I think that's what Norm is showing too here. Like these, these actions that might on its face come across as like tactical errors, who knows what kind of positive outcomes they may yield. So I say... I know people won't like it when I say it, but I think it's a question mark how October 7th is going to be regarded so, in so the future. If Nat Turner now occupies an honored place, I think it's a question mark. Um, and, and I think part of that will depend on Israel's response and continued mm -hmm. response. I mean, what do you think, given all the destruction, all the death mm -hmm. of people and the physical environment, what do you think Netanyahu's ultimate end game is here? The goal is, uh, 
at one end of a spectrum, and the spectrum bleeds into each point, bleeds into each other. At one end is the ethnic cleansing, to just get rid of them, do what they did in 1948, and put an end to this uh, Gaza problem. But is that a realistic vision? I mean, I understand the idea of saying we're going to have civil and governmental mm -hmm. control over Gaza. We're going to maybe reinstall settlements as the pre-2006 mm -hmm. time. I doubt that. Right, but, but it seems equally doubtful that they could depopulate well, the entire I, I, strip. Okay, let's remember, uh, time moves quickly. The first two weeks, it looked like, or they believed, that they were going to be able to expel the population to the Sinai. But at that point, Egypt made a firm decision, they're not coming in. Yeah. So one goal was the ethnic cleansing, but I agree with you, after two weeks it seemed less plausible. No, it still might happen, we don't know, you know, the pressures that will be exerted on CC. Uh, number two, the sort of middle position was the one that was advocated by Giora Island. Uh, the former head of the National Security Council, he said, we'll give them two choices, stay and starve or leave. Mm. In other words, make Gaza uninhabitable. And then the other the extreme position was to just carry out, you know, a destruction of Amalek to just wipe out the population in a kind of unnuanced uh, genocide. Yeah. So I think those are the three positions and what, what will come of it. What do you think is most likely to come of it? Um, what's most likely, I think... Uh, because President Biden is having trouble with that or a large part of that Democratic base, I think the Gallup poll showed that only 19% of Democrats supported what Israel is doing. Yeah. Uh, I think the pressures exerted by uh, Biden will become unbearable for Israel. Uh, and in the United States... Does, what, is that, what is that unbearable? Will it be another profiling courage like we saw at the Security Council where they just abstained? No, look, if the United States wanted to stop it, from day one it could have stopped it. You just pick up the phone and say, no more veto, no more weapons, uh, it's over. And it's over, there's, there's no question about Is that. Is that possible as a, as, as a practical matter given mm -hmm. this special relationship that right. the US has had since the 60s? Well, it's, it's, uh, it's possible, the question is uh, the political will. And right now, President Biden is balancing the, uh, what they consider. Was Nat Turner based? I don't know, do you think slavery was based? to be their security interest. Because, you know, what happened October 7th was a blow for the United States security also. Because the United States has invested a lot in Israel as a regional power and, and able to be a regional arbiter. Let, let me pause you on that for a second, because I spoke the other day to uh, Professor Mearsheimer, mm -hmm. uh, who said that it's a myth that uh, there's still a strategic and tactical interest for the United States to support Israel. Mm -hmm. That may have once been the case, but it's not anymore. All uh, right, look, uh, John... Look at this guy. I don't know, do you think the al Qassam brigades are based then? I don't know. Do you think Israel's genocide is based? Because the same energy you have can be carried over in this exact same conversation. Like, I don't know why you think this is a gotcha. It's the same principle behind the, uh, the, the uh, Haitian Revolution. Okay? I can't believe you would try to fucking sit here and, and, and advocate. The point is, the point is, when all is said and done, and nobody's talking about fucking the ANC and their practices of terrorism, and everyone celebrates their final political goal of the eradication of the South African apartheid as an objective good. Because the much greater evil here is the apartheid. The much greater evil here is the Israeli genocide of Palestinians. Things that people do in opposition to that, well, if their project succeeds and it is completely destroyed... Things that, people have, things that people have done in opposition to that are always praised later down the line. Tom Mearsheimer is a good friend of mine. I like him. Uh, <laughs> but? We don't agree. I mean, people, are, you know, people are, uh, can agree to disagree. I, I don't agree on that point. I think the important thing to understand about Israel is Israel is very much like a Western society. It has the same kind of uh, bureaucracy, rationality, uh, modern outlook uh, that makes it very easy for the U.S. to communicate with Israel. And communication is not an, a trivial part. The security people, the intelligence people, they all have the same mental outlook. 
And so that's an irreplaceable factor for the U.S. to have a uh, what's sometimes called a stationary aircraft carrier in, in the Middle East. Where An unsinkable the whole, one. Uh, mental outlook is held in common. Also, it's still by far the most militarily competent. I'm, I'm not saying it's great. Um, it took a hit I, reputationally yeah, as well. It took a very big hit reputationally. And I don't think that was an accident. The, the rot has set in in Israeli society. It's become westernized. And that means there's an element of slovenliness to the way they, carry, they conduct themselves. You said you watched. Oh, um, this is actually an interesting point. The debate I had. Yes, you're. This is actually an interesting point that he just brought up. The rod has been said in Israeli society, they become westernized, is actually also correct. When Israel was doing the Nakba before Israel, it was people that had a shit ton of experience fighting in wars that had nothing to lose. Okay? You had World War II veterans. You know what I mean? Obviously, they were still going up against, like, people who did not have a lot of experience fighting, mostly villagers. And from that point on, all the way until even 1967, um, a lot of the, the Israeli brigades were, uh, were, were still very much coming from war-torn regions, people that have even been pogromed, people that, uh, people that had a lot of experience... I think it was with Felix that I was talking about this, like um, the idea, for example, that um, the idea, for example, that like the Israeli spy apparatus was better early on because many of the Israelis were not, uh, I guess, like westernized, but they were still like very much first generation from Arab countries. So they could actually, like, you know, they could actually blend in very well. Um, the very fact that when you hear, for example, when they try to do, like, fake telephone conversations, like, you can just hear the dude is not, uh, uh, like, a Palestinian. Oh, I think I was talking to Noah Colwin about it. You're right. Maybe not Felix. Um, where, like, you can just kind of tell that that position of privilege and that position of complacency and comfort has basically made the the Israeli military uh, much worse overall, too. That arrogance and that hubris also led to October 7th. Your epic, almost five-hour debate with uh, Moeen well, uh, Rabani and uh, Benny Morris and... And something else. <laughs> yeah. D Destiny, uh, yeah. yes. Uh, and it was striking, at the very end of the debate, I said that Israel now faces a strategic uh, dilemma, a serious strategic dilemma. The dilemma is that a large number of people in the Arab world after October 7th suddenly came to the realization or the epiphany, hmm... Israel is not as strong as we thought it was, or Israel is not as invincible as we thought it was. Yeah. And yep. Benny Morris at that point, Professor Morris, very smart guy, he kind of had a nervous laugh. And he said, ah, oh, that's ridiculous. We have atomic bomb. We have nuclear weapons. Right. What was striking to me about that answer was he didn't say we have the IDF, we have the army. He had lost faith in it. Hmm. So now he had to talk about Damn. the deterrence of their nuclear weapons. So I don't believe that October 7th was a passing error, mistake, a moment of incompetence. It was a reflection of the fact that Israel no longer is what it once was. Now, of course... Are they going to flex their muscles, though, to prove that they actually do have capacity? Well, that's what they're doing now. Goading, perhaps, Hezbollah. Uh, Obviously, we also have the Houthis in, in, in the Red Sea who, mm -hmm. with their uh, sea blockade, and we also have the Hamas issue. I mean, there's, there's, a, there's a thought here that to show that they're yeah, still right. invincible. I, I think that's a very big problem there. Yeah. I think the problem is that Israel has one of its central military concepts. This is what it calls its deterrence capability. And deterrence capability is just a fancy term for the Arab world's fear of us. And they are very worried now that the Arab world...
Arab leaders aren't angels, though. They share the same accountability with the USA and EU. Bro. I'm not talking about the rest of the Arab world, okay? Because of what happened on October 7th, no longer fears them. And so one of the reasons for what's been happening is, in their language, to restore their deterrence capacity. And that does seem to include... If they had any fucking balls, so they do a I fraction of what the Yemen far, uh, population has done from with the far less. Of what began on October 7th, and it could take forms which will or at be least apply a real political pressure. Maybe a global catastrophe. Professor Frankelstein, thanks so much for joining me on the front. It's You're a pleasure talking to you. That was such a fever dream when I watched it this morning. You've said the exact same thing Norman Mark discussed for the past six months and years when you covered this occupation, bar per puck and bar. We're on the right side of history. Yeah, I mean, there's a reason why I love Norm. Dude, the secret 8200 commander being exposed story is so fucking funny. The whole story is that his secret identity was exposed as he was tracked through his book, but dude is so bad. You can literally Google his name, file type, XLSX, and you find government documents saying... 8200 Commander Yossi Sariel, a true titan of intel. Yeah, I love those blunders, dude. Are you talking about the Gulf states only, right? Not the whole Arab world? Yeah, I'm talking about... I'm not even talking about the people that live in the Gulf states, chatters. I'm talking about the leadership. What do you mean? Why did you say that about the Arab world? Many leaders in the Arab world and, and the Muslim world across the board as a whole, including Turkey, are fucking cowards. They're morally bankrupt cowards. Okay? That's it. They just talk the talk, but they never walk the walk. There was one, there were a couple different things I wanted to talk about. Really quickly, I'm going to blow through them. Biden White House close to finalizing menthol cigarette ban in the face of major pushback. That's awesome. Also, this take that I think is bad. My speech at the Palestine National uh, uh, Palestine Central Nation Affairs Correspondence today in Yemen. Thank you for His Excellency Prime Minister Professor Abdul Aziz bin Habtour of Yemen for inviting me to speak. Here is Jackson Hinkledink, former Hassanabi head, uh, MAGA communist grifter, talking to Ansar Allah. Hinkledink, obviously, former 48-month Tier 3 subscriber, Jackson Hinkledink. <clears throat> so, here's the thing. You're literally front row, bro. Yeah, I'm right there. So, the reason why mute Q Jesus, man. Wait, what? Everybody mad at this needs to be mad at themselves. The Western left is so vacuous and disorganized that Hinkle is filling the void you left behind. It's so stupid. I'm sorry. I completely disagree with that. He's a grifter. This is what he does best. He knows exactly how to fucking infiltrate these kinds of circles and present himself as an unconditional ally. What do you think? Like, there aren't people on the left who are even more popular than he is, let's be real, that have been advocating for uh, uh, Palestinian emancipation? No. <laughs> I mean, I, I literally fucking... I in. I interviewed a dude, a, a TikToker from Yemen, fairly early on. It's not that. It's just that he's the he, he is very good at infiltrating these circles. That's it. I don't think this is like because the left is vacuous or whatever the fuck. So I disagree with that. I'm also not shocked that it happened, though. Because, you know, his whole shit is just like boosting his profile by uh, latching on to what he considers to be uh, popular causes. Yemen actually invited you first. <clears throat> Oh, 
Also saying the left is so vacuous and in shambles is like very seriously anti-materialist thinking. You know what I mean? Like thinking that the left is not vacuous or, or splintered as a consequence of like deliberate and very successful efforts of destroying any kind of leftist movement in a capitalist country, in the largest capitalist country. Um, wait, someone said, what makes you think he's a grifter? Uh, I don't know. Let's take a look. Here's an unrelated one minute and 49 second clip of Hinkle. I'm going to drop in here for no particular reason. It's a limit. It's like when you start flirting around with like Hitlerian stuff, you're going to kind of go down the path of faggots like that. You know, we okay. all know how it ended for Hitler. Um, okay. What, what do you mean? Well, I just don't think it's a good path to go down. Hitler, at the end of the war, he killed himself. He's a faggot. Allegedly. I mean, well, and he allegedly didn't burn the transgender institute because Nazis did, weren't all transgenders and gays, you know? I, I, I just think that it's... I don't think it's smart to flirt with that stuff. He's like... That's so weird, man. Wait, so you, you're saying Hitler was gay? A hundred percent. What the fuck? A hundred percent. They were all transgenders and gays. The Nazis? Yes. That's why they burned that Hirschfeld Institute, whatever it's called. They yeah, no, the Hirschfeld tried to start implementing transgenderism, and then they burned down, they burned his books, and they... No, the... the it's just like two guys that have uh, different opinions on the optics of defending Hitlerian politics here. Uh, the doctors within Hirschfeld said that it was burned down because the Nazis had all of their private information in the Institute because they were That's why they mental. burned it down. I thought they yes. burned it down because they were trying to start. The only source on record from within the hospital said they burned it because the Nazis were all going there. I mean, why would they not burn any other one in Germany? Why would they not attack? <laughs> this is so, I'm sorry. Okay. I gotta give him credit. This is the funniest and most creative way to like, I guess, do Holocaust slash Nazi denialism. It's something that I've never heard before. He's saying that the Nazis were all trans and gay. And that's why they burned the, the, uh, the, the largest, like, medical research uh, conducted globally at the time on um, trans people. <laughs> to cover up the evidence that they were all gay. <laughs> That's awesome. This is not an uncommon claim about the Nazis, the gay part. I've fucking had not heard this before. Yeah, by the way, it is pretty funny to be like, yeah, the Nazis were bad, not because of the Holocaust, but because they were fake and gay. Like, <laughs> like... <laughs> oh, the mind. Oh, that's so sick. Transvestigating Hitler. Yeah. I mean, that's not awesome, but I get what you're talking about. Maybe I'm super brain broken, but I do think that's very funny. Like, I don't know. I just, there, I've never, I've never heard. I mean, there were definitely gay Nazis, by the way. Yeah. Ernst Rom. But, like, it is, it is hilarious to think that, like, the worst part about the Nazi stuff is that they were, they were suspected of being gay. Like, that's the bad thing that they did. None, none of the other stuff. Trying to get people to stop being Nazi by telling them Hitler was woke. <laughs> oh, that's so awesome. No, you don't understand. He was vegan.
And that's gay as fuck. Okay? Think about that. Like, how does this happen? Where you are to the right of Adolf Hitler. Like, how are you like, no, 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 you don't understand. Like, I'm actually to the right of Adolf Hitler. He was fake and gay and a leftist. Back anything else. So you're saying Germany. Blitzkrieg was a bunch of fucking trannies? Come on. They it, lost. They lost. Uh, they were pretty damn close to taking over the... I can't believe that a bunch of trannies and gay people were being able to take over the world. Well, they're, they're radicals. They're insane. But they're also funded by Anglo-Saxons. And you should never underestimate that. I mean, look at the Ukrainian military today. They're sending women. They're sending trannies. Like, literally, spokeswoman, uh, spokesperson of the military is a tranny. And the Russian military is so... What is happening? What the fuck? What the absolute fuck is going on here? Dog, they always come up with the corniest race science. I followed Hinkle at the start when he was still your fan. I was there when he started becoming mega communist after the Russia invasion. He go full mode. He's the biggest grifter, but super manipulative. The sad part, he's going to even become bigger and more known. Shaking my head. I like that he's like, oh, no, it's no, not that I don't believe you that the Nazis were all trans. It's that I don't believe trans people can do the Blitzkrieg, which almost succeeded. <laughs> My dad was ethnically cleansed out of the West Bank in 1967. But if the guy's pro Palestine, I might have to switch sides. Yeah, so that's the thing. I do legitimately believe that this dude is like probably, he has to be like some, this has to be like some State Department trickery to like, make to the western world make it look like to the western world that he's like this is the the beacon of like leftist uh conversations or something like i just don't know i mean he was a op for russia for a while that part is actually true and then they dropped him i think i think hinkle is a malpanoid spanking cult member I don't know enough about him and I don't, uh-oh. You don't gotta show this, man. Listen. Listen. I have no defense for this. I don't, okay? I'm cooked, it's real, this is not a fucking meme. God, I wish it was a meme, but it's not. This motherfucker was doing top of the hour ad break jabase and shit in the chat. Like, that's how deep in the cut he was. Remember when you said the audience reflects the streamer? Yeah, I don't think he's an audience member now. I think he was probably fine back then with his takes. How did he become so well-known in the last three years? I don't know. Maybe because when you grift to the fucking right, they celebrate you unconditionally. Hello? He is a walking, talking, permanent 
proof of that fundamental thing that I bring up all the time. If you want to grift, you grift to the right, dumb fucks. You don't grift to the fucking left. Absolutely no one, absolutely no one fucking thinks that this guy's like a real leftist, okay? Yeah, he's, he's, his channel is no longer available. I think they banned him. <laughs> Maybe he heard that. He was a Jimmy Dore fan and he had, D, he had him on a lot. He left once you shit on Jimmy Dore. I remember this very well. Yeah, you guys might be more aware of what the fuck happened, but I suspect, yeah, it was maybe when I started shitting on Jimmy Dore. They banned him for spreading misinformation on Ukraine. Oh, that's funny. It all started with the Jimmy Dore forced to vote shit. He even debated Uncle Sam. Then it was all downhill. Oh, dude, that's so funny. Some people genuinely do think he's a serious individual slash real leftist. Yeah, dude, your uncle in like Indonesia, maybe. And then also the only other people who see him as a real leftist. He went on fresh and fat and lied and told him he knows you. Wait, what? Yet another case of a one-sided beef. Perm, so desperate for viewers, you're leeching off the Hasanabi Discord. Don't quit your day job, brother. Well, it turns out Gorbachev was wrong, okay? So who's really owned here? He did, he did quit his day job, and guess what happened? He, he's become very successful as a right-wing grifter. So sorry, Gorbachev. That's a L on you. Yeah, he was in the fucking Haas court and everything. This guy was like... Everyone who grifts to the left finds that the left has too many critical thinkers to make that happen. So after they cash and crash and burn, they have their why I left the left and they tack far right. Yeah. Not defending Jackson. He's a grifter, but you also don't consider a lot of people socialists like China, North Korea, and many large communist parties. Fuck Jackson. They're different kinds of socialists. Oh my God. I can't believe you would bring up China and North Korea alongside Jackson Hingle, dude, in a conversation. You're like, I'm not defending him, but also. Brother, I'm sorry. But like. Let's not do this about DPRK, especially. At least when it comes to China, I say, look. There's room for development. Who knows where it will go? I'm going to be critical. I'm still going to offer criticisms and also simultaneously defend things that are worthy of defending. But like, come on, dude, DPRK, like, bro. Bro, brother, uh, brother, brother. Brother, what's that, brother? Not the popular Korea, Hassan Abi even fought for it. Yeah, I did. I fought in the uh, northern side of the Korea wars. Biden voting chat posting about tankies. <laughs> is he the type of guy to try to talk sense into, like the ones you mentioned earlier? Or is he lost cause? No, he's 100% a lost cause because he never had a cause. His cause is him. And just like, Promoting and uplifting him, himself. Bro, look at this conversation that took place, my man. The hospital said they burned it because the Nazis were all going there. I mean, why would they not burn any other one in Germany? Why would they not attack anything else? Anyway. Your theory that Hinkle is a Fed not entirely unfounded. Jackson Hinkle attended big donor Republican meetups with some of the richest fascists in the U.S. and is likely a part of Tulsi Gabbard's U.S. Army PSYOP division, which can be found on her Wikipedia page. Seriously, 
You see an open Marxist lens become the second most viewed individual on person on Twitter. And your reaction is to cast them out of what you have nothing else going on. Yeah, dude. He's popping on Twitter. <laughs> I started watching you from one of his people. I won't admit who, but basically searching for grifters and ended up discovering I was actually, I was already watching the grifters after the realization I've been watching daily for years. Every single person, every single person that like attacked me from the left has now completely dropped the leftist shtick. Like almost every single person. Think about that. Like there were so many of these guys that were like former Bernie people that just like lost their minds, it seemed. So many of them that were like, Hassan, you're a fucking fake socialist, you fucking piece of shit. And then now they're all like straight up right wing. <laughs> You just don't understand the Jewish sphere. These people have more loyalty and dedication in a single drop of their spit than we have ever had. It's just true. Yeah, I mean, I know. Jewish defenders are pretty loyal. Can you explain the Bernie bro alt-right weirdo pipeline? I'm still confused by that. It's very simply described as... People who didn't do any of the reading, people who didn't understand the theory, people who didn't understand dialectical materialism, and people who simply thought, well, Bernie seems like an honest guy, and he's also an outsider, even though he's been in politics for a very long time. And that was very captivating for many, especially the, the, the policies that he was advocating for. Fucking who doesn't want health care? You know what I mean? So then, then they, like, they... They started getting increasingly frustrated with the inability to make changes in American politics because this was the first introduction into American politics in general. Some of us know that being a leftist is about taking L's permanently in perpetuity as like sometimes we marginally better uh, our, our own living conditions or the living conditions of others. That's what being a real leftist is about. Taking fucking L's over and over and over again and overcoming those odds and sometimes seeing a little bit of progress. That's just the fucking reality. But many people don't like that because that sucks. You want to feel like you're winning. So then a lot of these guys were like, how the fuck could Bernie lose? And that like broke their brains a little bit. And then they realized, um, then they realized like, well, okay, well, I kind of want to win. And these guys are outsiders on the other side too. <sighs> Why do you think Jimmy Dore is like a fucking relentless right winger now? Fascism is fool socialism because it is immaterial vibes based a distribution of wealth to the in group from their otherized group and they don't trust actual socialism. I think that too. Yeah. Solid analysis of some griff sprinkled in by them, of course. There's also obviously a shit ton. There's also obviously a shit ton of reactionary propaganda everywhere. So like, if you've been primed your whole goddamn life to believe this kind of shit. Okay. What is this? Okay. Okay. And when you say common good, we're talking about things that everyone uses. Yeah. Banks, oil, gas, electric, etc. versus. Yeah. I mean, like communism isn't out here to say like, if you make a phone, like we're going to, we're going to make these like a public commodity or like a toothbrush or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's not about that. Like that's Hassan Piker. That's Hassan <laughs> Piker's like, like, yes, we're going to have publicly produced yeah. toothbrushes or something like this guy's. So huh. That's weird. <laughs> Where did he say that when he was uh, doing top of the hour ad break debates in 2020? Such a faggot. So, <laughs> <laughs> but it's true. Bro, they're literally children. They get so giddy when someone says a slur. It's pretty funny. Hinkle sources actual ML theory. This content is no longer available.
Doesn't being this right wing limit your growth, though? Shouldn't you be more centrist State Department aligned with liberal facade to be successful? No. Because on independent rounds, one, it's much easier to grift to the right because you just say as unhinged shit that you can come up with and people will believe it as like that audience is getting more and more unhinged every day. And the it takes a lot of time and a lot of effort to go through the regular channels to become like a liberal uh, talking head. Because that area is the most esteemed position you can be in as a, as a commentator. Think about it this way. Many of these like New York Times editorial board guys were like journalists for years. They had to fucking suck dick for like 20, 30 years until they became this like esteemed, revered figure. It takes a long fucking time to get to that position. So right wing grifting is a shortcut, basically. Especially because there's a lot of right wing independent media outlets out there. And a lot of those right wing media independent outlets will also collaborate with like traditional media outlets. So you don't just go on fresh and fat. You get to go on Tucker Carlson, which I think he actually literally went on. Do you get it? This shit only happens in the US. I swear to God, you really have something in your water. It's not possible to explain every person. The left here in the Brazil go more and more to the left or stay center left with Lulis and shit. We have some trots now and them defending free speech and weapons with the Nazis, but nothing new under the sun. But still, they say they don't say they are Nazi now. Um, you have to remember another thing, though. Whatever happens in America will inevitably happen everywhere else politically. Yeah. Hinkle is for you what all the other people who became fascists because Felix never liked or replied their attempts on Riff uh, on Twitter are for Chapo. Yeah. <laughs> so what ends up happening is when you go on like right wing, when you go on the right wing slant and you start talking about how much you love Donald Trump, right? You go on these podcasts and then those podcasts inevitably lead you to go on Fox fucking news. Like the example I've always used is me versus Charlie Kirk. We started our careers around the same time. Charlie Kirk got famous because he wrote a fucking high school. Uh, like he, he wrote like for his high school newspaper or something. Or in high school, he wrote an article that was presented on Breitbart. Then he went to all of his daddy's like rich friends, rich Republican friends and was like, can I start a lobbying organization to lobby, get this, high school and college student elections? And then after that, he was on Fox News immediately. And over the course of a couple years, he went from, uh, you know, being, he went from having nothing to literally having Fox News appearances and a massive organization that was very fun, well funded. That still exists to this day, TPUSA. Donald Trump literally attended his events. Now, there is no alternative to that kind of trajectory on the actual left. Think about it. We start off around the same time. Barack Obama doesn't know who the fuck I am. He's not coming on to my fucking events. I don't ever get placements on MSNBC or CNN. Because... The right wing is slanted. They love hugging their... Yeah, I mean, he stole my 30 under 30 spot on fucking Forbes. Right wing loves funding independent uh, sources and also immediately elevating them. There is no such equivalent on the left. I mean, he'll never debate. You You guys got to talk to Haas. Um, excuse me. You went to your uncle and did the exact same thing as Charlie Kirk. Yeah, my uncle gave me millions of dollars. Red show. He'll never debate. He's, he's a true MAGA communist. He's the guy that started MAGA communism. Mm -hmm. 
he's got a big YouTube show and he's on kick and you know he'll no real communist that claims to be a communist like like uh, Hassan Piker will ever debate any of us because it counters with everything they've ever been told or taught or whatever. I mean, look at China. They ban uh, all gay stuff. They ban all LGBTQ media. They, in all these countries, communist countries, they ban... Literally the most famous woman in China is a trans woman. Like, straight up. What the fuck's he saying? They ban, uh, you know, gay ideology. They ban transgenderism. They ban trans sex surgeries. It I'm literally reading a Chinese gay web novel with you in the background as noise. Yeah, what does he have to say about Cuba? Cuba is so fucking woke socially. Like, literally more socially progressive. More socially progressive than fucking America is by wide-ass margins, too. Yes, but she also hosts a very traditional marriage show, kind of multifaceted, nuanced thing. Oh, no, I know. It's just like... Also, overall, like, social policies are literally completely fucking... The, the social policies are completely irrelevant. It's just... It's literally just distractions. Like, if you are actually interested in dialectical thinking... You should know that. You should literally be like, yeah, this social policy shit is just a simple distraction as capital owners fucking uh, uh, squeeze every ounce of fucking surplus labor value from you as we fight left and right when we should be united as workers. The fuck do you mean? But again, this guy's not a fucking socialist nor a communist. He's not anything. He's just a grifter. Like anybody that immediately goes, uh huh, what about social uh, safety net or not social safety nets? What about social policies in China? You know who says that? Liberals do, you dumb fuck. You're on the other side of that coin. You're literally doing the China is based for actually being anti-gay. Liberals are going, China sucks for being anti-gay. That's straight up two sides of the same fucking coin. Anyway. Communism is conservative at, at its core. It is, yeah. And it focuses on actually... <laughs> it is, yeah. So why don't you like it then, dumb fuck? It is, yeah. It's, it's conservative. Helping the working man. Like, what do I think the solution is to all this trans ideology being pushed in the United States right now? Mm. I mean, I think we have to look at... I think we have to look at... The Listen, bro, you can't take a position against HRT while you've done steroids, okay? Get the fuck out of here, bro. What do you mean? He's like, oh yeah, I hate, I hate trans ideology being pushed on us. Also, I did steroids, so now I look like I'm 37, even though I'm like 22. That's the other really funny part about Jackson Hinkledink is that he is like shockingly young for how insanely old he looks. He is shockingly young. The Soviet Union did. We have a lot of, you know, uh, land in Alaska that could be turned into who knows what. And uh, people could be sent there if they're pushing this stuff on children. I think it's sick and criminal. <laughs> send them to Alaska with the polar bears. Oh, yeah. Like, <laughs> bring, bring your inner. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, I like it. Yeah. So, um, and Hassan, I think he, does he identify as more of like a socialist or? Same thing. So, say, okay. Yeah. You would say it's the same thing. Um, Okay. Okay. So, so you would say communism and socialism is essentially the same thing. Yeah. Okay. No, Maybe no he difference. calls himself like a social democrat or something. People like make fun of him, call him a uh, a champagne socialist. <laughs> yeah. Well, it, the, the I think the reason why is because he's just such a faggot, and all he does, <laughs> <laughs> all he does is just sit around and he watches like uh, he watches OnlyFans girls and stuff. Like he he brings on all these ugly like. Yeah. Me on the other hand, dude. I'm fucking hanging out with dudes who definitely don't bring on OnlyFans girls onto their broadcast. <laughs> Bro, not an ounce of self-reflection from either of these guys, by the way. <laughs> anyway, let's continue. Like what else he on his show and he has ugly whores on his show. Oh, okay. 
That's pretty funny. You know, they just like sit around and talk about how they're doing OnlyFans later or something. Yeah. That's all he talks about. He gets the views, honestly. He does get the views, but he's dying off. I mean, no one wants to see a grown man with painted fingernails, you know, talking with OnlyFans girls. That's that's not it. <laughs> That's not it. You should have him, bro. I'd love to. I'd love to. What but if we set it, it up here? I mean, that'd be crazy, but he'll never do it. Yeah, he won't do it. Oh, he's he'll a coward. He, he won't do it. He's he'll scared. Do it. He's scared. He, I'm yeah, scared. He won't do it. Uh, do I told, it. I had a, I, I'm, I'm, I'm terrified of the profound intellect that these guys bring to the table. I told him I'd be happy to debate dating dynamics with him because he just doesn't understand what the fuck the world is like. Yeah, dude, I don't. I don't understand dating dynamics. Well, good thing, good thing Ethan did debate him and then demonstrated that he is a uh, abject failure on those dynamics. <laughs> like now when it comes to dealing with women uh, in the West. You know, uh, and yeah. You know what's interesting? He's the one Remember, yes, this guy knows what a Dankies is, okay? Just don't forget that. He has typed it in the chat. That man has typed Dankies, ad break Dankies in the chat. And now he's over here being like, Hassan is a F word. Your lovely daughter dropped her bone on the floor and she can't get it because she won't get off the bed. Yeah, but she's sleeping right now. When she wakes up, we'll give her the bone. And I started talking shit first. It wasn't even us. I'll never forget. I got started. I got him called Demo. I said, yo, bro, debate fresh and fit. Ooh. He started it too. Him and yeah. fucking Ethan. This is so sick. They just completely live in their own. By the way, it hasn't been translated, but the Israeli government defense in court was pretty funny in a twisted way. Their main argument was basically that in contradiction with everything they've said to the Israeli public since January, they actually don't control the north of Gaza. And so have no responsibilities. Like they had to go, nah, Hamas has that shit. Sorry. I, I feel like that'll blow up in their face further though. Am I crazy? Like imagine if I'm like, oh, there's no three minute ad break at the top of the hour. And then I just serve it to you without telling you. You're going to be like, what the fuck? There was a three minute ad break at the top of the hour. Uh. And there is one. Now, of course, you don't have to. You don't have to see the three minute ad break. All you need to do is subscribe for five dollars or for free. Wasn't there a time you tried to shoehorn in a debate while you two, while you were talking to academics? Yeah, and I fucking, I lit, I dog walked him. Anyway, yeah, this is a this ad break transition would have been loved by Jackson Hinkle a couple years ago. You know what I mean? <laughs> oh. Hinkle Dink would have been spamming Dankies in the chat. Remember the memories. Here's the three minute ad break now. The decline. But yeah. sorry, what were you saying, Jackson? Yeah. Uh, the thing with all these guys. So, Hassan Piker, uh, uh, Stephen O'Bonnell, Destiny, whatever the fuck his name is. They're dating women. <clears throat> First of all, Stephen, Destiny, and uh, Hassan. They sit here and they they come on your show. They they come on my show and they say, Jackson, you know your politics are all wrong. You should focus on this. You you got it all wrong. It's like, why don't you get your? Why is he why is he fantasizing about us having conversations? Also, I thought I was dating men. Am I gay or am I dating women? What's happening? Well, I am dating women. Your mom. And we're both very disappointed in you, Jackson. Your own house in order. You know, <laughs> your wife, your girlfriend is getting fucked by other men right now, and you're oh, gonna shit. try to tell me. <laughs> you're gonna Okay, I think that's more of a diss on um O'Bungler. Try to tell me that I'm wrong about something. <laughs> your girlfriend's across town getting fucked by some other dude. BBC okay. <laughs> what the fuck? Get out of here. You have you you guys as Ms. Take rings true, if it's honest so bad, why do you have to make a shit up about him? Yeah. You've <laughs> debated Destiny before on politics? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Twice. Oh, shit. Well, yeah. Uh, what, what, what was his stance? Um, I think it was it was recent, so they were both they were both about Ukraine. But I mean I'd be okay. happy to debate anything with him. I mean yeah. yeah. I mean But again, it's like, yeah, we can debate. But get your own house in order. Get, you know, the guy's dick out of your wife. You know, it's like, <laughs> oh my it's God. sick. It's sick. Find God.
awesome. I mean, I'm here for the I'm here for the Bonarelli slander. Hinkle got cooked by Jonah Hill. I know. Did you hear about what happened to that guy fresh? Bro's gonna be a dad and try to talk his ex into getting an abortion. Yeah, I heard. I don't know if it's like uh, real or not. Interesting. He didn't use the cuck jokes to Sneeko. Yeah, because he was trying to get him to not be a Hitler supporter and, and be a supporter of something like Hitler plus, I guess. Like... Hitler, but not gay. <laughs> he's like, listen, Sneeko, you got to stop with this Hitler stuff because he's gay. You need like a new hero that's it's just like Hitler, but not gay, but straight instead. I mean, dude, that kind of stuff is fascinating. Honestly, I'm not gonna lie. There is like a lot of maybe it's because I'm so brain broken. Nico, another ex Hasanabi head, by the way. I don't know what the fuck is. What is wrong with these motherfuckers, man? Why do I have so many one sided beefs with people? I don't even know. Like, half the time, I, I only learn about this afterwards. Just like, it makes me sad. Makes me sad. Could have saved them. Let me touch a little bit of this CIA money. They are mad, bro. And they use your name for clout, big dog. No, I mean. Uh, anyway, all right. Nancy Pelosi is among 40 House Democrats urging Biden to halt pending weapons trains for the Israel and condition future military aid after Israel killed seven World Central Kitchen workers in Gaza. We're through the looking uh, we're through the looking glass regarding US Israel ties. Did you see Bonarelli admitted that he only hates Arabs because he got cucked by an Arab streamer? Literally said that he sat in a cuck chair and watched his wife get piped for days on end. Wait, what? The fuck are you talking about? What? That's fake, right? I don't think that's real. He was probably fucking joking. Why are you guys like this? If you see it, no. If you see it on a fucking... If it's a schizzarella post, it's a joke. I mean, it doesn't really matter because people take it seriously and they do legitimately think he got fucked by, uh, uh, you know, by an Arab man. And that's why he's like uh, anti-Arab or whatever. But like, you guys should know better. You guys should know better. But also, I don't know. I mean, I don't really give a shit. Yeah, if you believe it, if you believe it, you believe it. Who cares? It's fake. Yesterday, you said he's just going to try to spread these things so we can be a cloud of mystery about anything against them. Yeah, that'll backfire, though, because people hate him. And when people hate you, they are primed to believing anything and everything about you. Of course, hating him is good, objectively, because he is a bad person. So that's good. Um... But I don't think he understands. Like, that bait is just ammo. Because people don't give a fuck. It's like people thinking I fly private jets and have, like, supercars and shit. Sean the Black said people keep spending more time hate watching D and it's a problem. I don't know if it's necessarily a problem. I think, like, um, a lot of people, the more people hate watch him, the more people clip him. Not even out of context, but in context. The more people post those clips... The more other people see how fucking unhinged he actually is and how gross he actually is. And the more he has to deal with it over and over again and try to debate, which will then inevitably turn into him debating shit like the ethics of pedophilia or the ethics of lowering the age of consent. And then there are even more people who go, oh my God, this dude's fucking unhinged. Unfortunately, the same amount of people will see it and agree. Eh, not really. Ah. <sighs> 
Do you think this Ben Shapiro Candace Owens debate will actually happen? No. But yeah, I saw this shit. The Fresh and Fit podcast. Host. The baby, because I don't want to kill the baby. I don't want to kill nobody. I don't want to. You're not. They just give you a pill and it's over. No. No. Bro, how did they get this fucking call leaked? I'm pregnant. No, but that's what I'm saying. The pill, they just give it to you from a doctor and then you're good. I am pregnant. I can't pretending like nothing happened. I can't. In my religion, we don't. Wait, aren't these guys like anti-abortion? Like publicly? Is this fake? It feels fake. Sounds like she recorded it, judging by the call quality on both ends. Yeah, it does seem like she recorded it. Don't kill. You're not killing. Okay. I want to keep the baby. Okay, well, like I said, I just don't want any kids. You know? Okay, so what you gonna do? And what you gonna do to me? When I saw the video, I went to her IG and she was live saying she's a Buddhist and anti-abortion. Most anti-abortion people are pro-abortion when they fuck someone that isn't their wife. I mean, yeah, we know that already, but it is pretty funny that this would be a, like, I mean, I don't know. I don't fucking know. We doing drama today. I mean, this is pretty funny. Who cares? Uh, Abba and Preach did a video. She recorded it and posted it on her socials. Nothing. Oh, my God. Well, why did I do anything to you? Nothing. Well, why did I do anything to you? No, I know. So, like, how are you going to deal with this? By by saying, I don't want a baby? That's all? I mean... Because of to the doctor, I guess. To the doctor. So you want a abortion? I mean, yeah. Why do you want a kid now? And why do you make me pregnant now? That's something like, there's no way that that's true. But then it's like, oh, wow. Like. So just think about it. It's mean to be. God Sorry? wants. To, God wants you to have the baby. Definitely not. It is. I'm gonna be honest, they're having a mid off. Like, this is so fucking stupid. I mean, I'm categorically on her side because I think it's very funny that this guy got jammed up in this situation. And like, but very clearly, she's not exactly a good person, okay? That's awesome. He baby trapped. I mean, she baby trapped him. <laughs> That's dope. Yeah, she about to get that child support, baby. These guys don't have any money, though. That's the funny part. How the fuck is he going to pay for child support? Not that it matters. The court doesn't give a shit. D debated her yesterday, called her subhuman trash. Yeah, dude. It, in this conversation, I think they're both. Okay. I'm looking at her picture and I'm struggling to find the problem. That's so funny. Oh, wow. You mean to tell me destiny was against the woman in that conversation? That's so shocking. <laughs> Wait, what? That's crazy. I mean, I'm not even siding with her, but it is pretty funny. Also, why the fuck do you guys know who fucking divorce is debating every day? <laughs> he debated the baby. <laughs> Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> he did the, the baby, so the baby kills himself. <laughs> God wants you to have a baby. Seven years never happened. And then you're, relate, in a relate, you're fucking me for a month and I'm pregnant. What does that mean? Well, like, it, now you know, I just think about if, like, if you force me to kill the baby, then you're a sin. Well, we already said about having sex, but it's too late now, you know? 
But honestly, who's this girl? Um, I mean, he, he's got a point. I can't believe she got owned by the dumbest guy on the planet. Bro, this guy is like clinically. This guy is medically not allowed to drive cars and shit. Like, that's how fucking stupid he is. And he just owned her in the marketplace of ideas by being like, well, we already sinned. We fucked. Why is she a bad person? For having sexual intercourse with this guy. There. Is that is there more you need to know about? That tells me everything. I'm sorry if you fuck that gremlin, you're not a good person. There is no world in which that's a good person. No. Uh. What did you say? Slut shaming? That's not slut shaming, dude. That's dumb fuck shaming. I don't have any issue with people being slutty. You're the one calling her a slut. That's a shitty take. No, I'm sorry. You guys are fucking straight up unironically the meme that everyone says about the left which is like no women have no capacity to do wrong things or bad things okay get the fuck out of here dude maybe she's uncontrollably horny come on dude oh my god chat literally is doing the thing where it's like no i support all women across the board in every story like i i my support still hinges on the side of her because it you know i don't like this guy at all but that doesn't mean i'm going to fucking yeah, it, it, it doesn't mean I'm going to actually fucking sit here and be like, yeah, no, this person who's like recording phone conversations very clearly fucking farmed this dude for uh, child support money because she baby trapped him uh, is, is like a good person who definitely just had honest intentions. Come on, man. Think. 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 Exercise a little bit of this. She's just the girl. Dot, dot, dot. Literally just the girl. Like, I don't think that... I, I, I'm not in the business. Yeah, baby trapping, pretty misogynistic. Please, explain to me what you think is going on here. Do you think she was like, I fell in love with you. I want to have this child with you. Getting pregnant is a consequence of sex, bro. Yeah, she wants to keep it. That's the point. It's not like she wants to get an abortion and her fucking boyfriend is stopping her from getting an abortion. If she wants to keep the baby, she can keep the fucking baby. If she wants, it's great. But the reality of the situation is a little bit different. I don't think she has good intentions here. They are both responsible. She's taking advantage of a bad guy. No, exactly. Which is why I think it's funny and, uh, and, and I'm on board, you know, with her cause. But I'm not going to sit here and be like, no, she just... Oh, no. Like, she's just a good person who definitely had all the best intentions. Like, she fucked this guy, dude. Get the fuck out of here. That's not a trap, bro. He slept with her consensually. No, the trap part is when you're like, no, I'm going to keep the fucking baby. I don't give a shit. You have to pay me now. Why? Because it's a fucking sin. <laughs> nah, get fucked. <laughs> oh... Is this you negging her, lol? Ay, ay, ay. There's like 11 different things that this person... Uh, 11 different red flags here. One, she had sex with him, okay? Like, she was in his vicinity. And it wasn't for money either, by the way, which is crazy. 
Okay. Number two, dumb enough to think that he has money that is going to come her way regardless. Um, the only time she isn't a bad person is she's a sex worker and got paid to have sex with him. Sure. But also, like, let's be real. Most likely would get an abortion if she's a sex worker and wouldn't be like, I'm actually religious and therefore I have to keep this baby. You are the meme that libs love abortions. I mean, I do love abortions. Yes, it's called fucking allowing women to have bodily autonomy. She has the bodily autonomy here too. If she wants to keep the baby, she can't. But like, you know, probably not wise. She was saying that she did fall in love with him. She moved here from China, not knowing about a show, met him, got into a relationship, got love bombed. She knocked him up and found out after they broke up. She explained it in an interview yesterday. <laughs> Maybe it's real. I don't know. That's fucking funny. <sighs> oh. <laughs> something is not making sense here but it is pretty funny it almost feels like she reverse passport bro him and he's like a passport bro isn't he oh my god that's so sick respect dude that's what i'm talking about immigrants on the come up okay i'm fully on our side now i take it back Um, read this article with quotes from her. She got his ass, Lamau. Pressure Fit Podcast host who preached about the importance of fathers asked his girlfriend to get an abortion. Walter Weeks. His name is Walter? Oh my God. Oh my God. <laughs> uh, known as Fresh Prince CEO or Fresh is Slam for reportedly asking his girlfriend, uh, Daisy, to get an abortion. And now people are asking if he's going to take accountability for his actions. Amru Fudel, who goes by Myron Gaines or Fit, is the author of Why Women Deserve Less. <laughs> uh, So-called red pill man from Fresh and Fit wants his girl to have an abortion with his baby. Here's the leaked call. In other screenshots, Fresh reported tells... Fresh reportedly tells Daisy to bring it up a kid in this world without both parents. Love is cruel. Yet he often speaks about how fatherhood is important to a child's development. I suppose. So you guys understand why I, I, I think this is ridiculous, right? Like, because I don't think abortion is like a sin for the record, which is why if I thought abortion was a sin, I'd be like, dude, what the fuck are you doing? Why aren't you taking care of this child? This is your responsibility. I, on the other hand, don't think abortion is a sin. It's fucking ridiculous. So just understand that is a big part of this conversation i not only think abortion is not a sin but i also don't think that she thinks abortion is a sin either let's be real i don't think that that part is real either anyway <laughs> you're a bad person picking on the impaired leave this poor blind woman alone oh come on <laughs> blind deaf she was that fucking Helen Keller. She had the Helen Keller thing. Blind, deaf, can't talk. She must have had all of that. Come on now. You wrong for that? She fucked him. <laughs> uh, in other screenshots, Fresh reportedly tells Daisy that bringing a kid in this world without both parents is you know, can't smell. Red pill L's. Fresh from Fresh and Fit exposed for encouraging... Girlfriend Daisy to abort their baby. This from the women are allergic to accountability crowd. Surprise, surprise. You always told me you wanted me to be your baby's mother. I loved you and I did everything to be a good girlfriend. Now this is happening. You walked away. I think I want to keep the baby. I don't want to kill alive. I want you to think carefully and take the responsibility. I will call you shortly. Take your time. I can't have kids. Take responsibility for your actions. What's this? Read it. Blood test. Pregnancy blood test. I know, but what does it mean? I don't understand the numbers. Three to four weeks, doctor says. Oh, okay. It's our baby, and you want to kill our baby. You are not being a good human. Oh, no. 
Being a shitty person isn't an STD. It's not like he pumped bad vibes into her. No, but he's such a shitty person that I don't think that a good person is like, yeah, I'm going to have sex with this guy and fall in love with him. That's my point. Do you get, do you get what I'm saying? Do you understand? Like at a certain point, there is a level of accountability to, that we need to ascribe to adults. Okay. This is an adult woman. Not every woman is, is, is supposed to be infantilized to every step, to every fucking degree. <laughs> okay. I'm sorry. She literally fucked one of the worst dudes that she could have fucked. That's crazy. Get a fucking abortion. What's wrong with you? Why are you trying to bring his, why are you trying to bring his spawn into this planet to begin with? Okay. You are not being a good human. It's not about right now. It's not about that right now. It's not good. And a lot is happening, especially now business may be over. <laughs> He's broke. I don't want kids right now. And we spoke about it and you agreed. I never agreed. I agreed based on your actions. He was coming inside of her. God damn, broke boy. What the fuck are you doing? And you are not educated. If you keep come inside on me, I will get pregnant. I don't get pregnant without your behave. Words mean nothing. Man up. I'm not saying I want to be with you. I don't because you are nothing to me, but the baby is innocent. <laughs> you should have a kid with someone you are in love. You are with love in, in the same household. It won't be what you expect. Man up. I'm telling you now. So, you know, I don't expect anything anymore since we are not together. I got pregnant with you when I was in your house and when I was in love. You wanted to have the baby. If you didn't, you did come in me with your own pleasure. Be logic and be a man. I don't get pregnant by myself. It's not fair for the baby. Okay. Okay. I, I love her. Everything that she writes in this, I love her more and more. Okay. <laughs> You come in me. Be a man. It's so good. Oh, it's poetry. <laughs> oh. <laughs> she said, it's science. I can't have a baby on my own. It's science. <laughs> what? are you saying we are not together and won't be why would that be good for a kid so why did you keep come inside me no no oh why did you keep come inside of me? I love the ESL barrier here, making it so much funnier. <laughs> also, things happening. Yes, feelings change, but bringing a kid into this world without both parents' love is cruel. We both thought you wouldn't get pregnant. Wait, what? Why wouldn't they? <laughs> she didn't. Wait, what did? Wait, how, wait, where did this jump to? We both thought you wouldn't get pregnant. It was a joke. All I'm saying is your should take the responsibility for what you did. I'm a victim of this relationship and I'm carrying your babe. I'm carrying your babe. You act like you don't care and you don't want nothing. Also, now I'm worried I have the test for other girls, at least four. Wait, did he, did he cream pie her as a, as a meme for the ha-has? Like, I don't get it. Another girl, four girls. You are saying you have sex with four girls without protection. I hope you have all the money for your children's support. You finally admit you are a fucking, fucking trash. I don't have money. Good luck. Lol, you will see. Yo. Yo. This is a story between me and X Walter Weeks. The podcast are known as X Fresh IG YouTube ex fresh prince ceo i met him on november 1st in miami and fall love with him we spend new years together that's the time when he asked me to be his girl to commit to him and he posted a video of us on social media he said to me i love you i don't want you to be with other man a few days later double exclamation mark emoji 
He asked me to meet his mom. Everything went well. I showed him and his mom my respect. He defended me on his podcast from the rumors. That's the moment I truly fall in love with him. But this is where the game begin. <laughs> That's what she... she <laughs> Guys, if you defend your, your fuck buddy on your hyper misogynistic podcast, you will always have them fall in love with you. This is so much funnier because like ESL makes this better. Uh, honestly, it's like chef's kiss. <laughs> Especially why you leave coming me is like, that's awesome. Okay. I left Miami on January 8th, traveled back to China for New Year's, for Chinese New Year. The night before we had a serious conversation, exclamation mark emoji. He said he sees me like someone to spend the whole life with. And I told him I was going to move to Miami for him. From then we started a long distance relationship for two months. Red exclamation mark emoji. Until I traveled to Barbados, I met his entire family there. He, uh, serious with me. Therefore, I am not on both control and we had sexual behavior without protection. I was ready to have a baby with him and build a family. He asked me many times, what if you got pregnant? My answer towards him was always, yes, I want to keep the baby. I don't mind have a baby with you. Oh my God, our kids going to look like them. They're so cute. Lol, I knew you were typing me this. Blasian. Oh, she's cooking him. <laughs> now I'm in a strange country all alone. If I don't expose this, he will continue doing that to other naive girls. There will be more women get hurt. After a few days, remember yesterday when I said I don't give a fuck about Andrew Huberman's like sex capades? Now I care about podcasters and who they put their dick inside of. She straight up didn't trap him, Lamau. Yeah, it turns out, it turns out she was just straight up trying to have his child, which is still signaling major red flags make no mistake i am not moving from that position one inch the fact that she fell in love with this fucking asshole implies so many different red flags she literally said she fell in love with him because he defended her on his hyper hyper misogynistic red pill podcast <laughs> fucked up but she's a queen yeah no she is a queen Neither of these people should have children. Yeah, and want to leave fucking China for him? If she's having my baby, my ass is going to be in Beijing. That's what I'm saying, dude. Oh. Yeah, my position has changed a little bit. Critical support. Critical support for our uh, Chinese ally here. No, she did trap him. No one gets pregnant after four months in which you spend like three months apart. She even had a lawyer ready. Both awful people who should have no kids and their asses confiscated. She's a baddie, but her mindset is on another planet. Give her a little charity, Hassan. She literally didn't know what they were saying on the podcast. As obvious by her text-to-speech Animal Crossing emoji-ass way of writing. As a major woman defender, her defending him after seeing the podcast is kind of wow. She needs Chinese netizens to help her big time. Anyway. 
After a few days, he asked me to move out. He stopped coming home. He disappeared for three nights without explanation. I called him. He never answered. When I did nothing wrong, when I was so genuine, I left my work behind in China to pursuing this relationship. So I moved out, booked the first flight to New York City. On March 30th, I had a pregnancy test. It's positive. Here's what happened. He said on the phone, there's no reason to meet and discuss further. He refused to have an adult conversation in person. He asked me to take pills and deal with it alone. He doesn't even want to show up and be a real man and take responsibility under his behave. Now I'm warning all girls, stay away from this man. He is dishonest and a liar. Now I ask you, please stand by me and help me expose him in order to protect more women. I've suffered many days before I decided to tell everyone what happened. I needed, I need to help other girls to know his true color. And ladies, please protect yourself. That's pretty funny because it's like, yeah, I mean, protect yourself from this. Okay, maybe she is a bit of a baddie. Um, did you know Steven Crowder's first video on Israel, first video on YouTube was about Israel, go team Israel? Hey everyone, this is Steven Crowder. Happy New Year. God bless. Here's to praying that it's a great one. Um, firstly, let's talk about Israel and Palestine. Uh, or for the purposes of this video, um, Hamas. Thursday was the first uh, day of the wrath uh, waged against the nation of Israel. In case you didn't know, there was an official day of wrath waged against Israel um, on Hamas's part. What happened on this day? Israel kicked the crap out of them slightly more. Is that David Dobrik? Yeah. Check the date, by the way, before October 7th. Yeah. <laughs> Approximately almost 20 years before October 7th. Look at his face. God. Anyway. His voice hasn't changed pitch since then. Yeah. Okay. Um, this is a fun little story. Uh, I wish everybody involved the best possible outcome. Okay. Uh, don't know what else to say about this. <laughs> Good Lord, that baby going to be ugly. I think, I do think that she should get an abortion on principle in general. Like it's, it's not good. This is her TikTok. Holy moly. Travel with me from New York to Hong Kong. She bought her a gift. When you buy a gift for your boyfriend's mother. See what it is. Uh oh. What could it be? You like it, mommy? You like it, mommy? Very, <laughs> very good gift. There you go. She bought her a gift. You can tell Jesus that the bitch is back. You can. How oh, I love being a woman. <laughs> Every video I watch makes me support her more. When you got twin sandals with your boy mama. You can tell Jesus that the bitch is back.
What the fuck? Earth Queen Miami Beach? Oh, God, that looks so awful. Thinking it's his turn to green pie? Wait, what? No. No! <laughs> Unboxing my New Year's gift, Van Cleve and Arpels, Pearl Lake Clover's bracelet. <laughs> Best spots for pigs in Beverly Hills. I don't get it. Where does she get this money? Let's take a look at some of this cute stuff that just came from the Chanel store today. This is what Mao envisioned since day one. She's a model. What is she modeling? What it do, baby? I think you guys don't, you guys greatly misunderstand the modeling economy, I think, if you think that models are actually caked up. <laughs> Birthday girl, well spent in New York City. I answer my phone like, what's happening? What you saying? Like, you trying to get bags in? Five minutes, much I know that you're rattling. Yeah, push the bag. I am. Put your head on my sh. Put your head on my sh. Daddy, Daddy G Rax. <laughs> Yeah, he doesn't deserve her. Bro, we, we like if I keep watching these TikToks, there's going to be a chatter that steps up to be the father that stepped up. I know models with IMG and Elite and shit, and even they, even then, they're broke as hell and dog walking on the side and shit. Yeah, of course. Huh. Are you about to be the father that stepped up? Fuck no. No. Listen, I don't care about how many bodies someone has unless that body is fresh and fat. Okay. Then I do care because that to me signals genuine issues in your decision making process. Okay. Nope. Hell no, I can't fix her. None of you can. She said that she spent 50K on a bracelet for him. She got that G money. I mean, I, I am uh, offering critical support to her in this endeavor. Because it does seem like... Oh my gosh, she's jacked too. She's like a bodybuilder. Fresh and his Chinese ex, Daisy Chen. What the fuck is Kennedy News? Turns out he lied according to Daisy. He herded me. Wait. So to be clear, this is the second time a fresh and fit podcast bro has been caught getting woman pregnant and been begging her to abort. Media person like Connor Tomlinson wrote it on X. Influencers who have hijacked the manosphere only offer a shallow conception of masculinity. Real men take responsibility, exercise paternal authority, and are present fathers of their children. Talk all the shit you want, but Fresh and Fit has single-handedly saved more Western men's lives than any other podcast ever. Sure. How so? Tell him to bang 50 chicks and then what? You end up like fresh. Lol. Fucking owned, by the way. He posted. Talk all the shit. <laughs> Versus yet to respond to the allegations. Oh, that's so awesome.
If fresh and fit is saving your life, it's not worth saving. Yeah, dude. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. I still just cannot comprehend a world in which like a human being, like a fully grown up adult could fall in love with that dude. So I'm just still on the side of like, there's got to be some nefarious trickery going on here. That's it. Imagine being so transparently hypocritical. Women are allergic to taking accountability, but then begging your girl you repeatedly cream pie to get an abortion. Just say you hate women and move on. I mean, he does. And I think they do say that. That's why it's so funny when people are like, uh, um, he's so hypocritical. It's like, no, he just, he, when you realize that they and everyone that follows them just simply hate women, you will recognize that this like hypocrisy baiting is not going to work. I mean, it's funny. We all like it. We all think it's funny, but like, that's kind of their whole shtick. This is like actually not inconsistent at all with their worldview and the worldview that they basically fucking, um, the worldview that they basically fucking openly demonstrate on a daily basis. You know? Don't look in the replies. Major transvestigation is going on. Wait, what? The entire drama and the entire reason why they know who she is even is because she got pregnant. Do transvestigators think trans women can get pregnant now? Like, what's happening? The fuck? I thought that was like the one thing. They were always like, we can always tell. The we can always tell crowd always was like, well, you can't have a child. And neither can many cis women either, but like, it doesn't matter. But still, the fact that she has... The capability of, of having a child, like, I thought that was the one thing. Unless you mean they're transvestigating uh, uh, fresh and fat. <laughs> New breakthrough. <laughs> fresh is mpreg. Uh, oh, I forgot to cover this. Yeah, China has technology all the way up to pussy four. <laughs> I'll PayPal you ten dollars to close this moist video tab. Make it twenty dollars and I close it. I'm gonna keep it up right now. Deal. All right, that's how easy it is for me. Let's go, baby. Let's go, Weeby. Pay up, bitch. Rare Weeby W. Very rare. Woke blackface. Blackface in court is crazy. The Mark Char was wheeled into court today. What was supposed to be a routine sentencing hearing quickly went off the rails. The reason why I'm like this is because I prepared myself to play my part in your kangaroo court, treating me like a black man, so today I'm gonna to be a black man. Face. This kangaroo court is giving me a life sentence for me trying to protect and defend myself against the attack from three guys. In essence, treating me like a black man. What? What? What is going on? Dude, his attorney's just sitting there like, fuck, man. <laughs> his lawyer's like, look at my, look at my client, dog. I'm going to jail. <laughs> Only in the U.S. like shit like this happens? Bro, this ain't the U.S. Is it? This is Island News. Is KIT4 U.S.? 
Is it Hawaii? Yeah, this is literally like a... This is literally like a fucking come town bit. What is this? This white boy is coming for your title, the most swagged out white boy in the Los Angeles metro area? Go ahead, run your mouth, shit funny to me. Really, it's very simple. I call it the make no money disease, but it got every symptom. Huh? They go both ways in the color and truck, the dogs must hate each other. Damn, they like you and you famous, boy. Really don't make much difference. Huh? I really don't pay much money. End of the day, I'm the man still. Huh? I'm finna take what's mine. Hell no, I don't need your hand out. Huh? Just by huh? It was Hawaii. It was five years ago. Dude, he want to be Cardi so bad. But that bitch is a baby. Waters, he was playing with dolls. Everybody knew he was gay or going to be gay. We have to think about if this was happening in your family. And it happened in my family. We adopted a young child. And at age five, he was playing with dolls. And everybody knew he was gay or he was going to be gay. And it's not like all of a sudden we took him to the doctor and chopped him off. No one would ever do that. Well, a lot of these gay people, and trans Jessica, are different, and that's not how gay I don't works believe it either. is. I don't believe it is. Okay. A lot of these people are just gay or lesbian. And what they're doing is they're intervening. Woke. At least they're like, their hatred of trans people have caused them to, to at least like, Assume the position that it's like normal to be gay or trans. You know what I mean? I mean, not gay or trans, gay or lesbian. Woke! We're converting them. In a regular gay or <laughs> Great news, dude. They're now pro-gay. Yeah, literally. What the fuck? <laughs> lesbian life. And that's a new experience. And it never used to be like that. Somebody's on both sides. Oh, this is the other thing. Welcome to German leftist anti-fascist rap group, which just put out a song with lines such as surprise, even Greta hates Jews. Civilians in Gaza are the shield of Hamas, the shield of the descendants of Jew gazers. My dudes, you are the descendants of Jew gazers, bestie marks. Finally, something new from Germany's least genocidal left-wing hip-hop band. October in Europa, Antilopengang. Lied von Antilopengang. Sibilisten in Gaza sind Schutzschild der Hamas, Schutzschild der Nachbar der, Ju der Juden für Gaza, Schutzschild der sonst immer so mutigen. Nein! <laughs> Black people should gatekeep more. <laughs> This, you can't stop these guys, man. Still on hold. To my idea for an Antifa, especially against anti-Germans. Yo, I just heard the grandpa upstairs stand up after you said that. Dude, it's just funny. I love, I love reading German because there's just no way that it sounds not like Nazi shit. <laughs> they don't get it. They speak the language, so they don't understand. To us, outsiders, <laughs> it's like, bro, what are you saying? First of all, you should never say Juden, okay? As, as a language, as an entire language, you should just not ever say Jews in German. Because no matter what, it's like my ears perk up, okay? I hear that and I'm like, I know what that is. You said it. You could be saying, I love Jewish people in German. And it still sounds like you're saying, I want to put them in concentration camps. Because, you know, history. No matter what happens, sorry, just don't say it. It should be a no-no word for you.
It's true. It feels weird saying you didn't even being German. Yeah, don't do it. You're literally doing the Hitler accent anyways. There's a lot of different ways to speak German, like a hill gnome or some shit. Some lyrics translated. My taxi driver talks like a Nazi. I don't have any more discussions at parties. Friends have strong convictions. Hamas propaganda on house walls in Kreuzberg, which I like that chatter said majority Turkish slash Muslim neighborhood. Yeah, I know, bro. I know Kreuzberg. Osama would be a superstar on TikTok. God, German anti-fascists are so funny. They're like, they are the, the final evolution of like, they are the final. Someone said, don't say black then. <laughs> Good one, bro. It doesn't hit that way. Because if you're white, you need to be subscribed at the top of the hour. Oh, God damn it. This video is hilarious. How German sounds compared to other languages. Avion. Aeroplane. Aero. Avion. Flugzeug. Surprise. Surprise. Surpresa. Surpresa. Überraschung. Did you ever watch a video on left-wing terrorism? Yeah, you got me. You got me. Left-wing terrorism is when I get fucking owned by a chatter and get jabated at the top of the hour into serving you a three-minute ad break, which is happening now. I'm serving it to you. God fucking damn it. Here's the three-minute ad break now. Right wing YouTuber Tim Pool has raised over $1.3 million from super PAC donations. Pool laughed and said, people are just giving us money, to which Alex Jones replied, that's how it works, Tim. Yep. What is this? Read this one, please. Amerikaner, wenn das Eis keine mit Riesche Tone Rieses Peanut Butter Cups. Carmelis Sirius Choco Chips, Regenbogen Strusel und Oreo Crunchies enthält. I feel like he's making a good point though, but it still sounds crazy. Super chat, not pack. Yes. America's with the ice cream does not contain a metric ton of Reese's peanut butter cups, caramel syrup, chocolate chip, rainbow sprinkles, and Oreo crunchies. Yeah, see, he, he made a good point. Bro, guys, you have to stop. We're not doing any more fucking, like, uh, Israel-Palestine-related, news-related subjects, okay? We're doing fucking fun shit. Please, we've moved on. Logan Paul got scammed. Oh, I didn't even talk about fucking this thing. <laughs> And we have exploring St uh, Stalin's abandoned luxury resort when a routine eviction ends horribly. And we have world's weirdest barber cracks my neck. You got to let anti tweet with your account once. Okay, I didn't say that. I don't want to steal a good tweet. I would never delete that. Let's do Jebediah Cole. Can we compromise if Cole deletes this part of my delete later? He can keep the rest up. Cole casually dropping the worst bar of the decade. I'm seeing hints of a trans fella in cancel culture's vicinity. He's no killer. Trust me. Beneath his chosen identity, there's still a pussy, period. This is in the Kendrick disc, by the way. That's another song. Co-written by Tom McDonald? Wait, what? No, that's a joke. There ain't no fucking way, dude. People on the West Coast have like a strange sense of uh, like um, 
braggadociousness about earthquakes. Like when there's a, a 5.0 on the East Coast, people in LA are like, Psh, that's nothing. I don't even get out of bed for a, unless it's a fucking 7.2. I'm like, brother, we are going to fucking die one day. Can you show some decorum? We're gonna, we're gonna get killed. The big one is gonna hit. It's gonna be an eight plus on the Richter scale. The ground is gonna liquefy and we're gonna sink into the Pacific Ocean. Maybe we could show some respects to the earthquake instead of being like, that's not even a real earthquake. This shit's gonna be like fucking tragically ironic at some point. The people on the way. She's... Yeah, well, you know, one can only dream. He's talking about you, buddy. Listen, we are much closer to fucking dropping into the ocean than you guys are on the East Coast. March trying to get Sydney on fear and hey Sydney Sweeney. Good luck. It's not in the diss track, but it is a diss at Kendrick for having an uncle who's trans. You gotta show Yobu Yobushiki's reaction when he's offered a box with the general's head in it. Wait, why are you po why are you putting that in the chat? Don't upset the coal miners. They're gonna cry. They are mad sensitive. Have you seen the trans tweet about you? Transition timeline fit. Same fit four years later. <laughs> Oh, Jesus Christ. He's probably made a clip comp of you mentioning Sydney Sweeney's titties. I've never mentioned Sydney Sweeney's honkers, bazonkas. Please stop linking the fucking Tommy G most corrupt mayor in America video. Oh my God, I've literally scrolled, stopped it, and then moved on. Like, get, figure it out. Figure it out, man. Figure it the fuck out. People are actually calling Kendrick a bigot lol. They're having a bigot off? As a queer Kendrick fan, I know and fully understand the context. I still think there are better ways to convey your newfound understanding of LGBTQ people and your previous ignorant point of view. <sighs> Whatever. I'm not going to involve myself in this. We've already had this fucking conversation uh, uh, already, okay? I think comparing a pro trans acceptance song to like transphobic bars is kind of wild. Thank God people on Twitter are around to tell Kendrick Lamar how to write a song. I agree. This is why I only Stan Mac Lamar. Yeah, he's certainly never done problematic things like <laughs> dress up like a Jewish man. Like a cartoon of a Jewish man. I'm just glad my fave yay is unproblematic. True. Revised version, and I said some bad words. Yeah, once again, I stand here vindicated by history that right wing grifters make a shit ton more money.
Joaquin Phoenix, Elliot Gold, Coley Feynman, Chloe Feynman, and more Jewish creators support Jonathan Glazer's Oscar speech, by the way. Uh, Iana Glazer said, I signed this letter to help counter the climate of silencing that many workplaces and industries are facing around Israel's war on Gaza, now entering a seven month. This controversy surrounding Jonathan Glazer is one example. It has been weeks since Jonathan Glazer's acceptance speech at the Academy Awards, but as we're reminded by this week's unconscionable killing of seven World Kitchen Center, World Center Kitchen, uh, aid workers, and of countless more Palestinian civilians, his plea for humanity has only become more urgent, as has our duty as Jewish creators to protest the vicious smear campaign waged against them. Off topic, but have you seen this? Trump feels that his criminal indictments boosted his appeal to black voters. You know, I love my people. I wouldn't want to be anything but a black man. Uh, if God asked me in the next life what race I want to come back as, I'm picking black every day of the week and twice on Sundays. But I feel like some of us should be slaves again. Because it, it just the way we operate. Okay, bro, what the fuck? That's uh, what? All right, I'm gonna head out on that one. Right, we are so easily moved by the by the by the dumbest shit, you know. To, to the, the fact that some of us would allow Trump to just insult us like that and still go blacks for Trump, it's 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 insane. It's insane. So you're not and voting I for can't Trump. speak for the Latino community, but even when I see Latinos for Trump, I go, "What are you doing? What the fuck are y'all doing?" But I can't speak wholeheartedly for Latinos because, you know, I don't really know where their passion lies. But knowing everything that black people have gone through in this country uh, and continue to go through to, on some level, uh, you know, to be insulted like that and then still go, I'm, I'm voting for Donald Trump. It's insane. I'm too white to respond to this. I get the point he was making though, but I'm, I, I actually, I don't get the point he was making. It was too aggressive, but I get the energy, not the energy. The energy was aggressive too, but I mean, I have no statements on this. I'm going to stop talking about that now. We're moving on. Okay. Logan Paul got scammed. Guys, Logan Paul finally got scammed, little fellow. This just in, little guys. Logan Paul finally got scammed, little fellow. Isn't that crazy? Who scammed him? This slow talking guy, Graham Bensinger. I don't really know about him very much. I know he interviewed Robert Downey Jr. once, I think. Maybe he didn't. <laughs> Maybe he didn't. Maybe I made that up. All right. I think I might have made that up. Oh, I was mixing it up with Larry the Cable Guy. That's what I was mixing it up with. Just kidding. I wasn't. I bet it's pretty weird that he... Anyways, Logan Paul finally got fucking scammed. And by that, I mean his ego got absolutely annihilated because he was interviewed by this guy, Graham Bensinger, and he was allegedly told that this massive interview would be this huge documentary thing that would post exclusively on Apple TV, but instead went straight to fucking YouTube. Meanwhile, his brother Jake got a Netflix special and is about to fight Mike Tyson on Netflix as well. And he is, I think his ego is very, very, very hurt though, for real. Watch this. Concussion that nearly killed me, dude. No one gives a fuck. Look how bad the views are on all these. Oh, Barry Star Sternlicht almost has more. <laughs> Who is Barry Sternlicht? What kind of videos does he post for YouTube? What kind of content does he make? He's probably like an actual smart guy, unlike this fucking dweeb and us. Greetings. I come. TMZ broke all this stuff. Obviously, I don't. I I don't really. I love TM. I don't love TMZ. I can't say that. I don't like TMZ at all. Who are well, these some, people? Uh, very heavy revelation. I don't give a fuck. For some reason, I do the same sort of thing. Logan Paul, dude. What? Okay, cool. What about Crypto Zoo? 
Huh? Basically, the story is as follows. Logan Paul signed up to be interviewed by Graham, this interviewer guy, and have that interview posted on a syndicated uh, platform like Apple TV and whatever plus thing. He, he didn't want it to be posted on Graham's personal YouTube channel to watch for free. This hurt his ego massively. He's quoted as saying in an interview with TMZ, I thought he had my best interest. Okay. Y'all need to chill out, dude. I think he's just, uh, I, I thought Logan Paul actually got scammed. I got scammed a little bit. Thinking that he actually got scammed. It's the, it's the whole guy that like, uh, went with him for like six months to make a documentary about him. And then like the documentary was actually negative. Um, Oompaville is great though. You should check out his channel. This dude is cringe. Why hasn't chat come up with some deep dive on why this dude sucks so we can move on? Yeah, famously, I always fucking stop watching uh, YouTubers when dumbass random chatters chirp about why a specific YouTuber has like bad politics or whatever. I famously don't consistently continue to watch them and also yell at chat for an extra 45 minutes. Yeah, Oompa is great. Yeah, I never stop watching people because you guys... Uh, I never stop watching people because you guys fucking think they're problematic. I think it's really fucking annoying. We'll probably never get to travel in time. Don't forget that Weeby owes you 10 bucks. He owes me 20, not 10. But certain places in the world allow us to open that door just faintly and leave the rest of the picture to be painted by our imagination. That's what learning about our past through abandoned places enables for me. And hidden within a forest lies a fascinating place. Once a decadent spa town and a Soviet destination that attracted the elites of the Communist Party, including Joseph Stalin himself, for its natural springs that were said to have healing powers. Allowing us to open that door to the past, Skatulbo is now a collection of crumbling hotels, bathhouses, and sanatoriums, left abandoned for decades. Except for one of the spas still open and operating today, which is where we'll be staying. But the history of this place is a lot deeper and more complex than meets the eye. And so, we open yet another chapter in our ex-Soviet Union adventures, as we seek to answer many questions around what happened to this small country after the Soviet Union left and collapsed, and what this once elegant city turned into. As a nation with a dark history filled with tyrants and a displaced population, this is the story of Georgia. Damn! The man who is in charge of the gate here is upset at us because we're late. Our trip immediately began on a strange note, as we were staying in the only spa resort still open in the city out of the previously 18 operational ones. It feels like we're arriving like a haunted place right now. Hopefully it all goes all right. Yeah, we are the guests on the only guests. Welcome to okay, another Weeby. strange yes theory adventure. I'm not sure I'm gonna be able to sleep. It's so <laughs> creepy. Weeby sent me. Weeby actually sent me. What well, dude? What the fuck? I just fucking turned on the AC and it automatically goes into cooldown mode again. It's so annoying. Um, Weeby sent me twenty bucks. He did. Oh wow. I have like an My mods pay me in Soviet Russia. Mods pay you. <laughs> Apartment. Sleep well. Thank you. Good night. We started the morning by meeting our guide, Lucas, a local Yes Fan member who was born and raised in this city. If someone sent me $30, we will watch the Moist Critical video. If someone sends me $30 to my PayPal, I will watch the Moist Critical video. <laughs> in fact, and his grandma worked here 
He will be helping us find its hidden corners and understand its peculiar history. Very curious about this place. It's kind of weird arriving. I didn't fully connect that we were like staying in the middle of it. Mm -hmm. When we arrived, I was like, is this a part of it? So we started filming last night. We're like, are we staying in the thing that we thought yes, was abandoned? <laughs> <laughs> this is the only centering that um, kept working after, even after Soviet. Wait, I did get sent. Someone sent me $30. What the fuck is going on, dude? Kibaka, thank you for the tank community gift this subs. Bro, stop. Okay, guys, I was kidding. Stop. What is happening? Stop, 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 stop. Actually, stop. Gift subs instead. Don't do that. <laughs> Two people sent me $30. Now I got another 40 spot from Hasanabi Adventures. Oh my God. Everybody cease. Cease. Using your fans fucked up lol. Now we have to watch that video. Collapsing. Uh, this town got like 120,000 visitors per year. Obviously, uh, it's a huge part of our history now. Um, so let's go and see the chandelier that they have and check the rooms that they had in, in Soviet Union era. Okay, yeah. let's go. Thomas and his strange fascination with Soviet times. I love it though. Our exploration started in the hotel resort we were actually staying in. Originally one of the many Soviet-era sanitariums in this town, the sanatorium was an establishment focused on therapeutic and medical treatment for a variety of ailments, and this town's sanatoriums were famous for their healing spa centers. It was built by Georgian architects, but it was built by German enslaved people from World War II. Wait, German enslaved people from World War II? Yeah. But how that, that were captured by the Russians. Were... Bro, come on. Don't say German enslaved people. It's a work camp for Nazis, man. Jesus Christ. <laughs> like, like, connect the dots a, a little bit, please. Oh, like soldiers oh, yeah. Or, yeah, I see. This story is getting darker by the second. <laughs> this first resort out of the many others we'll be seeing is one of the few still remaining buildings in town which was refurbished after the fall of the Soviet Union and turned into a modern hotel resort in 2011. Although it has only been operational for 13 years, its architecture still remains from its Soviet origins, and walking through its halls truly feels like stepping back in time. Bro, what the fuck is going on? Stop sending me money! What do you think they performed up here? Probably a lot of, a lot of music, I guess. Omar's a really good singer, actually. Oh, okay. <laughs> so right now we're going into part of the sanatorium that is very close to the one that's still active that we are staying in where the rooms are completely preserved from the soviet times so they're close i told you stop stop sending me money gift subs instead even though some of it goes back to twitch at least you're gifting subscriptions to other people closed so you can't like stay in them but they're not totally decrepit and destroyed so we're gonna see it we're hoping it hasn't fallen apart too much but we have this elderly man who's coming with us who has the keys to the building Kaya sub badges for Mass Stupid Art. Don't ask me. As, as Mass Stupid Art. Bro, I don't care. Jesus Christ. 
there's also the spas around, like bathhouses, where the radium water, I think it's radium, it's radioactive, but if you have like doctor's permission, you can take these baths. Another addition to this town's already strange history is the peculiar phenomenon that made the town famous for its healing properties. The presence of radioactive water in its natural hot springs. What? Yeah, the spring water in this town contained radon, a radioactive gas deemed a health risk by American environmental agencies, but paradoxically has been utilized in certain parts of Europe for generations as a therapeutic remedy for various health conditions. What? As we make our way through this gigantic abandoned network of buildings, we were now about to enter the building that gave this spa its notoriety in the first place. Spring number six, built exclusively for Joseph Stalin at the time, it is the largest thermal bath still operating today. Yeah, when they've had deadline of Stalin coming here, they've hired, I think, 4,000 extra workers to finish in time. So he would be able to get his private bath which we're gonna see right now. It's strange to me that in old Soviet places, I mean, they've kept this, I guess, as like a relic of history, but statues of Stalin still exist. That's a strange thing to me. I've seen even in, you know, Transnistria, this country that doesn't exist inside Moldova, in some cafes, there are like posters of him. It's, it's crazy. It's very backwards when you know the millions of people that yeah. you killed. Stalin is considered one of the most notorious tyrants and dictators in history, with an estimated 9 million of his own civilians killed or starved under his rule. As Stalin was Georgia born, the country was therefore favored by the dictator and positioned as a leisure destination in the Soviet Union. This room was built exclusively for his use in 19... <laughs> Please stop this video now! <laughs> 51, which he only used once before passing away a few years later. No, not all of his victims were Nazis, Chad. Come on. They're also incorporating famine into that number as well. Double come on. Okay. And, and like Jesus Christ. Like you don't have to you don't have to fucking turn around and be like, no, actually everything Stalin did was great. You can see it as uh in the words of Norm Finkelstein's parents, uh, you know, collectivization occurring over the course of not 400 years of slavery like in the western world but instead over the course of a couple decades and the inevitable uh the the uh, inevitable consequences of that imagine if they counted every person who died in prison during a president's term lamau i mean it still wouldn't be as as long as it wouldn't be as high the number wouldn't be as high You wouldn't say that if you were there? No, it's just like... Um, yes, industrialization uh, and, and the, the... Like Norm's parents said, this generation will suffer for the comfort of future generations. Careful, comrade, you're bordering on treason there. I'm fucking treasonous, revisionist. In 1953. What's your feelings when you feel like a little bit disgusted? Yeah. yeah. No, the black book number is 100 million, which incorporates unborn Nazis and the unborn in general. That's why he said 9 million, which is a much more conservative estimate, which features people that died, uh, people that died in prison, people that died uh, in famine. The, the ridiculous number is 100 million, which is a falsehood, uh, the black book, which incorporates Nazis, the unborn children of the Nazis, the unborn children of every single person that could have had children. Like that shit is, that, that stuff is ridiculous, obviously. And it also is still ridiculous. Like even with a nine million uh, number, we never we never calculate death under capitalism in a similar fashion. We don't. Fourteen million people die due to famine every year under a global capitalist order. However, those deaths are not seen as like direct consequences of mismanagement. Even though, unlike Stalin's Russia, there is no fucking World War Two plus. Uh, a, a a nation uh, comprised of potato farmers trying to fucking become a, from an agrarian society to a 
society that was able to beat America in the space race over a short period of time without the utilization of colonies. Um, it's not, it's not ever incorporated fairly. Like those numbers under capitalism, if you look at capitalism, global capitalism as a, as an economic order, those numbers are nothing. Like, I mean, 9 million is nothing. Even a hundred million is technically nothing in comparison to how much under that exact same level of scrutiny, uh, capitalism is killed. There's also, there's also the, the, uh, there's also the difference in material conditions of uh, the USSR and World War II and the impact of World War II on the USSR in comparison to like how Western civilization was brought up and developed. Having said that, however, I'm not like a Stalin. I am not a... Why are you LARPing? As a leftist, when you're one of those right-wing reactionaries, what is this? Don't be stupid. Stalin killed millions, no doubt. Yes, anti-communist propaganda is widespread, but it doesn't mean the U.S. started the massacre of thousands of innocent people. I mean, there is there is a, a lot of draconian policies that were implemented in a very paranoid fashion under Stalin, for sure. Like, that's it. It's like looking at the the Cultural Revolution and not. Uh, acknowledging its failures however having said that he was a great nazi killer i mean straight up fucking meat grinder shit big w very 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 big w for stalin mistake supporting the creation of Israel and not dissolving Germany you know fair this building right here looks like a UFO spaceship a unique and strange part about these times was the way their vacations worked basically twice a year you'd get a ticket that would allow you to travel somewhere but the Soviet Union would pick where you were going so you might get a ticket to go to Ukraine, maybe here in Georgia, and they give it to you, and you'd end up just being sent there in a housing that's assigned to you. It's strange to think that that's, at one point, how a very large portion of the world was operating. The complex that we are exploring is massive. It is basically an entire city, and as we're driving around, there's the abandoned post office, the abandoned train station, the abandoned... What about the American W against German, Japanese, and Soviets? We beat three superpowers in a generation, Hassan. Why would you incorporate... Why would you incorporate the Soviets to that? You think the Cold War was good? What are you, fucking stupid? The fuck? How about you fucking look at European social democracy and thank the Soviets every fucking goddamn day if you do live in Europe because there was like a balancing act that European capitalists had to play that America never even engaged in. You want to understand what like the Soviet influence was in comparison to like the United States of America, the closer you are to the fucking USSR, the better you have social safety nets as a consequence of that. Even American New Deal uh even the American New Deal was born out of pressures from trade unionists and communists. If you like the weekend, thank a fucking Soviet or at least a trade unionist or at least a fucking communist or a socialist, okay? Dumb fucks. Taking all of the hard fought battles that your fucking grandparents fought for, okay? You're taking that shit for granted. Like you think that capital owners would ever give you an ounce of dignity in your fucking lives. Okay, they fought very hard not to. World War II was won by Soviet blood and American material. Everyone played a role, but the U.S. started the most. Yes, absolutely. KGB building. And so basically all of the Soviet infrastructure has been left behind. And some buildings have been bought, like this one, for example, was abandoned, was purchased, and I guess is maybe a project to reconstruct it. The question is, can we sneak into it? Okay. Oh. 
He passed two times this year. He's passed two times? Yeah. I hope we're not gonna get arrested. Yay! He's always making everything sound like a joke. I would not want to be arrested in Georgia, please. Oh, no. sad being in a place like this, knowing that so many resources were poured into it, and then ultimately it's just left to... Yeah, I wonder what happened, that like, so many beautiful Soviet infrastructure is left in a state of disarray. Huh. <laughs> Must have been the fault of Stalin, who had died many, many years before. And certainly not Western capitalist bankers plundering the country with collaborators, fascist counter-revolutionary capitalist collaborators, who then also suspiciously became leaders of Russia, like Vladimir Putin and all of his oligarchs. But that's the fuck do I know? I'm sure that happened because of uh, socialism is a failure, inevitably, always. To rot like that. Wow, look at this. Whenever I see plants like that just growing, I always feel like the power of nature reclaiming the planet back. No matter how much we built, how much concrete, how much steel we put into this, plants find a way to grow. Another wow, Hassan is really going mask off tonight? What? Come on, bro. I know you're being sarcastic, but this is the type They're of shit that I say all the time. It's fucking ridiculous. It's object, it's abject reality. You grew up is, is in this correct. Area? Yeah, I grew up like five kilometers away from here. Me and my friends, we usually would go around and explore this abandoned building. I was born in 2000. It was not the best time to have a child. Yeah, my mom emigrated when I was six. She moved to Greece to help finance my studies, my clothing, basically everything. She moved to Greece just to send money back yeah. to help you? Yeah. So did your dad raise you then or like what? No, I was raised by my grandparents, my dad's parents. Uh, my grandpa's 84, my grandma's 72. I still live with them. Yeah, they took really good care of me. Um, and this is not just my story. This is basically like 80% of Georgian story who was born in 2000. Because yeah, most of our families, moms, dads, they usually went out of the country to help us. How often would you see your mom growing up? Growing up, there was 11 years that I didn't see her. Um, 11 years? Yeah, I didn't feel like I was lacking something in my life because my grandma and grandpa filled my life with all the joy. They literally gave me everything. Mm. Uh, they're like my parents and I have huge respect for them. But yeah, that's what made me me and here I am now. It's a really nice hoodie, man. Actually, let me tell you about it. This is the new Seek Discomfort collection. Lucas told me earlier that he liked the sweater, so. Whoa, I really like that sweater you're wearing. Wow, fascinating. If you trust anyone's opinion, trust Luke. Yeah, exactly. It's high quality. Like you can actually feel the feel the letters up. Even when you wash it, like it's probably not gonna lose the color. Probably. Probably. I mean, if it gives me one or two, I can test it out and yeah, give the feedback. Actually, thank you so much. A head full of fears has no space for dreams. Oh, it smells nice. It's worth just paying for the smell. Yeah. To get this amazing shirt, guys, you just have to go to seekdiscomfort.com and just order it. Nice. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> This building that we're exploring right now was used in the early 90s as a home for IDPs, internally displaced people. As you zoom in to the Google Maps of Georgia, there's a few dotted lines I've been very curious about for a very long time, and those are occupied territories unrecognized by other countries, um, occupied by Russia. 80% of the people that lived in Abkhazia, one of these countries that doesn't exist inside of Georgia, left, and many of them fled to this specific region. So when the Soviets left and the sanatoriums were basically abandoned. Georgia moved the people from that region into some of these buildings. Now they have modern buildings built just outside, but initially, as the whole crisis happened, they just housed them here. This building was first used as a sanitarium and then as kind of like a IDP center where people came and lived 
for some time. So Georgia is filled with layers and there are many aspects to the story. Humbled to be here and learning about it and getting to see glimpses of its past through these buildings. We'd heard that there were many Georgians who were displaced after the fall. I'm not a, a brutalist Andy. I'm not a big fan of brutalist architecture in general, but I will always admit that obviously commie uh, Soviet era building blocks are phenomenal in general for, for what it did, which is housing a fuck ton of people. The Soviet Union. Most of them were moved to these abandoned resort buildings. We were about to speak to one of these people. Your a woman worst take? Who'd okay. been living inside this abandoned building for over 30 years. There's someone here. There's someone there. Yeah. Someone there? Yeah. Oh, I read it. Sounds like. Oh, it's the Chinese South African. My girl, I can prove you. Give a little chance to rest. That's where she accepts the guests. Very hard. Keep the rules. You can have a seat. The only way you say you prefer to be homeless versus in the blocks is if you've never experienced homelessness. Yeah, well, many people haven't. <laughs> You know, that number is changing every day in America, but many people haven't experienced homelessness. So, so. Yeah, can, have, can I put some water in it just to share the moon over there? Yeah. I'll get some water. <laughs> what are you looking at? He got shot. Oh. He got shot. Yeah. Still mad at you. She pooped in the house earlier. And, and she's been here for 33 years. Oh, so tell me it's a little talking. Yes, yes. It's in been. this building. I'm Shenobash. Yep. Yep. Wow. Yeah. When she got displaced, did it, did it? Did she think it was going to be this long, or did she think that it was more of a temporary thing? Yeah. Do you still hold hope in your heart that you're going to go back? Yeah, and she misses it. As the world is feels like it's descending into this new episode of darkness with all the wars that are happening, what's her message to the world? Uh -huh. No. Babushka's has got the cape and everything.
she misses all that freedom that she had at Ray's house. Yeah, except she was a fucking terrorist over there. So obviously I got a better handle on things here. Even though she knows how to manipulate me. That's why she's like getting. No, now she's not wagging her tail anymore because I made her get down again. <laughs> oh, oh no. Oh no. What are you wagging your tail for? You want to get up? Is that what it is? Huh? Okay. Okay. That's crazy. This dog is crazy. She does give me the puppy eyes and she knows. She knows it works too. She knows it fucking works. Terrorist is a term governments use to label things they don't like. You are a fascist. <laughs> Someone in the chat said, I didn't know Atlanta had their own uh, language. Yeah. How many rooms were in this specific sanitarium? Uh, nearly 400. 400. I feel like they didn't speak enough about the sick ass luxury resort. I'm going to be honest. Yeah, it was always full. I think they moved out of here like two years ago because a few months ago when I went here, there were people swimming in the pool and yeah, really? they were having fun around here. Yeah, wow. mm, they, they were living here. So I'm curious because your grandparents grew up during the Soviet times. How do they feel about that Soviet time era? Times. They did miss it for some time just because, you know, during the Soviet era, like it was basically not allowed to not to work. So everyone had a job, everyone had money, everything was pretty much cheap. But also the part when Soviet Union tried to uh, erase the identity of Georgia, that's the part which my grandparents are kind of mad about. Bro, that literally is unironically the greatest way that you can describe both the best aspects of the USSR and the simultaneously worst aspects, the major failures and the major success of the USSR in the shortest way you can describe it, okay? The, the Russification, Russianization, is that how you say it? What's the fucking term for it? I don't know what the proper term is, okay? While simultaneously giving every single russification giving every single person a job keeping things relatively cheap like all of that great housing opportunities infrastructure spending every single aspect of that modernizing this country having it be like this global power the casualness with which he was like the cultural genocide was kind of mid sent me yeah because even when that is happening I think ultimately, even when that's happening, when your material conditions are like uh, relatively well, and when people can see that like you're becoming, when people can see that you are as a nation becoming more powerful overall, when like your material conditions are improving, giving everyone a job means people pretend working. Yeah, what do you mean? What the fuck do you think you do? If you have a white collar job, that's you, literally what you're doing half the time is pretending to work. So what the fuck are you talking about anyway? And no, those jobs weren't like pretend working for the most part. It's not like the USSR jobs were like desk guy, Excel spreadsheet enjoyer. Okay. That wasn't like the fucking positions. And then like actual work, like slave to the Excel spreadsheet worker in a short increment as soon as you're in the service sector. Okay. Motherfuckers who watch you on company time are uh, griping about people pretending to work. Exactly. Uh, but ultimately, that's the point. If you give, if you improve people's material conditions in ways that they can recognize it, they don't even give a shit about like, in, in a lot of instances, they don't give a shit about like social uh, uh, liberties being withered away or never really having it at all. China is a great example of this. <laughs> Literally, China is a phenomenal example of this. Okay. The happiness that people exhibit <coughs> or the confidence they have for their government is unheard of for Americans. They're like, what the fuck? Why do people like this shit? I don't get it. Why do people like this shit at all? Like we, we in the Western world, we look at China and we're like, this doesn't make no damn sense. You don't have free speech. You have this like social credit uh, system or whatever. <coughs> like all of that stuff doesn't matter as much when people are like well you know 
things are going well. I have opportunities. Now, it will change. It will absolutely change for the worse when the material conditions start uh, worsening. Okay? If material conditions start worsening, if people lose hope that their future is secured, if people lose hope that their government is, uh, you know, no longer taking care of them, then they will care about the social shit and they will make a big stink about the social stuff because that is very important regardless. Because you get put out of society if your score is lower, if you criticize the government. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's what it is. Yeah, it's fucking billions of people and every single one is like secretly fucking being cast aside. There's one billion people in China that are are secretly lying to like western pollsters bro time and time again western think tanks go to china you can do that okay and they don't have any interest in making china look good making the chinese government especially look good right they don't have any interest in it and yet the the polls personally show that <laughs> Contrast with Modi in India, they hate Modi Lamau. Yeah, I mean, again, it's all about material conditions. Social credit ain't a good thing, man, just saying. I don't like the concept of social credit as much as I don't like the concept of credit in the United States of America. For the record, I just, I don't think it's good. So explain North Korea. What do you mean? Did you just compare North Korea to China? I'm sorry. There is no other way to fucking treat this conversation but like abject fucking racism against Asian people. Okay? If you think that like China is the same as North Korea, you literally are going, what kind of Chinese are you to fucking Koreans, I think? Like this is no different than fucking Senator Tom Cotton being like, come on, boy, tell me what kind of Chinese are you? Singaporean? Is that a new kind of Chinese? The fuck do you mean? The fuck do you mean? So explain North Korea. Do you think there's a comparison between North Korea and China? The fuck? That's insane. <laughs> no, I'm saying, why don't North Koreans protest against, against their government? <sighs> the North Korean way of existence is one very different than the chinese access to the rest of the world but beyond that the north korean government with limited means also is improving their infrastructure so that probably plays a role in it as well beyond that though they are very authoritarian as well so it's a bit of both the carrot and the stick Globalism good? Wait, what do you mean? I've. Do you think... Brother, I'm a product of internationalism. You know what? Fair point. Oh, respect. I'm a product of internationalism. You think I fucking think that we should harden our nationalistic sentiment? Are you out of your mind? Look at me. I grew up in fucking Turkey my whole life, and I'm indistinguishable from a, an American. The only difference is my name isn't Hank. And I guess like, I don't have really stupid fucking opinions about healthcare and, and American imperialism. Anyway. You have freedom of speech. You're just not allowed to insult G, spread info or incite violence. And most people don't insult people anyway. I mean, but that's, <clears throat> but that is free speech. Like insulting Xi Jinping is free speech. Like if you gave me the option though, if I get high speed rail and, and I guess like free healthcare, even though the Chinese healthcare system isn't that great either, it's getting better, but it's got a long way to go. Better infrastructure, better housing policies, all that shit. And I, but I can't say Joe Biden is bad. I probably fucking take the I can't say Joe Biden's bad.
yeah, they try to erase our language. They try to just erase everything and make us Russian. Yeah, there are a lot of people now that also, struggled. Hate speech isn't legal in many EU countries either. Would you say it's no longer free speech? Do you just equate like criticizing the CCP or criticizing Xi Jinping with hate speech? Are you a Chinese netizen? Do you think <laughs> the fuck? Dude, if you've ever talked to a Chinese person, and I have too many, including my relatives, okay, the common thread is always that once they realize you're not like some fucking xenophobic freak, like 99% of white people that they encounter in the West, and they are all of a sudden uh, uh, being honest with you, they will tell you usually a certain set of things, depending on like how politically inclined they are, but usually a certain set of, of uh, comments that I've heard that are very commonplace. Okay. Your relatives are Taiwanese. No. Yes. Even then there are certain things you know not to say. And you kind of put your, you keep your head down and you don't disrupt the flow. But overall, overall, there is a notion that the government has your best interest in mind. That Chinese prosperity is a real phenomenon that a lot of Chinese people believe in. And why shouldn't they believe in it? The country has developed tremendously over the course of their lives. And when you see that with your own two fucking eyes... When you see better infrastructure year over year, when you see China becoming a beacon of prosperity as a Chinese person, okay, you're like, yeah, this shit's pretty good overall. Also, you are free to visit. Every single one of you could go to China tomorrow if you wanted to. It's actually pretty fucking cheap as well. I, I don't know about the flight, but like as soon as you get there, everything is much, 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 much cheaper. This is completely unheard of from the american perspective especially since the 90s like i don't think that our i don't think my generation and beyond have ever even thought about having better material conditions than their parents we have the exact opposite uh, phenomena happening here we have the exact opposite framework where we're like shit's getting worse overall sure technological improvements are great i can get burger wherever i want but like ultimately the notion that you're going to be able to own a house, the notion that you're going to be able to find emotional or, or personal fulfillment in either your labor or uh, have a retirement, for example. These are, these are gone. These are concepts of the past. Obviously, that probably impacts the collective psyche in a very negative way. That's it. If you, on the other hand, have seen infinite like infinitely better living circumstances over the course of multiple decades, you're going to be like, this shit is awesome. Yeah, sure. Isn't this true for China too? Fuck no, it's not true for China. What the fuck are we talking about? Is China going to collapse any day now for real? There are issues. There are certainly issues in China as far as I understand. Like I said, healthcare is not great. Uh, the anti-homelessness initiatives are actually pretty fucking severe in China, even though you never really hear about it. Okay. Um, there's still much to be done as far as like labor rights goes, especially in certain areas. China also has an aging population. Not that, it, I mean, it's not the same as like America because America has a steady flow of undocumented migrants coming in that actually keep the population pretty fucking young, um, even though we are so ungrateful. Okay. But overall, yeah, their work conditions are pretty bad. And But worse than that, worse than the work conditions being pretty fucking bad, there's one other thing, uh, there's one other thing that's, uh, that's way worse. Because work conditions are better in comparison to 10 years ago. But what's really bad is the prospect for future generations. Now I think the younger, uh, younger, Chinese, uh, younger Chinese people feel as though their opportunities are going to be less. Not that this is like signaling that China is collapsing or anything, but... It's not a good look for America to complain about anti-homelessness measures in China. No, I mean, obviously, we are so fucking bad.
What the fuck are you talking about being grateful for young immigrants, bro? What do you mean? If it wasn't for a steady flow of migration into the United States, don't you think that we would run into the exact same problem that every single fucking developed nation has ran into, with the exception of those who have, like, a, a much better, uh, uh, you know, uh, much more open-minded approach, I guess, even though it's not a pro open-minded, it's fucking awful, it's draconian. I mean, are you saying we should be grateful? Oh, come on. That didn't even, like, you didn't even seg, you didn't even tie it to your bait. Like, see, this guy did a better job. You can talk about Chinese prospects all you want, but you can't deny how well the stage has managed to stave off the top of the hour ad break by limiting access to sites like Twitch. You're such a simp for the Chinese authoritarian monster that is the CCP. And what about the Uyghurs? You've abandoned them just like you abandoned the top of the hour. Those are better. I got baited by a Quebecois too, which is so much worse. I find it very funny how America's criticized the CCP for limiting America's social media in the country, but we're going out of our way to limit TikTok owned by a Singaporean. Oh, well, that's a different kind of Chinese. All right. Here's the three minute ad break now, by the way. It's coming. Transitioning into that phase. It was really tough yeah. transitioning. Um, there was no electricity after Soviet Union collapse. There was no food. People were in line to get just bread. So yeah, it was really tough times. And all the families like had certain amount of bread that they could get. So it, it was tough after collapsing. Yeah, color is stunning, but uh, I just really wish I could see this thing, how it was fresh. Well, I'm, I'm not fantasizing about Soviet Union, but the <laughs> fact is that, yeah, this would have looked beautiful. Yeah, how do you feel about Georgia today? I'm, I'm feeling really positive. Like five years ago, I was kind of planning to move out of the country, but now there's, yeah, there's a lot of things that I can do. Um, and I enjoy living here. It's really safe. I hope Georgia continues in this positive direction. Yeah, because... I think so too, but it's, I think it's heavily dependent on people, on us, rather than just the government that's ruling. Because, um, yeah, there were some things that we didn't like and then we protest and then uh, the, the protest actually has results. Like wow. government dropping the law uh, after the protest. Like even if you went here three years ago, that would be like huge difference coming mm. here this year. I think a lot of times when we want to criticize what's around us we forget that we're a part of what's around yeah. us and one of my favorite quotes is um, we blame society but we are society. dude i made one quebec joke being racist is not unique to quebec the rest of canada is just as racist getting told to speak what because you're speaking french i love quebecers dude listen denis villeneuve villeneuve got me to admit that i am a supporter I'm a Quebec separatist. I'm a radical Quebec separatist. Okay? You already know. Speak what? Because you're speaking French. It's pretty funny, though, to complain about, like, in 2024. Like, as far as I understand, as far as I understand, yes, uh, Francophones were... Francophones were shitted on for a while. But, like, Canada and its mistreatment of Francophones now is pretty funny like complaining about <laughs> complaining about how how much uh, uh canadians shit on francophones now bro said not a separatist because you're not a fucking real one you're bitch made i'm a real one i believe yeah vive le quebec libre Also, no, Quebec does have literally way more openly racist Islamophobic laws that they push for all the time, which is very French of them.
Yes, it is. The Quebecers who are enacting a righteous struggle, just like the indigenous folks, they genocided for land. No, you don't understand. Quebecers are the same as the indigenous folk. Tabarnak. <coughs> they still have legitimate grievances, especially considering their language rights. Wait, what? I don't understand this. W I, am I wrong? I, I feel like French is like taught in schools. It's like pretty Canada across broadly is like pretty fucking pro French. Like they're pretty accessible to, to, to Francophones. Am I wrong? No, it's not bro. Shut up. Their French is fucked up, though. I don't think the Quebecers think that way. Please no, I'm Quebecois and I love Canada. Please no, don't, man. It sucks to be Anglo in Quebec, even if I speak perfect French. Wait, what? Now you're saying it sucks to be Anglo if you're in Quebec? Dude, yo... White people need to fucking chill, okay? I'm going to start having some words with everyone involved in Canada, okay? Give it back to the fucking natives right now. Shut the fuck up. That's crazy. That's crazy. I mean, it's funny when fucking Quebec uh, Quebecers now are like, oh, no, I'm being, I'm being, I'm not white, dude. I'm black. <laughs> Yo, Canada is so fucking nuts, dude. Canada is insane. You got black Canadians being like, no, I'm actually being shit on for, for being Anglo than being black. What is happening? What's going on? Everything is upside down in Canada, dude. That's crazy. What in the hell? I've never, I never thought a black person in a Western country would be like, yeah, dude, the French speaking population is really owning me for speaking English <laughs> as a black man, much worse that I speak English. What the fuck? <laughs> yeah, we need to shut down Canada. Read my previous message. I'm not saying they're repressed, but Canada is an Anglo colonial project and the French are treated as second class, but immigrants are third class. As an immigrant to Anglo Canada. Oh. The indigenous are taking French land. I just, I don't know. No, I think this guy is right. I got bullied and laughed at when I was in Quebec because I was speaking American. Okay, but you deserve that. Like, what? I mean, that's so valid. As a chief authority, no pun intended on this as a native guy, Quebecers are the scum of the earth and should be moved to America instead. <laughs> Jesus Christ. No, they speak French, dude. We don't speak, we don't speak that language around here. French is not second class. It's an official language in Canada and any French neighborhoods are usually just bilingual. Yeah, I, I never thought that people would say that the French, the Francophones are oppressing the Anglophones in Quebec. That's so funny. I know I like the joke about how Quebecers or the Francophones say that they're being oppressed all the time. This is so sick. Uh... 
Okay, let's continue. Sorry. Let's finish this. So, I think it's a matter of just like not dissociating from the fact that government is also people. And yeah, I love your love for your country, man. Yeah, I'm trying my best. It took me some time. It's <laughs> too. <That's good. laughs> yeah. yeah. As we arrived with a very limited understanding of this country's history, we were able to faintly open that door into the past through this semi-abandoned Soviet city and paint a clearer picture of what those challenging times were like for Georgia. We think that studying our past is imperative to not repeat the same mistakes tomorrow. And so we hope that we as the next generation would listen to these stories and choose more wisely a future of peace once and for all. If you want to support our ability to create independent short documentaries like this, the ultimate way to do that is through our clothing line, Seat Discomfort. When you drop shine. The Anglophone in Montreal who complains lives in the richest part of Montreal versus Francophone is very weird. I must say complain. You need to read about Quebec's history, dude. It's interesting, especially native history. Oh my God, dude, this is so sick. Anytime we bring up Quebecers are like the vegans, like the Quebec question is literally like the vegan shit in this chat. Like there are many, which is not surprising. Quebecers can be like either super based and very racist or super based and not racist at all. It's weird, but they fucking love chirping. They love chirping. Like I'll make like a, like I just made a funny joke. I was like, no, I'm fucking you know, I, what did I say about Quebec? I forgot. But then one of them immediately took that seriously and was like, you don't understand. You don't understand, man. You didn't understand. <laughs> the oppression was real. And then, and then it just, the chat fell into bedlam. No, it's serious. My aunt grew up in Toronto and told me that one time she went to Montreal on vacation and she started speaking English very loudly and drunkenly as she was on vacation. And a bunch of Quebecers beat her up and told her to speak French. We already ran the ad break, man. What the fuck? You're like eight minutes late. Quebec has nationalized the electricity sector and it brought some very good Quebec prosperity. So we have some good. No, it's like that. That's what I mean. It's like Quebec will be like, Quebec will be like, hey, we're actually planning on uh, implementing full blown public housing or some shit. Not, not really, but like, let's say hypothetically for this story, they're like, yeah, we are going to implement some uh, full blown public housing, uh, but also no Muslims. <laughs> public housing for all including the indigenous uh, who uh, we are one with, of course, uh, but uh, no Muslims. Uh, <laughs> Islam is not allowed. <laughs> you cannot wear the hijab in the public housing. <laughs> and you're like, how did this happen? <laughs> China prosperity, don't shit on Xi. Quebec prosperity, let us keep our racism. Quebec is very leftist, but then sometimes turns around and elects basically Trump Quebecois and now wonder why the province is going to shit. Remember when they passed the bill forbidding to wear face coverings in public, but then COVID-19 came along and everyone wore face coverings? Now we are all like the Muslim. Not very good. Where is she from? Where does she live? Where does she live? Well, we're, you're in Canada. Now, right? A mundane and casual commute turning confrontational. At issue here is language and what's being spoken. No, it is racist. 
No, our, it's not. No. Why is it racist? We, we have a freedom My, to speak in our own language. No. Last Thursday, Donna Damaso was heading to YVR when she overheard a conversation at Richmond Breakhouse Station. When that stopped her. He's so nice while being racist. Yeah, dude, Canadians are so funny. Even their racism doesn't hit. It's like, no. Please, I urge you to speak the ink. You're in Canada now. Please, I urge you, madam. You must speak English. No. <laughs> I would be very sad if you don't speak English now. <laughs> in her tracks. Damaso then hitting record. Why do we have to bend over backwards? You move to Japan, you learn Japanese. German I've seen brothel? the ladies just buying tickets on their own. Wait, he said, if you, wait, wait, wait. He said, Japan, you gotta learn Japanese? To Japan, you learn Japanese. I've seen the ladies just buying tickets on their own. And he was just watching there. He's not part of the group. He was inside of the train station. And he went outside and talked to them saying like, where are you from? Um, you should speak English here in Canada. Bro, you don't have the right to tell people what they speak. Yes, be nice. Yes, we will, if, we yeah, have to, nice. if we have to bend over backwards to accommodate, yeah, then that's a problem. The tense two-minute encounter being shared online, getting hundreds of thousands of views. Groups working to combat anti-Asian racism say, while it is shocking, it's nothing new. Unfortunately, this kind of you're not Canadian enough form of othering is all too common. This is everyday form of racism happens in this type of format where somebody approaches someone and says, you're not Canadian enough. This is what it means for me to be Canadian. And How are you in Richmond and racist the Asians? I mean, very carefully, I think. <laughs> he's just weirdly politely. He's racist to Asians. Like he's racist, but he's also weirdly polite. I don't understand why how those two things could have happened. It's just odd. It's very odd. You don't fit that paradigm. Oh, it's just very angry. I, um, I keep thinking that could have been my mother, right? And she goes on public transit all the time by herself. We have a lot of people speak different languages, and this is a uh, part of the cultures, the ethnicities that we need to, to celebrate. Damaso now being praised for her bold stance and speaking out. It shows allyship and solidarity with our community. I just want people to um, let know that it's okay to speak in their own language. Don't I'm a lawyer, all I right? Don't care. I don't care if you're a lawyer. I went to McGill Law School. Hoping uh -huh. that people will do the same and stand up for others. Oh, yeah, this happens a lot in Vancouver. A lot of old Vancouverites got upset that their airport has signs with English, French, and Mandarin. That's awesome. Don't read the comments. This guy will be real busy walking around Richmond berating everyone who's not speaking English. Send him to Quebec and let's see how he speaks French. Dude, it's so sick. Finding out about Canadian hogs and their own individual gripes is awesome. What's this guy on? Japanese people are very accommodating to people who speak American. What? No, they're not. The fuck do you mean? I mean, Japanese people are very nice, but Japan as a nation is literally famously not accommodating at all. Bro, they barely use the Latin alphabet. The fuck do you mean? You will literally go there and be like, what am I looking at? It's kind of strange, like, looking at signs and being like, I don't understand anything. I can't even mouth the words because the alphabet is not even like, like, they have a specific alphabet for, uh, for, for Japanese words. And it's not even, it's not even on the signs. Oh, no, 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 lol. Yeah, no, I mean, it's it's fine. You go to Japan and you're like, what the fuck? You, you're talking about the small things? They have signs that say no foreigners allowed? I can't tell. You want to know why? Because I don't speak the language. So it doesn't even... 
there's that xenophobia is so deep that they fucking write no foreigners allowed in Japanese. So I don't even know what the fuck the bar sign is saying. They got three alphabets, bro. Turkish was like that recently. No, it wasn't because Turkey uses the Latin alphabet. So you can mouth the words. Okay. Even if you are still not utilize, like, even if you don't understand the language, you can still fucking mouth the words because it's still the Latin alphabet. You know, the letters. And also there's a major difference between Japan and Turkey. Let's be real. Holy shit. Turkey's, uh, Turkey's situation is not a, Byproduct of xenophobia. Turks fucking love Europeans. Turks love white people. It's poverty that is the co that is the reason. They fucking love tourism. Yeah. It's highly specific to certain areas. The closer you are to places like Hiroshima and Nagasaki, they are very cold, if not rude to Americans. Meanwhile, places like Tokyo, Yokohama, they're more accommodating. It's only really in the major large cities. No, I'm saying like in compare. Look, I've, I'm, I'm a decently well-traveled guy. In comparison to all of these other countries that I've been to, especially other developed nations, Japan is definitely the least accommodating to... Like Japanese people are very... I would say polite. They're very polite, right? They are very polite. But having said that, the, the structure in and of itself is definitely not uh, accommodating. They're non-confrontational. They're very polite. But um, the but as far as like, uh, yeah, polite and like you are two different things. You need Riz. No, no, no. I agree with that. Listen, this is actually a really good point. Where is it? If you come under anything Turkey related, you get a bunch of guys saying, come to Turkey, bro. There are countries that are like that. Brazil is one. Turkey is another one. You ain't never seen no Japanese motherfucker in the comment section be like, come to Japan, please. Never. Okay? The come to insert here countries love tourism. I've never seen a Japanese motherfucker underneath a comment section being like, please come here. Bro, they use Twitter like crazy out there. It's like a totally different world. Japanese Twitter is entirely different. They don't give a fuck. I mean, you still want to go because it's sick. But think about that. Think about that, bro. They are on a different planet. They use Japanese. They use American social media. But they use it differently. Uh, another thing someone said, Yahoo. They use Yahoo and they use Twitter like crazy. That's not stop. I know they want me over there. No, I mean, I, I still love it. Like, I'm still going to go even if they don't want me. I don't give a shit. I guess that's very white of me, but... But like, let's be real. Just because you don't understand what they're saying doesn't mean that they aren't like super fucking xenophobic. Come on now. They have a whole ass song for the tourism you're describing. Yeah, come to Bishdash. Anyway. Yeah, come to countries are like 85% tourism economies is correct. I'm yearning for the egg sandwiches since you talked about them. They're the best, dude. They're God's gift to earth, honestly. Anyway, I'm going to go hang out with my brother now. Xenophobia towards darker skinned people outside the Western world is honestly so crazily ignored. People just casually drop racism like it's nothing. Being someone who's both lived in India and China, it seems more racism is directed towards darker skinned people, even within communities themselves. Yes.
Japan uses so much English language in naming their shit. I'm hard pressed to believe they give two fucks either way. And then someone responded, naming your business in kanji is just hard and annoying for everybody. Go to Japan with a ship, they will accept you. Yes, the Japans. The Japans. What is this? What? Don't. Oh, come on. Stop asking me if I like goth trans girls. Jesus. You guys are crazy. Yes, I'm going to go to the Japans in a ship and I will become the Hatamoto. As Anjin. With a ship and a friend named Perry. Okay, that that one is a... That's a reference to Matthew Perry. Right? Which is... Uh, I think you're making a Rise of the Ronin reference. Which I started playing last night. And it's not that good. Anyway. Wait, maybe it's a real person. I don't know. I thought it was a... Matthew Perry was a real person, though, not just in that video game. Oh, I didn't know that. Dude, I don't fucking know about America opening up trade with, Jap with the Japans. I guess Matthew Perry is in the... Is in the game and is also real. Uh, anyway. All right, everybody. That'll be all for today. Murad is using power tools in the back. Uh, in the back. It's already fucking popping off out here. Stop. All right, love you all. See you tomorrow. Peace. All the shadows trickling in has so people hate. Sunny Los Angeles, California says her song. The starlight to the starlight to the dark it just begun There he is again Her sort of streaming Her sort of streaming There he is again her sort of streaming Her sort of streaming Reviewing the P.O. Box Uncle Uger's face Sudden discord at Chip Rock Grey names take on breaks Tiny Bernie Sanders, LGBTQ Air Force. The whole left at your fingertips, on a at your door. H3 crowded up, babe, the Young Turks online show. Three, four, five, get 